What's up, guys? It's your boy Omni Sensei back with part 7 of Reborn in Naruto OC broadcasts the future to the shinobi world. If you enjoy my content, consider buying me a coffee link in the description. Like the video, share, and subscribe. Remember to check out the author of this fantastic fanfic. Link in the description. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. No matter what you say, I think this question should be answered with option B. Senjutsu Nade's eyes and voice were firm. It seemed that there was no possibility of backing down. She certainly couldn't tell the fourth rakage that the idea of resurrecting her grandpa and granduncle came to her when the crowd lost. Although Might Die was very strong, and Yuzumaki Naruto and Sasuke would become very strong in the future, their option was incomparable with the option of resurrecting the past Hokages. Tsunade wouldn't budge. She had just answered wrong in the last question. This question couldn't be wrong again. Moreover, Ichiha Madara had already answered two questions correctly, and if he answered one more question correctly, he would be rewarded by the exam space. Although she didn't know what rewards the winner of this exam would get, Senjutsu Nade knew that the rewards of the exam space had never been disappointing. Ichiha Madara was strong enough now. If he was rewarded, then. The consequences would be unthinkable. Mizukage, tell me, which of these two answers do you choose? The fourth Reikage looked at Senju Tsunade, and for the first time, felt that Tsunade was such an unreasonable woman. Did all her IQ go to her chest, the fourth Reikage's eyes flashed with a fierce light. If he hadn't said that Tsunade wouldn't be blamed if the last answer was right or wrong, he would have attacked her right now. Um seeing the two people arguing fiercely look at herself, the Mizukage to Rumi Mei's gaze fluctuated a few times, and a trace of dilemma appeared on her face. In fact, she wasn't optimistic about any of the views of these two people, and she preferred option A. She thought that since Black Setsu had been deceiving Ichiha Madara, it was very likely that Ichiha Madara had been kept in the dark about becoming Six Paths Madara. Therefore, when he became Six Path Madara, did it mean that Ichiha Madara had lost his value? Therefore, Tarumi Mei thought that the reason for Madara's death was probably because Black Setsu collected the debt. Tarumi Mei's eyes fluctuated for a moment, looking at the exam space above her head. Exam space, the answer is A. Tarumi Mei's unexpected speech, however, before the two of them could voice their indignation, the pronouncement of the exam space, made the two people's anger go out like a tidal wave. Correct answer do you want to play video analysis? Play. There was a smile at the corners of Tarumi Mei's lips. Her smooth white hands covered her pink lips, while her beautiful eyes looked at Senjutsu Nade and A without making a sound. What the smile represented was self-evident. Is it really Zetsu? Ichiha Madara's face was gloomy as he waited to watch the video analysis of the exam space. Analysis of option A in question 4. The familiar darkness descended, then the picture appeared. A Rinnegan-eyed six-path Madara was standing there and was saying something when suddenly a dark arm poked out of six-path Madara's chest, and six-path Madara instantly suffered a heavy wound. As he lay dying, he looked around, his face suddenly filled with astonishment and shock. The video was played from Ichiha Madara's perspective, so the last scene when the video faded was when a woman, his hair is far longer than her body, appeared in Ichiha Madara's position. Is that Kagaya? Seeing this scene, Ichiha Madara was shocked. He was completely stunned. He never thought that Black Setsu would directly summon up this without giving Ichiha Madara time to continue thinking, the originally faded picture in the exam space changed again. Analysis of option B in question 4. What caught their eyes was a huge pitch black colored tailed beast bomb, heading towards the shinobi in the frame, who were wearing different shinobi village forehead protectors. The tailed beast bomb was incomparably huge. Its pitch black luster seemed to carry a terrifying power enough to destroy the world. At that time, everyone in the allied shinobi forces on the screen greatly changed their expressions. But what the shinobi world crowd didn't understand was that no one from these allied forces on screen took the lead in resisting this technique. Instead, they all watched in awe as it came whistling by, as if not resisting. Whoosh. Like an illusion, the huge dark-tailed beast bomb suddenly disappeared. Just when everyone inside and outside the screen was surprised white-tailed beast bomb disappeared, a strange kunai suddenly shot out and stuck in the middle of the screen. Immediately afterward, space seemed to fold, and a figure appeared there without a sound. Suddenly, on the screen, a flash of yellow light came. Yellow flash. The fourth rakage's expression changed. As the only being in the shinobi world who surpassed himself in speed, Namika's Minato's appearance was all too familiar to him. 
As the surprised voice of the fourth Reikic sounded, the Namika's Minato on the screen slowly raised his head, and a warm smile floated on his face. It had two crack marks. Everyone be careful. The explosion is coming. Boom as his voice dropped, a loud noise sounded as if the sky had exploded. The next moment, the faces of the people in the video were directly lit up as if it was suddenly daylight. A huge blast of wind swept through, impacting everything below. Under the impact of the wind, Namika's Minato got up slowly. The hookage coat with the words fourth hookage written behind billowed up. This scene surprised everyone inside and outside the video. None of them expected Namika's Minato to appear this way. This way of appearing this cool style boom. Whoosh. Without letting everyone stay in shock, three figures shot up and appeared in the middle of the battlefield. Impressively, they were Kanoha's former cages. Seeing this scene, everyone's faces appeared shocked again, especially the third Tsuchikich, Anoki. Thinking and seeing were two different things. At this point, the visual impact of four hookages on the same screen was extremely powerful. Fourth, you sure are faster than me. Senju lamented with a smile. He was resurrected this time, and the biggest feeling that impacted him was how the new generation of shinobi was full of talent. Kanoha, that's more like it. Two of the brightest stars on the fourth shinobi world wars battlefield came from Kanoha, making him happy. Although there was one evil brat from the Ichiha clan, the Ichiha clan had been- Namika's Minato gave a thumbs up to Yuzumaki Naruto, who called him father and disappeared along with the third. The next moment, the Jubi, which was constantly approaching the crowd, was suddenly intercepted by a screen of crimson light that covered the sky. Along with that, four magnificent voices rang out on the battlefield. Four crimson ray formation. Thus as everyone was getting ready to watch the four hookages with great interest, the videos suddenly went black. Everyone was instantly unhappy, but there was nothing they could do. But after the video, the crowd also saw the error of option B. The meaning of the video was that the main goal of the past Hokages teaming up was the Jubi. Their enemy wasn't a Chihem Madara at all, so they wouldn't have caused Six Path Madara to die from exhaustion. Analysis of Option C in Question 4. The video was played again, and this time, the video editing was even more excessive. At the beginning of the video, they saw an angry red dragon rushing towards Six Paths Madar, who was held in mid-air by five columns of air. Is that? Is that my guy? Seeing the iconic red dragon, the fourth Rakich instantly felt refreshed. There it is again. There it is again. This amazing momentum, this chakra that seems to tear the sky apart. As long as the kick hits Ichiha Madara's head, even if he is Six Paths Madar, he will directly lose. It didn't let anyone down. Seeing Mike Guy with a thousand thunderbolts rushing towards himself, the already injured Six Paths Madar in the picture, laughed wildly and let out a furious cry. In terms of physical skills alone, no one among those who have fought with me can get around you. Or I'll be willing to call you, Madar. The most powerful. Boom. At the next moment, it seemed like the heavens and earth were rumbling, and Six Paths Madar was kicked by Mike Guy, and flew thousands of meters up. A huge force came, and the left half of Six Paths Madara Seeing that Ichiha Madara was only badly injured, but not killed by the direct kick, the fourth Rakage's eyebrows suddenly frowned heavily. Why did he kick him in the head? Clearly, Ichiha Madara had been hit by Might Guy's evening elephant, and was fixed in mid-air. As long as Might Guy thought a little, he could definitely kick his head. After all, Ichiha Madara didn't have the conditioner ability to resist at this moment. Did Might Guy deliberately do that? Or Kanoha wanted to capture Six Paths Madara? The fourth Rakage haphazardly speculated, the expression on his face gradually solidified. Analysis of Option D in Question 4 Sure enough, to everyone's surprise, the analysis of the fourth question's D option appeared on the screen a few seconds after the end of the analysis of Option C. At first glance, the shinobi world resounded with countless sounds of people sucking in a cold breath. They looked at the three people on screen in disbelief as Yuzumaki Naruto and Ichiha Sasuke each placed a palm against Atsutsuki Kagaya's body. This familiar scene left everyone stunned. Sure enough, just like the analysis of the first question, with the joint efforts of Ichiha Sasuke and Yuzumaki Naruto, Atsutsuki Kagaya had been directly sealed again. This this is impossible. At the entrance of the Earth Moon portal, Black Zetsu's eyes were fixed on the screen. He didn't believe it. He had rescued his mother, but she was sealed again. Moreover, what made it feel unbelievable was that the two guys who sealed his mother again were Yuzumaki Naruto and Ichiha Sasuke. How is this possible? Black Zetsu forced himself to calm down and deeply gazed at the disappearing video. Although nothing was said, the horror in Black Zetsu's eyes couldn't be hidden at all. He didn't understand it. His mother, who was resurrected from Six Paths Madar, must have reached the peak of the shinobi world. How could Yuzumaki Naruto and Ichiha Sasuke seal her off? They were Atsutsuki Hagoromo and Atsutsuki Hamer. Wait. Could it be? 
These two are the successors of those two men. Thinking of a certain possibility, Black Zatsu jolted in surprise. Forget it. Let's not worry about that first. It's more important to save mother first. At last, Black Zatsu took a deep look at the picture above his head, jumped, and directly plunged into the pool. This was the Earth Moon Portal, a mysterious passage connecting the moon and the Earth. After Black Zatsu jumped down, White Zatsu behind him also jumped into the water and followed Black Zatsu to the moon. Question 5. Where is Black Zatsu at the moment? A. In the tree cave under the boundary of the Shinobi world. B. The entrance of the Earth Moon Portal. C. In the Earth Moon Portal. D. The exit point of the Earth Moon Portal. Looking at the fifth question from the exam space, both the Chihamadar, who was about to answer the question, and the five cages, who had just finished answering the question, looked stunned. This question how do I answer this? There was no clue at all. Looking at the question, the five cages felt that the fifth question was ridiculous. Where Black Setsu is? How would we know where he is? Looks like it's a Chihamadar's turn to win this exam. Senjutsune sighed, her face full of loss. When she originally entered the examination room, she thought that with five people in her team, plus the fact that Ichihamidar had probably just been revived and didn't understand the exam space, she and the others had a good chance of winning. Unfortunately, the balance of victory gradually tipped in Ichihamidar's favor. Thanks to that, she was thinking of drawing something good to use to defeat Ichihamidar. Although Ichihamidar was strong, now, having witnessed all the wonders of the exam space, Senjutsunade and the rest of the shinobi world, began to believe in the magnificence of the exam space unconditionally. Wasn't it much easier to get an item or ability that could easily defeat Ichihamidar from this exam space? Hokage, don't rush to conclusions. I don't think Ichihamidar knows the answer to this question. Hearing Anoki's words, Senjutsunade raised her head with a little surprise, and looked at Ichihamidar. Sure enough, when she saw Ichihamidar, his face was indescribably stony. Is he? Senju paused. She didn't know why Ichihamidar was so grim as if something terrible was going to happen. Chibaku Tensei, seal breaking card, and a moon. Anoki's deep voice rang out behind Senju Tsunade again, and Senju Tsunade's expression instantly changed. Because of Mike Guy, the top officials of the five major shinobi villages were aware that Yuzumaki Nagato knew a sealing technique called Chibaku Tensei, which could seal a person in a sphere. The last time Akatsuki invaded Kanoha, Yuzumaki Nagato held the stone bowl with Might Guy sealed in it, and arrived from the sky with Akatsuki's people using Skywalk. You mean? Reminded by Inoki, Senjutsunade instantly understood what Inoki meant, and a shocked expression instantly appeared on her face. The place where Atsutsuki Kagaya was sealed is the moon. The surprise in Senjutsunade's lowered voice couldn't be concealed anymore. She turned her head and looked at the answer list to the fifth question above, increasingly feeling that what Anoki said made sense. Just now, her mind was on this nonsensical question, and she didn't notice the relationship between the options. But now, she was reminded by Anoki and instantly felt the connection between the options. After being sealed for so long, is she still alive? Next to Senjutsunade, Terumi Mei's surprised voice also sounded at the right time. She was a bit overwhelmed. After all, considering the Sage of Six Paths Sage, Atsusuki Kagaya would have been sealed for at least a thousand years. How how could she stay alive for such a long time? She is the progenitor of Chakra in the Shinobi world, so naturally, she can't be judged with common sense. Jiu's old eyes slowly opened, with a wisp of light flashing in them. Since Black Zatsu can live for thousands of years, what's so strange about Atsutsuki Kagaya not dying? Chiyu's voice dropped, and Fourth Rekage's cold voice rang out. If you ask me, the correct answer to this question is option B. The fourth rakage said so and subconsciously glanced at Turumi Mei. This time, seeing the other party didn't reject the answer in her expression, he relaxed slightly. After all, he and Tsunade almost died of embarrassment just now because of Turumi Mei. Actually, I'm more interested in knowing if there is a live broadcast screen of the exam space in Atsutsuki Kagaya seal. As soon as Turumi Mei's words were spoken, the five cages instantly fell silent and looked at Turumi Mei in horror. At the same time, in the shinobi world, everyone was also stunned by Terumi Mei's daring idea. Are these are these our cages? At the moment, looking at the five cages speaking so eloquently, many people were scared by the five cages' excellent mental quality and ability to withstand the shock. They themselves were still in shock from the four short videos of the last question, and even from the first question, Atsusuki Kagaya was the progenitor of Chakra in the shinobi world. Surprisingly, these cages had begun to discuss the fifth question. This gap is too big. At this moment, another group of people in the shinobi world was staring at Terumi Mei in a daze. The progenitor of Chakra, watching the live broadcast. 
They just couldn't figure out why Terumi Mei was so impressive when they all had the same number of years of education in ninja school. How did she grow that brain of hers? Is there a live broadcast screen in Atsutsuki Kagaya seal? Can that be? That's in the seal. On the moon. Hearing Terumi Mei's speculation on screen, Atsutsuki Tanari slowly stood up. With his movements behind him, a series of Atsutsuki puppets scattered around the moon. He was the last descendant of the Atsutsuki branch family on the moon, and lived alone in a castle inside the moon, to keep an eye on the earth. At one time, there were two groups on the moon, the branch family, and the main clan. Witnessing the world created by Sage of Six Paths was at war for a thousand years, the branch family considered the world a failure, and wanted to destroy it, but was blocked by the main clan family who advocated peace. In order to fulfill the legacy of their ancestors, the branch family wiped out the entire main clan with Tensigen, and Atsutsuki Tanari from the branch family was left alone on the same moon after the disaster separation. Originally, the only two things in his life were making puppets and observing the shinobi world. However, since the emergence of XM space, Atsutsuki Tanari got a third interest. Atsutsuki Tanari had to admit, the astonished looks of all those people in the XM space were quite interesting. However, after seeing the grown-up Hayuga Hinata confess her love for Yuzumaki Naruto, that yellow-haired guy, Atsutsuki Tanari, couldn't sit still. Hayuga Hinata was the bride he had reserved for himself, the woman who would fall into a deep sleep with him, and wake up to recreate the world. What's even more ingenious was that he met a man named Hayuga Niji during the last exam. His eyes were also very pure, enough to awaken the Tensigen. Following that, he controlled the moon to slam into the shinobi world, and simply destroy it in one fell swoop. This caused him to simply give up on continuing the exam and return early to prepare. Originally, he was almost done with his preparations, and was already going to send the puppets to the shinobi world to bring Hayuga Niji and Hayuga Hinata back. But who knew that the fifth question would tell everyone that the guy named Black Setsu was coming to the moon to release Atsutsuki Kagaya. Atsutsuki Tanari didn't know who Black Setsu was before, now knew that he was Atsutsuki Kagaya's child. Atsutsuki Kagaya was a name that Atsutsuki Tanari knew by heart. He knew that it was because of the need to seal this ancestor forever. He didn't know for how many generations had passed, since his clan had moved from the shinobi world to the moon. With this in mind, Atsutsuki Tanari emotionlessly ordered the army of puppets behind him. Go to the moon earth portal, and kill all those who come through. Just as the big battle on the moon was about to start, in the exam space, Ichiha Madara was staring at the screen with a glint in his eyes. It was as if he could see the correct answer straight from the question. Ichiha Madara recalled that when he started, Black Zetsu was in the tree cave under the shinobi world boundary. For this question, I choose A. Ichiha Madara pondered for a moment, and gave what he himself thought was the correct answer, then looked to the five cages with satisfaction. When he saw the other five people, they seemed to be stunned by his choice. Then, the stunned expression quickly transformed into surprise. Ichiha Madara's brow was slightly wrinkled. Incorrect answer, option B. The moment the answer space had just informed Ichiha Madara of his wrong answer, the voice of the fourth Reikage impatiently sounded. This was something he learned from Mizukage, Terumi Mei, who just shouted out the answer, while the others were unprepared. After the fourth seeing Madara's ugly expression at the moment, the corners of the fourth Reikage's lips were raised high. In that brief moment, he had figured out why Ichiha Madara had chosen A as the answer, even if it was simply impossible. That's because Ichiha Madara didn't even know that Black Setsu had a seal-breaking card. He also thought that the current Black Setsu was the same as before, without the ability to rescue Atsutsuki Kagaya. The fourth Reikage was even wondering whether Ichiha Madara, who entered the XM space for the first time, knew that he was being broadcasted live right now. At the thought of suppressing Ichiha Madara's intelligence, the fourth Reikage's heart was filled with gloating. However, just as the fourth Reikage could hardly suppress his feelings, the verdict from the XM space made his expression suddenly change. Incorrect answer. The fourth Reikage incredulously looked at the exam space's pronouncement. How could I be wrong? If Atsusuki Kagaya were already revived, the shinobi world would surely sense it. There was nothing unusual right now, so Atsusuki Kagaya hadn't been resurrected yet. Since she hasn't been resurrected, wouldn't the answer be B? For this question, I choose C. Ichiha Madara's voice sounded at the right time, making the fourth Reikage's face instantly turn pale. Especially those four burning eyes behind him. Even without turning around, the fourth Reikage could feel the emotions contained in those four pairs of eyes. Correct answer. Ichiha Madara won a chance to spin the roulette to draw a reward. Do you want to play video analysis? Play. Ichiha Madara looked unbearably cold at this moment. It was only at this moment that he finally realized what he had missed. Damn, I should have thought of it. I should have thought of it when I first entered the exam space. 
I shouldn't have taken the five cages lightly. I should have thought of that. Obviously, this is not the first time the exam space appeared. Furthermore, judging from their attitude towards Black Zetsu, Black Zetsu must have taken the exam in the exam space before. He was even rewarded with something that could free Otsutsuki Kagaya. That's why this question came out. Black Zetsu is on his way to the moon. Damn it. Noticing that the screen playing the video reappeared, Ichiha Madara knew it was another video analysis. When the picture appeared, the first thing that caught everyone's attention was the sparkling water and light. This is. In the water. Looking at the water waves in the picture, everyone understood the scene. Whoosh. When people were surprised why they were in water, a half black and half white figure, like a fish, flew directly from one end of the screen to the other, leaving behind a trail of bubbles. It finally scurried out of the entire screen. It was very fast, so fast that the shinobi crowd couldn't get a good look at it until it disappeared from the screen. Is that Setsu? Black Setsu. In the shinobi world, countless people were skeptical and rubbed their eyes. Some of them weren't sure. What the hell was that thing that just whizzed past? Whoosh 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 whoosh. While the crowd was confused, another trail of bubbles and current suddenly appeared on the screen, and then disappeared quickly beyond the screen. Then, as if throwing a pot of crayfish into a pan of hot oil, the entire screen instantly boiled. Countless streaks of bubbles appear on the screen. They were dense, as a school of fish was whizzing by. Are those white zetsus? Looking at the water, the pure white figures shot through the water. Seeing the white zetsus that seemed to be riding the waves, Ichiha Madara froze for a moment. Others couldn't see the white Zetsus's movements, but how could Ichiha Madara not? The white Zetsus's movements were even like slow motion movements in his eyes. They stuck their hands on either side of their bodies, putting their feet together, and used wood release to create a huge fin-like thing. With each wiggle of their body, they propelled themselves forward. Ichiha Madara's expression gradually became darker and darker as he looked at the white Zetsus swimming like a swarm of snakes. He didn't understand why Black Setsu brought so many white Setsus when he was only going to the moon to unseal someone. Judging by the look, it might be over 70,000 to 80,000 white Setsus. This amount of force he could easily destroy any one of the five shinobi villages. Ichiha Madara didn't know what kind of trick Black Setsu was trying to pull here. As if knowing Ichiha Madara's confusion, the screen gradually drew closer, giving the scene to Black Setsu and a white Setsu attached to him. In the scene, Black Setsu was hurrying along. The image in the video stayed at his side, following him as he sped along. Soon, there was a glimmer of light in the waters, which was formed by a light beam shining into the water from above. The exit. In the picture, seeing the beam of light in the water, Black Setsu stopped instead of directly rushing out. He waved his hand without moving up himself, and instantly several white Setsu swam over under his command. Watching the five white Setsu getting within the range of the exit unharmed, Black Setsu remained calm, and continued to let the five white Setsu swim towards the exit. Soon, the five white Setsu appeared at the exit. It's just that, when their bodies had just surfaced, before they could see everything on the shore, a sharp sword suddenly came down, cutting off their heads with precision. Immediately after that, yellow energy bombs were thrown down from the surface of the water, hitting the corpses of those white Setsu with precision. Boom. The energy exploded and instantly formed an undercurrent in the water, but it didn't affect Black Setsu and the White Setsu at all. Oh, there's an ambush. Until this moment, Black Setsu's face finally showed a smile. The other side set up an ambush here, putting Black Setsu's mind at ease. He knew that Atsutsuki Teneri was on the moon, and could see the live broadcast of the exam space, so he would definitely make preparations. And the other party ambushed him here, indicating that the other party's strength wasn't very strong, or rather, their manpower may not be sufficient. This was definitely good news for Black Setsu right now. Attack. With Black Setsu's command, countless white Setsu simultaneously rose up under the surface of the water, and swarmed towards the exit. Black Setsu, on the other hand, swam silently in the other direction under cover of all the white Setsu. Black Setsu's eyes flashed brightly. Since the surface of the water was the moon, the underwater rock wall naturally counted as part of the moon. The video disappeared when Black Setsu ordered the White Setsu to attack. This made everyone, including Ichiha Midar, feel a little unsatisfied. Especially those who still wanted to watch the war in the shinobi world. Their hearts were even more regretful. They didn't expect that Black Setsu had an army of white shinobi. What's more, they didn't expect that there were people on the surface of the moon, and they even blocked Black Setsu. This, could it be the other party could also see the live broadcast from the shinobi world. In the exam space, Ichiha Madara's expression had become unusually ugly. Although he had just been resurrected, he knew this guy Black Setsu, who would never fight a battle he wasn't sure of. 
Therefore, although the scene of Black Satsu saving Atsutsuki Kagaya wasn't seen in the video, Ichihamadara already knew the final result, after seeing the other party go out with tens of thousands of white Satsus. That's why his expression was so ugly. Atsutsuki Kagaya was going to come back. Ichihamadara took a deep breath, and a piercing light bloomed in his eyes. Now that Black Satsu had started taking action, his time was running out. After Atsutsuki's resurrection, what would happen to the shinobi world? Madara was afraid to answer that. It seems that, when the exam was over, he had to get his hands on the Rinnegan, and truly bring himself back to life. Only then, Ichiha felt that he would have the strength to defend himself after Atsutsuki Kagaya came out. Ichiha Madara made up his mind and glanced at the five cages whose expressions were equally ugly. I can't waste any more time with them. Ichiha Madara answered three questions correctly and passed this exam. Ichiha Madara received a chance to draw a reward from the roulette. With the announcement of the exam space, in front of Ichiha Madara, a big colorful turntable with the height of two people suddenly appeared. It was divided into numerous fine small grids, and each grid corresponded to a reward. Summoning Jutsu. Substitution Jutsu Close Quarters Combat Technique Ichiha Madara's eyes looked at the reward closest to him on the roulette wheel, and a little confusion appeared on his face. He didn't know what these things were. The summoning Jutsu was easy to understand, but he really didn't understand what summoning Ultraman and summoning Godzilla meant. Could it be that Ultraman and Godzilla are some powerful summoned beasts? Ichiha Madara thought carefully but couldn't come up with memories of these two races of summoned beasts in his mind. Madara glanced at the colorful reward turntable again, and directly turned the turntable without saying anything. Ichiha Madara, who was standing directly opposite the turntable, looked at the chaotic colors, and realized that there was a special pattern in the colors that were spinning. Without waiting for Ichiha Madara to think any further, the speed of the spinning wheel had begun to drop. At that moment, countless people, both inside and outside the XM space, turned their eyes to the turntable that was about to stop. Please. It can't. Don't be something that strengthens his powers. On the battlefield of the allied forces, tens of thousands of people from the allied shinobi forces, eagerly watched the rotating turntable, and their eyes were full of hopefulness, or rather, prayers. They hoped that the exam space wouldn't give Ichiha Madara something powerful or something to strengthen his abilities. After all, Ichiha Madara was strong enough already if he was further strengthened, that would really be unthinkable. In the exam space, the five cages' thoughts were exactly the same as those of the allied shinobi forces especially Senjutsu Nade and the fourth Rikich. At the moment, their eyes were fixed on the wheel, which was slowing down. Finally, as the two looked on, the reward wheel in front of Ichiha Madara finally slowed down to a halt. The pointer in the center of the turntable suddenly pointed to a blue mark. Immediately afterward, a blinding blue light surged directly above the turntable and rushed into Ichiha Madara's body. Echo's ultimate move. Chrono Break. What kind of jutsu is that? The fourth Rekich narrowed his eyes, saw the words on the reward roulette, and quickly asked the four cages behind him. Sunade and others were puzzled and shook their heads. His expression became even more ugly. Ichiha Madara is going to get stronger again. Him. Another unknown technique. Chrono Break. Ignores all states, shatters the current timeline, and returns the wielder's actions and state to four seconds before, it can return to any second within the past four seconds. Note. Chrono Break does not affect memory. Cooldown. 24 hours. Reward enhancement plus 5 Seeing the information that appeared in his mind, Ichiha Madara was startled. Going back in time. Isn't this an enhanced version of Aizanabi? This this. Catching a glimpse of blue out of the corner of his eye, Ichiha Madara looked behind himself in horror. In his line of sight, at some point, a transparent blue silhouette identical to his own appeared beside him. Seeing the blue shadow, Ichiha Madara moved and suddenly walked around in the exam space. Sure enough, the shadow seemed to have a 4 second delay, and after 4 seconds, the shadow would repeat his actions. What an amazing technique. Ichiha Madara was incomparably amazed. He had never seen such an amazing technique before. He noticed that he was connected to this shadow by a light blue bond, and above the bond, three dots of light were evenly distributed. Ichiha Madara had a feeling that as long as his mind moved, he could return to these time points. Both time and state. This was a stronger jutsu than in pure world reincarnation. In an instant, Ichiha Madara thought of various uses for this technique. For a man of his strength, in 4 seconds, he could do a lot. After all, between senior shinobi, the winner of a duel was often determined in split seconds. What's more, this was a sealess jutsu without any consumption. Its only limitation was the 24-hour cooldown time. In particular, it ignored all states. This meant that even in a sealed state, Ichiha Madara could use this jutsu. 
At the thought of this, Ichihamadara's breath suddenly quickened. This technique it's a divine technique Ichihamadara, at the moment, was like a child who has got a new toy, looking at the new jutsu he got with joy. As he continued to study it, he increasingly felt aware of the abnormal condition of the jutsu. Hmm. Suddenly, Ichihamadara had an odd feeling. He found that he didn't know when his body had returned from the exam space to the battlefield. At this moment, his body was in a position where it was before. In his full-bodied Susanoo. Space-time Jutsu. Ichihamadara wondered why Susanoo didn't dissipate just after he left but remained standing here. This was simply impossible. At the moment, the five cages also appeared in the position where they had fallen. The only difference from back then was that now, the five of them were still standing. At the same time, seeing everyone returning from the exam space, Jiraiya directly flew over with Skywalk. And below him, a green figure roared and approached the five cages. His speed was three points faster than Jiraiya. Ichihamadara turned his head and looked behind him without looking at the six people gathered below. Sure enough, there was a huge figure that only he could see. Seeing that Chrono Break could even replicate his complete Susanoo, the corner of Ichihamadara's mouth was slightly raised. For a time, the atmosphere on the battlefield suddenly solidified. Ichihamadara looked commanding, overlooking the seven people below. There was no emotion on his face. He didn't have the time and mood to play with these guys right now, he had to get to the Rinnegan quickly. Ichihamadara sensed the direction in which his Rinnegan was located and directly controlled Susanoo to walk in that direction. Boom. Boom. Every time the giant Susanoo took a step, it would make the earth tremble, splashing countless dust everywhere. He's leaving. The fourth rakage suddenly froze when he saw Ichihamadara ignore him and the others. Humph, whatever he has planned, stop him. Anoki grunted coldly. His body floated up and directly flew towards Ichihamadara's giant Susanoo. His hands quickly made seals, and then a huge mud area appeared at Ichihamadara's feet, causing Madara's giant Susanoo to sink downward directly. Mizukage. Anoki yelled, and Tsurumi Mei immediately moved. Her long legs moved, leaping in midair, her hands formed seals. In the blink of an eye, three powerful jutsu were formed and shot towards Ichihamadara's Susanoo. Lava release. Melting apparition technique. Boil release. Skilled mist technique. Water release. Water dragon bullet technique. Just before three jutsu hit Ichihamadara's Susanoo, a devastating blue sword suddenly came up, and the three jutsu were directly split apart. Yes, they were split. Cleanly split in half. Both Tarumi Mei's Bloodline Limit Ability and Water Release Jutsu were split in two by Ichihamadara's Susanoo Sword. I'm going to kill you annoying flies. When Ichihamadara saw that the people he had spared had dared to come after him, an icy killing intent instantly erupted from his eyes. Whoosh. Without any movement from Ichihamadara in the middle of Susanoo, Susanoo directly slashed out. Suddenly, a bright blue blade of light, with the force of 10,000 pounds, flew horizontally towards Tarumi Mei. Feeling the strong aura on it, Tarumi Mei's face drastically changed, and she quickly dodged downward. Whoosh. Seeing his opponent trying to dodge, Ichihamadara wasted no time in delivering another slash. The huge blade of light raged again, and before Tarumi Mei had time to react, it approached her. Damn it. The blade of light came too fast, and Tarumi Mei, who could dodge the first blow, was still in midair, unable to find leverage, and could only watch as the blade swept towards her. Too late. Am I going to fall here? Looking at the flying slash, Tarumi Mei showed a desolate smile. She didn't expect that she would be the first cage to fall. What's more, she didn't expect that Chihamadara would be so frightening. She was angry. He only used two attacks, and she was powerless to do anything. Mizukij. Damn it. Hearing the screams of the other cages behind her, Tarumi Mei slowly closed her eyes and willingly let the slash devour her. Whoosh. Just when Tarumi Mei was about to give up completely, a green figure suddenly appeared in front of her. Daytime Tiger. Along with a furious cry from the man, a roaring blue giant tiger instantly took shape and rushed toward the blade of light. Boom. By the impact of the giant tiger, the slash stalled for a moment. In the next moment, the slash directly cut the giant tiger and continued to rampage forward. Although the daytime tiger only stalled it for a moment, Might Guy's purpose was achieved. When the punch was thrown, Might Guy, without looking back, took Tarumi Mei aside with a hand on her shoulder. Instead of the expected death, she felt like she was quickly being carried away. Tarumi Mei froze for a moment, then opened her eyes. Seeing the scene in front of her, she was stunned, then her face instantly turned red. She was now being held against Mike Guy's left shoulder, and his left arm was wrapped tightly around her waist. As if for a more secure position, his arm was pressing on something like the shoulder strap of a crossbody bag. 
The strange feeling of the touch coming from her body made Tarumi Mei's face grow increasingly red. And what made Tarumi Mei even more embarrassed was the light blue steam from Mike Guy's body. Although it's nothing to her as a boil release and lava release user, to the clothes on her body Tarumi Mei stifled a grunt and clutched her clothes with her hand, clinging on for dear life. By coincidence, when she moved, her eyes could see Mike Guy's face. Looking at the resolute face, the earnest expression, and the slight veins at the corner of his eye, because he was enduring pain for a moment, Tarumi Mei was mesmerized. Mizukich, can you still fight? Sanjutsunade's voice rang out, waking up Tarumi Mei, whose mind was in turmoil. Ah. Oh, yes, I can still fight. Tarumi Mei came back to her senses and realized that, somehow, she had been put down. Senjutsunade's hand was glowing with a green light, apparently treating her. Her pair of beautiful eyes drifted around and soon found a certain figure. Her heartbeat suddenly accelerated. She never thought that he would be the one to save her. Could it be, could it be that he likes? Mizukich, I had to act quickly. Sorry for the offense. Mike Guy, his perception was sharp, saw Tarumi Mei observing himself implicitly, and he directly spoke to Tarumi Mei. This made Tarumi Mei blush again. To the side, Senjutsunade froze and withdrew her mystical palm technique. She felt as if she had discovered something remarkable. Guy is it possible? Senjutsunade's face showed a knowing smile, and her eyes quietly looked at Jureya. Senjutsunade was inexplicably upset when she found that Jureya was still staring in a certain direction. That Senjutsunade's thoughts were interrupted by Chiyo's shocked voice. Senjutsunade followed Chiyo's eyes. When she saw the scene not far away, her expression instantly changed. How? How is that possible? Is this something that a normal person can achieve as he is he a god? The allied shinobi forces, with tens of thousands of people, stared in awe at the results of Ichihamidara's two slashes. With that slash, because of its height, it passed overhead and directly split a mountain thousands of meters away. Whoosh. The mountain had no resistance at all. Without even making a loud sound, it was directly sliced in the middle. Immediately afterward, the blue blade went on flying forward with greater momentum. Second mountain. Third mountain. Fourth and fifth. After the five mountains were sliced down, Ichihamidara's blade of light finally dissipated. And the vertical second slash, not far in front of everyone, directly slashed into the ground, leaving a huge bottomless ravine. This scene left the shinobi crowd in deathly silence. Too strong. Ichihamidara is too strong. Most of the shinobi in the allied shinobi forces had a pang of fear at the thought of having made an enemy of such a terrifying figure. Their fingers started to shake involuntarily, then their arms, then their entire bodies, all shaking like a sieve. Now, they were completely afraid of Ichihamidara. In other words, at the moment, Ichihamidara had become their nightmare. Especially the shinobi of Iwagakur. They were the most afraid at the moment. After tens of thousands of their shinobi piled up to kill the third rakage, they always had a sense of pride in their hearts. Because, in this shinobi world, there was no one that Iwagakur couldn't kill. But now, they were dumbfounded. Completely dumbfounded. One slash could split five mountains. What the fuck is this? Is this something that a mere 10,000 of our shinobi forces could kill? 10,000. 50,000. 10,000. Millions. Gathering the whole shinobi world wouldn't even be a million. Ichihamidara he's a monster, right? How could we overcome such a presence? Take this as the boundary, those who cross the boundary will die. Ichihamidara used a blade to point to the mark that had just been slashed, and then he directly dispersed his Susanu. His body drifted down from above, with the spiky hair behind it standing high in the air. Ichihamidara gently landed on the ground and looked at Senjutsunade and others with an indifferent expression. For a time, the atmosphere of the entire space seemed to solidify, thick and terrifying. Gulp. Anoki's throat rolled with difficulty, feeling Ichihamidara's terrifying war. Anoki's face looked determined. He was at Tsuchikij. The third Tsuchikij. He couldn't disgrace Suwagakur. He couldn't let Musama down. Even if he died, he would cross this line today. Anoki was just about to move when the fourth Rakage directly grabbed his left arm in a deadly grip. Anoki was about to break free when Senjutsunade also seized his right arm. Let me go. I'm the Tsuchikij. Anoki's voice was mixed with a hint of franticness. He struggled fiercely, but his strength was no match for the fourth Rakage and Senjutsunade. Tsuchikij. Don't act on impulse. The fourth Rakage grabbed Anoki. His eyes appeared bloodshot. That was the suppression of anger. This time, we aren't prepared enough to meet a person like Ichihamidara. Failure is inevitable. We have to go back alive. Suchikage, the Rakage is right. Senjutsunade's teeth were gritted. Ichihamidara was so strong that no one could stop him right now. Only by unleashing the full power of the five villages and inviting neutral shinobi villages to form a true allied shinobi force, will we have a chance. 
The Fourth Shinobi World War has begun fine. Hearing the rakage and the hookage's advice, Anoki finally suppressed his anger. With his eyes stared at Ichihamidara as if he wanted to tear him apart with his gaze. He was then led by the others and flew backward. Seeing this, the allied shinobi forces also reorganized their ranks and retreated along with the five cages. Humph. Rubbish. Ichihamidara looked at the allied forces that were quickly retreating and snorted disdainfully. If it weren't for worrying about Kagaya's resurrection, he would have killed these people here today. Ichihamidara coldly looked back and ran to Omegakur. In Omegakur. The exam space was closed, and Ryuji appeared directly in his own home. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. How's Ichihamidara alive right now? Ryuji's face changed several times at the thought of the Ichihamidara he had just seen. Naruto hasn't grown up yet. If Ichihamidara gets his Rinnegan, he would simply be a god. Especially the impure world reincarnated Madara. God damn it Ryuji really couldn't think of anyone who could beat Madara, except for Might Guy, using desperate attempts to punch Madara to death. Maybe Killer B, the perfect Jinchuriki could resist Madara. One slash. Two slashes of his seven sword dance at most. He really wouldn't be able to get any more in. No one in the shinobi world knew better than Ryuji how cruel Madara was. Thinking of the five old people in the exam space just now, Ryuji even suspected that the five of them would already be dead by now. After all, if you replace the best support guard with Chio, that old clunker, it would be strange if the team could win the battle. Damn it. Laksatsu also has quite the mind to release Atsutsuki Kagai right now. Why isn't he thinking clearly? Without the tailed beasts, without Chakra from the Six Paths Madara, what's the use of releasing her? Are you being cute? Or do you want Madara to cut her down with you? Ryuji got a headache thinking about Black Setsu's actions at that moment. It doesn't know that you're a great filial son, but would you be filial in releasing Kagai right now? Ryuji knew that once Kagaya was released, the Atsutsuki's group in space would feel it. Would that fishing pole guy come early? With his combat power, is there someone in the shinobi world who could fight against him? Atsutsuki Kagaya is definitely destined to be refined into a chakra fruit. If that makes sense, then Black Setsu is really too filial, even more filial than a Chiha Itachi. Alas, the shinobi world is too dangerous Ryuji sighed deeply, the whole shinobi world was now as chaotic as a tossed salad because of the exam system. This wiped out the only advantage he had in the shinobi world. At the moment, what Ryuji wanted most was to take the exam space and pull in all those senior reincarnators to ask them questions. How did they manage to defeat no one in the original world and everyone in the other world? We are all reincarnators or traversers, why am I the only useless one? Did you suddenly cross worlds and get a new brain? Why else would you be so unimpressive in your original world but flourish in the other world? We are all world travelers, can't you guys help me a bit here forget it, never mind that much, I have to run away. After killing the five cages, Madara Sama will certainly come to fetch the Rinnegan. Even if the Akatsuki crowd is strengthened by the exam space, that is not enough to block Madara Sama's slashes. Ryuji crumbled. He packed his bags quickly and looked out the window. Seeing that it was raining outside, Ryuji's face instantly changed. Damn it. The Rainmaker Jutsu is still out there. I will definitely be discovered when I leave the village. TSK, why am I thinking so much anyway? Ryuji smiled bitterly, anyway, I'm only an escaping genin. It can't even be counted as defecting. Determined, Ryuji slowly pushed open the door. He wondered if it was an illusion, but he felt that the rain in the village seemed bigger than before. I have to learn how to use summoning jutsu later. Escaping by reverse summoning is way faster. Ryuji looked at Omegakur in the heavy rain, and suddenly looked up towards the sky above Omegakur. Konan-san, I'm sorry. Although I like you, you are all shinobi. You have the ability to protect yourself. You can still run, but I can't. Even if someone gave me two more legs, I wouldn't be able to run from your jutsu range. Ugh. There is no destiny I shouldn't insist. I shouldn't insist. I better go. Ryuji smoothly slung his backpack behind his back and took a step outside. The next moment, before his foot hit the ground, he directly put his hands up in a surrendering gesture. Gold. Ryuji's throat rolled gently as he looked at a paper kunai hovering in front of his neck. The kunai was very thin, and its whole body was made of paper, so it looked very small. But the flashing cold light on the tip made Ryuji's clothes wet from the cold sweat on his back. Just now, I only took one step forward. If I took one more, this kunai might have penetrated my throat. Damn it. Careless. Ryuji's expression changed one after another, and he knew who the owner of the paper kunai was. After all, in the entire shinobi world, there was no other user of such strange jutsu. Ryuji wasn't afraid that the kunai's owner would kill him. After all, the fact that she didn't just directly do it meant that she wouldn't kill him so easily. 
Ryuji was afraid that Conan had heard what he had just said. If she heard it, it would be a big deal. Whoosh 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 whoosh. The sound of flying paper rang out, with a strange blushing face and an incomparably cold expression, Conan appeared at the other end of the kunai. She held the kunai in one hand and looked at Ryuji coldly, without saying a word. Um seeing Conan's face look like red cherry, Ryuji wanted to slap himself in the mouth. Did 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 you hear that? Ryuji, at this moment, couldn't wait to find a crack in the ground and bury himself. Although he met Conan several times because of training, however this this after being poisoned by the reality of the shinobi world for so long, he had learned that some things were just all bark and no bite. After all, just as every twenty-something with no money and no job thought they were a struggling writer, struggling artist or struggling actor, every traverser would think that they were the protagonist. But that was just Ryuji's naive idea in the past. Now, he had been hit by the reality of the shinobi world. The reality of the shinobi world taught him that not every traverser with a system could enjoy the protagonist's treatment. Like him he didn't even know how Chihamadara was resurrected. Still want to catch Conan to warm his bed. Impossible. Simply impossible. He still wanted to, but it would be difficult. Ryuji found it just as hard as someone telling him that Kanoha's Ichiha clan was still alive right now. Tell me, who are you? Conan's voice was cold, and the kunai in her hand didn't tremble at all. Originally, she just wanted to talk to this lazy guy. After all, he was still a shinobi who had just awakened his chakra, so he shouldn't slack off. But unexpectedly, there was such a big surprise. Yes, Conan had been there since Ryuji was still in the exam space. Therefore, everything Ryuji had said and done since he came back was seen and heard by her. Originally, she thought this guy was a spy sent by the other shinobi villages, and was about to kill him directly, but his chaotic mumbling saved him. The more Conan heard what he said, the more alarmed she was. Especially when she linked his words to the things in the exam live broadcast just now, Conan was going crazy. The powerful Madar. Kagaya without strength. Nagato's eyes were Chihamadara's. This. 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 If he didn't want to leave, Conan had to show up and stop it. This time Conan almost called everyone in Akatsuki to besiege him. This guy had an unusual understanding of Ichihamadara and Atsutsuki Kagaya. That's not all. He appeared as soon as the exam space disappeared. This was what really scared Conan. Woman's intuition has always been very sensitive. Conan thought that he had something to do with the exam space. Conan's mind raced. As for the other things he said, Conan simply ignored it, or rather, she didn't want to think about it. Conan didn't expect that this guy would say those words. To be honest, when she heard him say those words, she almost detonated the tandem explosive tags and sent him straight to the underworld. While Conan was contemplating, Ryuji was also rapidly thinking of a way to escape. In terms of strength, he certainly couldn't be Conan's opponent, but in terms of means, Ryuji quickly immerses his mind into the system and flicks through his own list of skills. Because of the previous exams, he learned a lot of messy skills. Because there were too many skills, the system directly made them into cards and stored them. Ryuji sorted it out and knew that there were a few weird abilities that were just right for the present occasion. Found it. At the sight of a certain name, the corners of Ryuji's mouth lifted slightly, and a bright light erupted in his eyes. Hemophobia. Select an enemy and crumple the card to give them the hemophobia state. Hemophobia state. When seeing blood, the weak will will faint for one hour, and the strong will will have their entire body attributes drop by 60% for one hour. Although only once, it was enough. Select, Conan. Ryuji suddenly said her name, which made Conan snap to attention. In the next moment, she saw a card suddenly appear on Ryuji's raised hands. Whoosh. Without time to think about it, the kunai in Conan's right hand instantly touched Ryuji's throat, and a drop of blood suddenly appeared. Ryuji was stunned by the pain and cold feeling from his neck. Suddenly his hand was empty. Looking again, the hemophobia card had already appeared in Conan's hands. Bang. After grabbing something, Conan opened her other hand, and with a chop, she hit Ryuji's nape. Ryuji's eyes went dark, and he suddenly fell to the ground with a thud. Paper binding. Conan gently said so. Then, countless papers emerged from her body and flew towards Ryuji. In the blink of an eye, Ryuji was shrouded into a white caterpillar, with only his nose peeking out. After everything, Conan was still a bit uneasy and took out another special explosive tag, and pasted it on Ryuji. This was a special explosive tag and a parent of the tandem explosive tags. As soon as Ryuji tore his seal by whatever means, this explosive tag would explode. Not to mention, it would also trigger the tandem explosive tags. Tens of thousands of explosive tags would be summoned and wildly bombard Ryuji. Now, Conan was completely relieved. Immediately after, the control paper lifted Ryuji up, and Conan took him, flying towards where Nagata was. 
A few minutes later, Conan arrived at the building but didn't find Nagato's figure. Puzzled, she dropped Ryuji and flew outside. Meanwhile, in Orochimaru's Megakur laboratory, Yuzumaki Nagato and Ichiha Fugaku were questioning Orochimaru. It was not until Orochimaru listed the differences between the impure world reincarnated Madara in the live broadcast and the impure world reincarnated Kashina that they completely believed that Orochimaru wasn't the one who brought back Madara. Yuzumaki Nagato blinked his Rinnegan, as if that aggressive look just now was Orochimaru's illusion. Beside him, Ichiha Fugaku also put away his eternal manjakyo in time, and looked at Orochimaru kindly. By the way, Orochimaru, you told me that you are studying the influence of the armament Haki on the soul. Yuzumaki Nagato's eyes turned, and he continued. What's the result of your research? Does armament Haki have any special effect on the impure world reincarnation? Special effect. Yuzumaki Nagato's words made Orochimaru freeze. He was a bit confused as to why the leader would ask such a question. Could it be? Does he know I did something? Or, does he know about my plan for the impure world reincarnation and the war? Impossible Kabuto used reverse summoning to return to Kanoha. He was the only one that knew about it wait. Could it be Ichiha Madara? Orochimaru was surprised and suddenly looked at Yuzumaki Nagato and Ichiha Fugaku. Ichiha Fugaku looked around. This was Akatsuki's business, he didn't want to get involved. What's more, he felt that this guy Yuzumaki Nagato was likely to Ichiha Madara, who has been reincarnated, should be coming to Omegaka right now. He and our Omegaka are destined to fight each other. Therefore, I want to know whether Armament Haki has any special effect on the impure world reincarnation, which can be used against Ichiha Madara. As expected hearing Yuzumaki Nagato's explanation, Ichiha Fugaku was speechless. He knew that Nagato would tell Orochimaru. At this moment, Ichiha Fugaku's indifferent looking eyes looked at Orochimaru, who had a shocked face. Later, can the battle with Madara be avoided? Orochimaru nervously licked his lips and tried to persuade Nagato. Ichiha Madara's impure world reincarnation enables him to use his full strength at his peak. If a battle with you occurs, I'm afraid that Omegakur Orochimaru sounded awkward. If Yuzumaki Nagato and Ichiha Madara really fraught, the entire Omegakur would be decimated. When Orochimaru looked at Yuzumaki Nagato expectantly, Yuzumaki Nagato said something that made Orochimaru want to turn around and run away. We avoid it. Ichiha Madara is coming to take my eyes. Orochimaru, I may not be able to make a move when the time comes a Megakur will be relying on you and everyone else. Uh. Resisting the urge to turn around and run, Orochimaru looked at Yuzumaki Nagato in shock. He didn't understand how the other party could utter such brazen words. If Ichiha Madara came, would he run away? Letting me go forward. Orochimaru glanced at Ichiha Fugaku quietly. He wanted to see Ichiha Fugaku's expression. However, he was surprised to find that Ichiha Fugaku was as expressionless as if nothing had happened. Intermediate armament Haki does have a certain degree of restraint toward the impure world reincarnation. Orochimaru thought about it, fearing that Yuzumaki Nagato would think too much, and added. Simply put, an impure world reincarnated person that gets broken up by armament Haki will need more time to recover. Oh. Hearing Orochimaru's words, a gleam of light appeared in Yuzumaki Nagato's eyes. Orochimaru saw the light in Yuzumaki Nagato's eyes and secretly exclaimed in his heart. When he was about to say something, Yuzumaki Nagato had already spoken first. Orochimaru I thought about it. No one among the Shinobis knows more about the impure world reincarnation than you and Akatsuki, none of these people know how to conduct battles better than you either. Therefore, I am going to make you the person in charge of this operation to defend against Ichiha Madara. Yuzumaki Nagato directly took off the rare ring representing his identity, and pushed it in front of Orochimaru. Orochimaru was now baffled by Yuzumaki Nagato's sloppy actions. He blankly stared at Yuzumaki Nagato and mechanically at Ichiha Fugaku. Is there no one else who could command the battle? Orochimaru suspiciously looked at Yuzumaki Nagato. If he were able to defeat this guy himself, his Kusanagi sword would have been on Yuzumaki Nagato's shoulder by now. No one else could be in charge you have got to be kidding me. Akatsuki, that group of miscellaneous people. Let them go at it alone. One is braver than the other. Let them direct the battle by themselves. Let a courageous one go, let them take command. Except for Sasori, who could control everyone to storm the enemy with puppetry, not caring if anyone lives or dies afterward, Orochimaru felt that the others, if they took charge, would be the first ones to go forward. But the problem was Akatsuki now has Ichiha Fugaku. The great Ichiha Patriarch was here. Why should I be the one to command in battle? Besides, I haven't agreed to be the commander. Don't look at him. Patriarch Fugaku can't do it. Yuzumaki Nagato interrupted Orochimaru's contemplation and continued, You were commander in the Second Shinobi World War. Moreover, you have both the ability and experience. 
Yuzumaki Nagato didn't spare any of his praise. In fact, it was Ichiha Fugaku's personal recommendation to have Orochimaru command this battle. Although Patriarch Fugaku is also capable, he doesn't understand the fighting abilities and methods of Akatsuki's members. Furthermore, Tadara and the others wouldn't accept the Patriarch Fugaku's command. Hearing Yuzumaki Nagato's affirmative tone and knowing that the leader's decision couldn't be changed, Orochimaru's eyes look straight at Yuzumaki Nagato. As if reading Orochimaru's thoughts, Yuzumaki Nagato faintly smiled. Orochimaru, what do you want? Power, absolute power. In the battle with Madar, everyone should listen to me. Orochimaru licked his lips and continued to try. Including Ichiha Fugaku. Okay. It was Ichiha Fugaku who spoke. A faint smile appeared at the corners of his mouth, leaving Orochimaru confused for a moment as to what the relationship between Nagato and Ichiha Fugaku was. Orochimaru took a deep look at Ichiha Fugaku, and put Akatsuki's ray ring on his hand. Since it's a battle plan, it still needs a name. Izumaki Nagato's eyes wandered for a moment, then looked at Orochimaru, what do you guys think? How about calling it Operation Eye Protection? Orochimaru speechlessly looked at Yuzumaki Nagato. Since the end of the first exam, his own leader was increasingly out of place. Orochimaru nodded indifferently, somewhat approving of Yuzumaki Nagato's naming. Anyway, it didn't affect his next battle and arrangement, so Orochimaru didn't care. A few hours later, the quarters of Ichiha Madara's mouth picked up as she expressionlessly looked at the rain-soaked Omegakur. Cheeky bastards. Ichiha Madara smiled disdainfully as he felt the depressing atmosphere in Omegakur. To Ichiha Madara, the Rainmaker technique was just a small trip. Whoosh. As Ichiha Madara stepped into Omegakur with one foot, the Rainmaker technique was instantly dispersed. It was a rare sunny day in Omegakur. Do you want to dance too? Ichiha Madara looked at the man in front of him with great interest. He had a slick back hairstyle, wearing a red cloud robe, and what surprised Ichiha Madara slightly was the huge scythe in his hand. Haha. <laughs> Looking at Ichiha Madara, Haydn suddenly laughed bizarrely. He wanted to see if Ichiha Madara was really as amazing as Rajmer said. Arm and hockey. The UZZA bizarre buzzing sound was heard. Whether it was Haydn, or the red cloud robe on Haydn's body, or the huge scythe in his hand, all of it instantly turned pitch black. Hmm. Ichiha Madara was surprised to see Haydn's change. This was the first time he had seen this strange jutsu that could change the color of one's own body. Haydn looked at Ichiha Madara. His mouth was wide open, and the tip of his tongue brushed over his teeth. Originally, he didn't want to participate in this battle, but Orochimaru only said a sentence, and he agreed. Orochimaru is right. A sacrifice like you will please Jash and Sama. Haydn laughed, and at the next moment, he directly charged towards Ichiha Madara, wielding his huge scythe. Whoosh. Haydn wasn't fast, but the distance between the two was so close that he quickly arrived in front of Ichiha Madara. He then leaped up high, holding his scythe with both hands, and vertically slashed towards Ichiha Madara. Bang. When the huge blade of the scythe was half an inch away from Ichiha Madara, the scythe suddenly halted in the air. Haydn looked surprised. He didn't know when somehow a circle of transparent blue ribs appeared in front of Ichiha Madara. Above the ribs, a bone hand grew out and was gently gripping Haydn's scythe. Seeing the other holding the scythe pole, Haydn suddenly showed a cruel smile on his face, and then his arm gently shook. Bang. The front end of the scythe that was grabbed by the skeleton hand, suddenly ejected and bounced through the gap in Susanu's bones, heading towards Ichiha Madara. Ichiha Madara glanced at Haydn, and a playful light flashed in his eyes as he allowed his opponent's scythe to slice through his body. Whoosh. The scythe was extremely sharp, and its tip instantly jabbed into Ichiha Madara. When Haydn saw this, surprise instantly appeared on his face. He pulled back and collected the end of the scythe. Ha ha ha, I've got your blood, where's the blood? Haydn's laughter came to an abrupt end as if his throat was suddenly choked. He looked at the disdain in Ichiha Madara's eyes in horror, directly dropped his scythe, and ran back. Arachimaru. There's no blood at all, how dare you lie to me? Ichiha Madara looked at Haydn, who ran and squealed like a pig, sneered and threw the scythe. Whoosh. The side spun as if it was a giant shuriken with a strange shape and caught up with Haydn, who tried to escape. Whoosh. Without resistance, the flying side directly sliced Haydn's neck. Looking at the corpse that was split in two, Ichiha Madara coldly withdrew his gaze and walked forward. Gulp. In an ambush prepared, not far away, someone saw Haydn getting cut in half and gulped. Two. Too strong. Ichiha Madara is as strong as I saw him back in those days. When he thought of the task Rachmeru had given him, to stall for time, Kakuzu's expression changed. Without Kakuzu doing much, suddenly, an earth grudge construct, wearing a cloud robe, appeared behind him. Kakuzu didn't hesitate and simply let it stay there. After thinking about it, split out another one. 
There were two hearts right here, so he could guarantee that he wouldn't die. After all the preparations, Kakuzu directly went out and rushed towards its Shahamadar. Fire release. Searing migraine. Forming rapid seals, a pillar flame was spat out from Kakuzu's mouth and sprayed toward its Shahamadar. Fire release. Great fire annihilation. Just as Kakuzu's fire release was about to hit its Shahamadar, its Shahamadar's voice suddenly sounded. In the next moment, the sky was filled with flames, sweeping directly toward Kakuzu. In front of Ichihamadar, the gap between their jutsu was like the gap between scattered sparks and a forest fire. Kakuzu's jutsu was instantly engulfed by Ichihamadar's jutsu. Then, great fire annihilation went on and directly swallowed Kakuzu. When the flames cleared, Kakuzu had fallen to the ground, covered in charcoal. The red cloud robe on his body was burned, and countless tentacles inside his body leaked out like worms in front of Ichihamadar. Looking at the horrible scene in front of him, Ichihamadar's face was expressionless. Herb grudge. When Ichihamadara recognized Kakuzu's secret technique, he suddenly saw that two masks on Kakuzu's back suddenly broke apart. Immediately after, Kakuzu got up from the ground and put another set of red cloud robes on himself, as if it was a magic trick. Art is an explosion. Ha boom a violent explosion and Dadara's loud shout resounded in no particular order. The ground beneath their feet shattered in the next moment, and the sky was filled with flames that directly engulfed Ichihamadara and Kakuzu. Whoosh. A tens of meters tall blue giant instantly took shape when the explosion was about to engulf Ichihamadar. Immediately after the explosion came with a boom, Kakuzu's body was instantly torn apart in the explosion. Countless earth grudge tentacles were rapidly generated, coiled with each other, and then torn apart again. On the other hand, because the Susanu summoned by Ichihamadara was only the most ordinary full-bodied Susanu, it was surprisingly destroyed in most of Dadara's carefully arranged explosion. But it also completed its mission honorably. Under its protection, the impure world reincarnated Madara didn't suffer any harm. Secret Technique. Human Body Puppet Control. Sasori's figure appeared behind Dadar, and a dozen lines of chakra shot out from Haruko's body at the same time. These chakra threads bizarrely burrowed through Susanu's cracks, capturing Ichihem Madara's feet and dragging him straight out of Susanu. What a release. What a shark bullet technique. A ghost-like shark appeared in the sky. Kissum's hands formed a seal, and in the next moment, more than a dozen water sharks made from water release, rushed towards Ichihamadara in a frenzy. Summoning Technique. Snakes. Rajimaru also appeared in mid-air, summoning a huge serpent to fall from above. Crushing down toward Ichihamadara. Humph. Ichihamadara was in mid-air. Although he was besieged by a few people, the expression on his face didn't fluctuate. His manjekyo instantly transformed into Rinnegan and directly absorbed all the water sharks under Kissum's shock gaze. Then, a repulsive force exploded. The 10,000 snakes let out a hess of pain and disappeared into a white mist with a bang. Ichihamadara descended from the sky and landed on the ground of a Megakur, looking at the Akatsuki group coldly. He saw that Yuzumaki Nagato wasn't among these people, and with a cold snort, Ichihamadara Rinnegan instantly returned to its manjekyo state. In the next moment, Susanu directly enveloped him from both sides. Both hands formed seals at the same time, suddenly, and two huge round meteorites fell from the sky. Tengai Shinsei. This the Tengai Shinsei Jutsu was beyond common sense. Both the Rachimaru and the Akatsuki crowd's faces instantly changed. Damn it, damn it. Rachimaru, are you even prepared for this? Haydn, who had put his head back on his neck, trotted to the Akatsuki group and angrily questioned Rachimaru. On the other side, Kakuzu, who had changed into another red cloud robe, also retreated from the battlefield, and looked at Ichihamadar, who had great power with palpitations. Fugaku, it's up to you now. Arachimaru's somber voice rang out, causing the Akatsuki crowd to instantly change expressions, especially Dadar. Ichiha Fugaku. Ichiha. Before Dadar could continue to wonder, suddenly, a figure shrouded in a black robe, had leaped out from behind the crowd, as if it were black shadow. Then, the black shadow in the air quickly constructed a series of dark chakra bones, flesh, blood, and armor. In just a few moments, a huge pitch black Susanu descended with a bang in front of the crowd. Looking at that huge pitch black magnificent figure, the Akatsuki crowd was all frozen at the moment. Especially Dadar. At the moment, he was looking at Fugaku's Susanu, doubting his life. The armed giant was hundreds of meters tall. It was more than twice as tall as the tens of meters one, summoned by Chihamadar. It was as high as the meteorite falling from the sky. This Rachimaru. With him around, how dare you trick me into being a meat shield. I'll cut you down. Haydn looked at Rachimaru angrily. His words attracted Kakuzu's strong approval. 
Under the shock gaze of Akatsuki's people, the ink-like giant directly pulled out the black flaming Susanoo blade in his hand, and slashed towards the sky. To be exact, it was toward the two meteorites falling in the sky. Swish. 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 The light of the blade blasted out. Haydn couldn't see the other party slash several times, he only saw the two meteorites in the sky were directly shattered and became large debris, falling down to the ground. Beyond the average full-body Susanoo. Not the eternal Manjakyo. Ichiha Madara coldly stared at the Susanoo in front of him. He didn't know who the owner of this Susanoo was, but it was the first time he saw a black Susanoo, even if he was Ichiha Madara. Especially the other party's chakra blade, it was burning with dark flames. After cutting the meteorite, the meteorite was stained with black flame, directly burning up. The flames were burning very fast, and before the stones had reached the ground, they were already burned out. Interesting. Ichiha Madara's Manjakyo Shuringen began to turn, and his Susanoo changed instantly, and began to stretch up infinitely. Almost instantly, Madara's Susanoo surpassed Ichiha Fugaku's Susanoo. Amazing. Ichiha Fugaku was stunned. He lifted up his head and looked at the blue Susanoo, twice as tall as his. His whole body froze, and his scalp tingled. After merging with Itachi's eyes, he awakened a 200 meters tall Susanoo, nearly 300 meters. Unexpectedly he couldn't even reach the other's waist. As he knew, on the night of that genocide, the two Itachi Susanoo were only around 80 meters tall. This is. Obviously, they both were the heads of the Ichiha clan, although a generation or two apart, but this gap was too big. Ichiha Fugaku thought that there would be a gap between himself and Ichiha Madara, but how could he ever have imagined that the gap between him and Ichiha Madara would be so big? This wasn't a gap. It was simply an insurmountable rift. Damn it. Ichiha Fugaku controlled his Susanoo to prepare for battle. Seeing Ichiha Madara's full form, Ichiha Fugaku knew that his only chance of victory was the black flames on his own Susanoo's sword. The unquenchable fire, a Madarasu. This was the ability Fugaku got after fusing with Itachi's eyes. As long as his Susanoo sword was unsheathed, the Amaterasu flames would burn. Seeing that the other party was intimidated by himself, Ichiha Madara looked at the Susanoo below with a little curiosity. It was the first time he had seen a Susanoo that could reach his waist, which made him curious about the black-robed man within the Susanoo. After all, other people's Susanoo couldn't even reach his calf, and he could trample those guys to death with one foot. Would release. Nativity of a world of trees. Ichiha Madara's hands formed a seal, and suddenly, the ground of a Megagur shattered and cracked. Numerous roots meandered, and in the blink of an eye, most of the Megagur was covered by big trees. Most of the trees are attacking Ichiha Fugaku. If Madara hadn't paid special attention to Ichiha Fugaku, the whole village would have been destroyed at this moment. Fire release. Phoenix Flower Jutsu. Seeing countless large trees winding towards him, Ichiha Fugaku hastily used fire release to burn out the frontmost attack. Then the Susanoo sword in his hand danced like the wind and cut off all the subsequent roots. Although he resisted Ichiha Madara's attack, for the time being, Fugaku knew that he was already struggling, and Madara hadn't used his full strength yet. The gap was too large. High above a Megakur. With the six pains in Kashina, Nagato was overlooking the battle between the two heads of the Ichiha clan below. Looking down at the battle that was about to conclude, Yuzumaki Nagato looked at Yuzumaki Kashina, who looked solemn. We still need you. I know. Yuzumaki Kashina nodded and leaped straight off of Naraka path. The strong wind from the high speed descent caused Kashina's eyes to narrow slightly, as she reoriented herself high in the air, and darted towards Ichiha Madara below. Izumi. Now. Ichiha Fugaku looked up, saw Yuzumaki Kashina flying down, and shouted. Then the eternal Manjakyo world. The power of his Susanoo instantly exploded, and the Susanoo blade in his hand slashed at Ichiha Madara's ankle. WHOOSH the sound of colliding metal on metal rang out violently, echoing in the sky above a Megakur. Madara's Susanoo lurched, and inside it, Madara was pushed and tilted to the left. At the same time, a dark portal suddenly appeared in Ichiha Madara's Susanoo, which directly swallowed Ichiha Madara. In the next moment, the dark portal opened above Madara's Susanoo's head, and Ichiha Madara's figure fell from it. Before giving Ichiha Madara a chance to move, Yuzumaki Kushina's figure came roaring from above. Behind her, eight chains of chakra mercilessly wrapped around Madara's body. Sealing Jutsu. Adamantine sealing chains. A circle of chains flew around, directly wrapping Ichiha Madara into a dumpling. After a successful blow, Yuzumaki Kushina broke off the chains on her back and fled frantically to the side. In front of her, a dark portal opened once again, and Kashina, overjoyed at sight, rushed straight in. In the next moment, she appeared in the building above the Megakur. Both Ichiha Mikoto and Ichiha Izumi were standing there, but at the moment, tears of blood were trickling down Ichiha Izumi's face. 
Manjukyo against Eternal Manjukyo, Izumi's eye technique was severely damaged, and for a short time, she can't use the eye technique again. Makoto held at Chiha Izumi, his body was shaking, with a flash of heartache in her eyes. Izumi had been with Makoto during these years, and Makoto treated the other as an adoptive daughter. When she saw the backlash of her eye technique, it was heartbreaking. When the battle is over, I'll take you to Orochimaru. I believe that guy must have a way to turn your eyes into Fugaki's kind. Yuzumaki Kashina said so and turned her head to look at the distant battlefield. Her task of temporarily sealing Ichiha Madara had been completed, and the rest was up to Nagato. Chibaku Tensei. Six paths. Chibaku Tensei. At the moment when Yuzumaki Kashina fled the battle, Yuzumaki Nagato's voice and the voice of Diva Path sounded at the same time. Impressively, Yuzumaki Nagato was dedicated to dual use, directly using two Chibaku Tensei. Two small black orbs were created from their hands, flying together and floating upwards. Suddenly, in a megaker, countless giant trees rose up from the ground, carrying thousands of debris, and flew upwards. Ichiha Madara was breaking free from the chains on his body when in the next moment, the ground shattered with a loud crack, carrying him towards the sky. For the first time, Ichiha Madara's demeanor changed. He didn't expect that because of his momentary carelessness, the battle had taken such a sharp turn for the worse. Mainly, it was because he didn't expect that Yuzumaki Nagato's men had Yuzumaki clan sealing technique users. Even more unexpectedly, Yuzumaki Nagato dared to attack him from above, and tried to seal him. Thinking of the ingenious layout of this battle, even to Ichiha Madara's discerning eye, it wasn't bad. Especially at the end, the portal and adamantine sealing chains, suddenly appeared and pulled himself from inside Susanoo. And now, even the Chibaku Tensei. With the seamless connection of the three jutsu, even Ichiha Madara couldn't break free, and was directly caught up in Chibaku Tensei. Finally, it's over. Seeing that Ichiha Madara was sealed, Arachimaru finally breathed a sigh of relief, and wiped the cold sweat on his face with his sleeves. Although he only seemed to have summoned a giant snake once, his mind was in a constant state of tension. Not only Arachimaru but also others, at this moment, relaxed. Even Yuzumaki Nagato, who was above, began to descend slowly toward the bottom. Shit 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 shit. That can't be, right? Arachimaru looked at that. Dadara seemed to see something impossible and shouted towards Arachimaru in horror. Hearing the panic in Dadara's voice, the hearts of Akatsuki's crowd jolted. Especially Arachimaru, his face instantly changed, and he looked in the direction that Dadara said. With a glance, all the hairs on his body stood on end. No, it's impossible. He's now in an impure world reincarnated state. Without the real Sharingan, it's impossible to use the Izanagi. What's going on here? Was it just an illusion technique? Arachimaru was confused. At the moment, he was completely stupefied. Not only him, but Yuzumaki Nagato, who was in mid-air, also looked at Ichiha Madar, who reappeared in the same place, in disbelief. That's impossible. No way. He just saw it with his own eyes. The other party was sucked into Chibaku Tensei. How could he still be here? Moreover, Susanu, who had already dissipated, appeared with him. Now, what else do you have up your sleeve? Ichiha Madara looked down on Akatsuki's people, and his majestic voice sounded from above. Then, the huge Susanu suddenly moved. Whoosh. The Susanu sword was instantly unsheathed and brushed against the ceiling stone ball formed by Chibaku Tensei behind him. Boom. As if there was a delay, the Susanu sword returned to his sheath before the Chibaku Tensei stone ball behind the Susanu exploded with a bang. Powerful wind pressure and explosive projectiles of rocks struck at Chiha Madara Susanu's back without causing any damage at all. Without looking at the explosion behind him, Ichiha Madara's giant Susanu held a sword in each hand. The one in his left hand was pointing at Ichiha Fugaku and the Akatsuki crowd behind him, while the other in his right hand was pointing at Yuzumaki Nagato, who was in mid-air. At this moment, feeling the arrogance and strength from Ichiha Madara, a deep sense of powerlessness welled up in all their hearts. It was as if a man was powerless against a god. Arachimaru, what should we do? At the moment, feeling the suffocating pressure in the field, Haydn felt that his mouth couldn't talk so well. He really believed in Arachimaru's wicked mind and followed Arachimaru into this mess. In Haydn's heart, he was already cursing at Arachimaru up and down. He's no longer in existence that can be defeated by strategy. Arachimaru's eyes narrowed as he looked at Ichiha Madara and Ichiha Fugaku. He thought Ichiha Fugaku's black Susanu was outrageous enough, but Ichiha Madara's was even more outrageous. Let's see what the leader does next, Arachimaru licked his dry, cracked lips, as the desire for a pair of Sharingan reappeared in his heart. According to Ichiha Fugaku and Ichiha Madara's strength, it seemed that it was necessary for him to prepare an Ichiha clan vessel for himself, to replace Kamimuro. 
Originally, before the appearance of the exam space, that is, before the Kanoha debacle, the container he prepared for himself was at Chihasasuk. It was definitely not going to work now. Not to mention, Ichiha Sasuke had become one of Akatsuki's reserve members. Ichiha Fugaku was still alive, so Rachimaru had to change his target. Moreover, Ichiha Sasuke was originally chosen because there were no other candidates. Now, with other choices, Rachimaru didn't need to consider Ichiha Sasuke at all. The Night of Genocide only awakened a single Tomo. Rachimaru really despised Ichiha Sasuke's qualifications. Rachimaru's eyes twitched slightly when he thought of Kagaya Kimimuro. As the last surviving orphan of the Kagaya clan, his existence has great research value. Moreover, after all, he was the child he picked up as a small kid. Orochimaru felt a bit regretful if this sincere subordinate died because of his bloodline disease. Originally, there was nothing Orochimaru could do about Kagaya Kimimuro's bloodline disease. But recently, he saw Yuzumaki Nagato going around snatching children, so he asked Kagaya Kimimuro to bring those children from his other laboratories and come to Omegakur. Counting the time, they should be arriving soon. When the time came, he would let Nagato take the lead in teaching, and then when necessary, follow him here, Orochimaru was still planning. The Akatsuki members around him thought he was thinking about ways to defeat Ichihamidar, and didn't want to disturb him. On the other hand, Yuzumaki Nagato was confronting Ichihamidar. You don't seem very surprised about my arrival. Ichihamidar's proud voice rang out, looking at Yuzumaki Nagato with interest. Although he knew that Yuzumaki Nagato would have grown a lot, he found that he still underestimated the Yuzumaki clan's children. He had actually grown to this point, having subordinates and almost sealing him. Especially when Madara saw the resurrection of his subordinates with the secret technique Earth Grudge, Ichiha Madara had a new understanding of Nagato's subordinates. Although worthy of the name, it was impractical. They had a strong suppressive power against the five major shinobi villages. Especially thinking back to the dangerous moment just now, even Ichiha Madara's heart felt a pang of fear. If he hadn't gotten Chrono Break in that weird exam space, he would have been sealed by Nagato by now. It was important to understand that once an impure world reincarnate person was sealed, it was impossible for them to get reincarnated again. Thought it was you but never expected that it would really be you. Yuzumaki Nagato said indifferently, and his face looked calm. As he said, he speculated early on that his eyes might belong to Ichiha Madara. But the real confirmation came when Ichiha Madara arrived just now. Will you hand it over yourself, or do I have to do it? Ichiha Madara had a faint note of menace in his voice. He felt that at this point in time, there was no need for him to make a move. Nagato should have recognized the reality. Although it looks like we are trying to oppress you with numbers, but since we are facing the legendary shinobi, that shouldn't be a problem. Yuzumaki Nagato had a smile at the corner of his lips, while his eyes looked very serious. As his voice dropped, the six pains appeared at his side, one after another. Seven pairs of Yuri Rinnegan stared at Ichiha Madara altogether. Splitting Rinnegan's basic ability to use it. Yuzumaki Nagato, you're too short-sighted. Ichiha Madara coldly looked at Yuzumaki Nagato, who he felt was insulting his Rinnegan. This feeling was similar to playing cards. He gave him four aces that could be four of a kind, but he was splitting them out. Although it still had a dominant power over the whole match, it seemed like a total waste to Ichiha Madara. Ichiha Madara looked at Yuzumaki Nagato and Akatsuki nearby, and suddenly sneered. Did you say oppressing the few with the many? Ichiha Madara's eyes swept over the crowd. The mockery in his gaze was evident. Who do you think is the one who oppresses the few with the many? Wood release. Wood clone jutsu. With Ichiha Madara's words, a full 25 wood release clones appeared around Ichiha Madara. Then, all the clones moved, and surprisingly, they all used an ordinary version of the full-bodied Susanoo. Half of the 25 nearly 80 meter tall Susanoo gathered in a circle, surrounding Yuzumaki Nagato in the middle, while the other half, like an advancing giant, staggered towards the Akatsuki crowd. This. This is how you outnumber people. Listening to Ichiha Madara's satisfied voice and looking at the two dozen huge blue figures, Haiden went numb, Kakuzu went numb, even Dadara was numb. Because of Ichiha Tachi, Dadara had always been ready to prove himself by defeating a Shuringen owner to relieve his fear of the Shuringen. But now, seeing Ichiha Madara's powers not gonna lie, I want a pair of Ichiha clan Shuringen now. Licking his lips, Dadara's eager voice rang out, causing Rachimaru, who was next to him, to freeze for a moment, then quickly relented. Seeing Ichiha Madara's power, even Dadara was interested in Shuringen now. Even his hatred for Shuringen was put aside. Rachimaru's eyes rolled. His somewhat deliberately suppressed voice rang out. Part of the Ichiha clan had come to Omegakur. You can try to gain their trust and, at some point, get them to give you their eyes. Huh. Dadara was confused by Rachimaru's words. 
He didn't expect Rajamari to reveal such important news when he just mentioned it casually. The Chaha clan came to Omegakur. So the Chaha people are still alive. Ah. That's both Dadara and the Akatsuki crowd were dumbfounded at the moment. I wondered where that damned Chaha Tachi went. Could he be back in his mother's embrace? Dadara's questioning voice rang out. Then his eyes rolled a few times, and he looked at Arachimaru. After all that talk, you must want a pair of Shuringen too, right? Ichiha Sasuke Shuringen, do you want it or not? I want it. Arachimaru shook his head, glanced at Dadar, who had gotten a little excited, and gazed quietly at the pitch black Susanu not far away. Dadar doesn't know that Ichiha Fugaku is Ichiha Sasuke's father hopefully, with the leader around, Dadar won't get killed by Ichiha Fugaku. After all, what bad intentions could he and Dadar have? Dadara just wanted to collect a pair of Shuringen, while Orochimaru just wanted someone to be a decoy. Don't you think about these things? Sasori's voice sounded, and at some point, he had emerged from his puppet, Haruko. At this moment, he was in his own human puppet form, not to mention, behind him, hundreds of puppets dressed in red appeared. Haha, <laughs> don't be so nervous. You haven't taken off your clothes yet, so you can't die. Haydn looked at the others who had tensed up and made a snide remark. He then turned his attention to Ichihamidar, who was facing off with Yuzumaki Nagato. Arachimaru, do you know the eight inner gates formation? Eight gates. Arachimaru froze and repeated it in a daze, looking at Hiding with a strange gaze. Is it the time to ask something like this? You still want a quick fix? Learn from Mike Guy, and kick Madara on the spot. Arachimaru's brow furrowed slightly as he suddenly thought of Hiding's traits. Immortality plus, the eight gates Arachimaru kept silent. As someone who once came close to becoming a Hokage, Arachimaru certainly knew about the eight inner gates formation. But he couldn't give it to Hiding. After all, building up a stronger person than him in Akatsuki wasn't in Arachimaru's interest. What's more, Arachimaru felt that even if he gave Hiding the eight gates technique. No, even if the eight gates were popularized and spread throughout the shinobi world, there wasn't necessarily anyone who could match my guy. No one would really be naive enough to think that Morning Peacock, Daytime Tiger, Evening Elephant, and Night Guy were really just ordinary names for the skills of the Eight Gates technique, right? Those were the secret codes of the Eight Gates. Morning, Day, Evening, and Night. The secret to the success of the Eight Gates was to keep practicing, keep practicing, and keep practicing. Morning to Night. If anyone who knew Mike Guy were to name the hardest working person they have ever met, the answer would be Mike Guy. Therefore, even Arachimaru, who was so obsessed with immortality techniques and forbidden techniques, gave up on this forbidden technique after finding out the eight inner gates formation secret. If there were no other words to describe Arachimaru's contempt for Haydn's whimsical thinking at this moment, Arachimaru would like to tell Haydn one thing. Even all the Hokages of the past, none of them studied the eight inner gates formation. Therefore, in the survival exam, when Mike Guy killed four cages, when the video of the fourth shinobi world war revealed that he almost kicked six path Madara to death, Arachimaru wasn't surprised, nor did he envy. Because he knew that if it wasn't for the divine anomaly of the exam space, those few seconds of Mike Guy's glory were what he had exchanged for a lifetime of working in silence. Keeping silent and suddenly achieving greatness. Swish. As Arachimaru was thinking, a beautiful figure with wings on her back, suddenly flew over the heads of the group, and headed straight up to where Chihemadara and Yuzumaki Nagato were facing each other. Akatsuki, prepared to fight back. Conan's call voice sounded overhead, which made everyone in Akatsuki raise their heads. Even Ichiha Fugaku, at the moment, looked up curiously. What is she going to do? On the other hand, Yuzumaki Kushina and Ichiha Mikoto, who stood above the Megakur, noticed Conan's bizarre behavior. In the eyes of the puzzled crowd of Omegakur, Conan flew and arrived behind Ichiha Madara in the blink of an eye. The bizarre explosive tag was attached to Ichiha Madara's Susanoo in a swift motion, and then her wings flapped lightly, quickly pulling away. Conan, who then escaped to a safe distance, made a sharp turn in the air. Then, Conan crushed the card in her hand directly against Ichiha Madara's Susanoo. Select. Ichiha Madara. What's that? Ichiha Madara found a dazzling red ore that suddenly blossomed out of Conan's hand and shot into his body. Under that weird red ore, Ichiha Madara was surprised to find that his full body Susanoo seemed to be defenseless. Allowing the red ore to pass through. Ichiha Madara looked at the red ore that shot into his body suspiciously. Originally, Conan appeared behind him, but he didn't care. He knew it was because of Shuringen. The other party didn't dare to appear in front of him. Did she think appearing behind me was the answer? What's even funnier was that she pasted an explosive tag on his Susanoo. An explosive tag against Susanoo why don't you just stab it with a kunai? Originally, Ichiha Madara was about to ridicule, but by now, he had been surprised by the change that had just taken place. What is this technique? 
Seeing that the red glow was too strange, Ichiha Madara was immediately on guard. After what happened just now, Ichiha Madara had been afraid of being careless. After all, unlike just now, his chrono break was cooling down. Just when Ichiha Madara's mind was quickly turning, he heard Conan's voice again. Nagato, Ichiha Madara now has a phobia. As long as he sees blood, his strength will drop by more than half. Hearing Conan's words, Ichiha Madara suddenly froze and then flew into a rage. Me. Ichiha Madara. Fear blood. Ichiha Madara laughed. His already terrifying aura increased again, causing everyone's face to change. It seems that I am underestimated. The voice seemed to be squeezed out of his gritting teeth. At this moment, Ichiha Madara was unabashedly mad with killing intent. Unexpectedly, a gust of wind swept around him, with him as the center of the circle, sweeping in all directions. Hemophobia. I, Ichiha Madara, terrified of blood haha. Ichiha Madara sneered. I fought bloody battles while she, a little girl, was probably only crying somewhere. She said I was afraid of blood. Me, Ichiha Madara why didn't she just say that Atsutsuki Kagaya would die because of a seduction technique? Clank. Controlling Susanu and pulling out two swords, Ichiha Madara was ready to strike straight away. He didn't want to waste any more time with these people. Just as Ichiha Madara was about to move, when Uzumaki Nagato heard Conan's warning, without thinking, he directly poured out chakra on his hand and slashed his other palm. Whoosh. The chakra instantly cut his palm, and blood spurted out. In order to ensure that Ichiha Madara could see, Uzumaki Nagato raised his bloody palm towards Ichiha Madara. Under the influence of gravity, Uzumaki Nagato's blood spurted down in a parabolic pattern from in front of the two. At this moment, there was a bizarre situation on the battlefield, as if two young children were fighting in the sandpit, raising dust. It's just that at this moment, the two people fighting were two of the most powerful people in the shinobi world, and what was raised wasn't sand but blood. Is it effective? Conan appeared in the distance. Her pair of beautiful eyes looked forward to Ichiha Madara's reaction. The card, which she snatched from Ryuji, seemed to be a product of the exam space. Conan didn't know how Ryuji got it. After all, as far as she could remember, Ryuji only took the survival exam once, and he wasn't in the top ranks. But at the moment, this hemophobia card could still be used to defeat Ichiha Madara. Conan had read the description on the card, and she knew that with Ichiha Madara's power, he fell into the strong-willed category. That meant that Ichiha Madara's strength would drop by 60%. Hmm. What's going on? At the moment of seeing the blood, Ichiha Madara was horrified to find that a sudden change began to appear in his body. Because he couldn't feel the change of his own chakra in his current state, Ichiha Madara Susanu was the first to change. Under Ichiha Madara's shock gaze, the full-bodied Susanu on him was degrading rapidly. The Susanu sword disappeared. Its armor disappeared. Under Ichiha Madara's shock gaze, the full-bodied Susanu on him was degrading rapidly. The Susanu sword disappeared. Its armor disappeared. Even flesh and blood made of chakra were quickly disappearing. In the blink of an eye, his complete Susanu reverted to its second form. Impossible. This is impossible. Ichiha Madara fiercely widened his eyes, and the eternal Manjakyo's power quickly poured into his Susanu. However, his Susanu didn't change. The terrifying eye technique's power seemed to sink into nothingness. No matter how he forced it, his body was still in the second stage Susanu. This. 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 Ichiha Madara, he finally panicked. He didn't know whether he had a phobia or not, but he knew that, as the woman just said, his strength was suppressed. Moreover, it wasn't as simple as half. If this were half, he would at least remain in the full-bodied form. Ichiha Madara's eyes darted across his own wood-release clones below. Sure enough. 13 out of the 25 wood-release clones actually disappeared. In other words, he was suppressed by at least 60%. Thinking about what the woman had just done, Ichiha Madara suddenly jolted and quickly looked at the explosion tag behind his back. Since that woman's tactics were so strange, Ichiha Madara believed that what she had just placed wasn't a normal explosive tag. The explosion of the explosive tag, especially so many of them, couldn't be absorbed, even by his own Rinnegan. As for resistance against trillions of explosive tags, if he was still in his full-bodied Susanu, Ichiha Madara might still feel confident Ichiha Madara looked at Yuzumaki Nagato, who quickly withdrew to the side. His expression turned incomparably ugly, and his heart sank even deeper. He didn't think that he would be careless again. He was calculated by her. Damn it. Wood release. Wood golem technique. Watching the explosive tags approaching, Ichiha Madara's hands quickly formed a seal and instantly used wood release to envelop himself in a wooden man. Then, in his second stage, Susanu was placed on the wood golem, forming two layers of protection. Boom. 
Just as Ichihemidara finished forming his technique, the explosion of the explosive tag sounded. After the first explosion, suddenly, sounds of continuous exploding explosive tags resounded in a megakur. Boom boom. Boom boom. Violent and continuous explosions rang out into one. Everyone in Akatsuki looked at Ichihemidara, who was surrounded by fire, in shock, they didn't expect that Conan would be so ruthless. She didn't always make a move, but when she did, it was powerful. Although it was a bit of an ambush and Ichihamidara's arrogance to blame. That was Ichihamidara. Midar. Now, it was surprising that he exerted his defense jutsu at full strength. Everyone looked towards Ichihamidara with difficulty. They wanted to know if Ichihamidara had the ability to solve the current situation. Surrounding the golem summoned by Ichihamidara was dense and still emerging explosive tags. These explosive tags wildly blew up while chasing the wooden golem, exploding instantly upon contact, blossoming with its destructive power to the fullest. In the midst of the bombardment of innumerable explosive tags, the wooden man shrouded in Susanu shattered. Then the wood golem technique shattered. Then Ichihamidara shattered at the moment when Ichihamidara was blown to pieces by the explosive tags, his only 10 remaining wood release clones instantly disappeared. Boom. 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 The explosion continued. Watching the explosion in the center of the battlefield tier the Ichihamidara that had just converged once again, all the members of Akatsuki gulped with difficulty. They stared at Conan, who fluttered slowly in the air, not far away. It's terrifying Conan is terrifying. Even Yuzumaki Nagato, at this moment, was looking at Conan bewilderedly. All along, he knew that Conan was very strong, and she had been accumulating explosive tags, but that's too ruthless. Looking at the explosive tags still appearing on the battlefield, Nagato felt a chill. Fortunately, Conan wasn't his enemy. Glancing at the cold face Conan too chilling. So cold what kind of man would want her? Thinking about it, Yuzumaki Nagato's eyes were fixed on the center of the explosion. As soon as the explosion subsided, he used Shibaku Tensei to seal Ichihamidara again. He didn't believe that, even if Ichihamidara's body was gone, he could still hide this time. Hahaha. <laughs> Conan Ineki is awesome. Conan Ineki is awesome. Fuck Shuringen. True art is an explosion. Blow up. Blow up. Blow up for me. Blow up for me. Dadara's excited voice suddenly sounded. At this moment, he saw thousands of explosive tags detonated indiscriminately. Dadara was boiling all over. When he saw Conan's self-prepared explosive tags blow Obito up, he was amazed. Last time, seeing Conan's display of tandem explosive tags in the survival exam, he knew that Conan was a woman who understood his art. Now, seeing Conan's handiwork on the spot, listening to the roar of that explosion, and actually feeling the power of the blast. At this moment, Conan had become his god. God of explosion. He suddenly felt a little ashamed of himself. Just now, he had doubted his art. Just now, he was going to look for a pair of Shuringen from the Ichiha clan. TSK. Garbage bloodline limit. Rubbish Ichiha. To make his point, Dadara harshly cursed. Pity Shuringen even when Ichiha Madara was that powerful. Wasn't he still brown to smithereens by Aneki? Not to mention the other Ichiha. Rubbish. Art, that's the way to go. An explosion that will last forever. Conan Aneki. You're the greatest. Hmm. Ichiha Fugaku frowned at Dadara's arrogance. Glancing at the explosion that had begun to subside, Ichiha Fugaku knew the momentum was over, and simply dispersed the full-bodied Susanu on his body. He was about to walk toward the Dadara kid when suddenly, he looked confused. In the next moment, Ichiha Fugaku was shocked to find that he was actually in a pure white space. Whoosh. Looking at Ichiha Fugaku's sudden disappearance, everyone in Akatsuki was surprised. Before they could react, a huge and familiar live screen instantly appeared above them. Exam exam space, the person who was most surprised to see the exam space open again, was Conan. Her expression suddenly changed, her wings flapped, and even Skywalk was used. She frantically flew towards the sky above a Megakur. Ugh. Mikoto. Izumi. Yuzumaki Kashina looked around, two people directly disappeared in front of her. She looked up, only to find that the two people had appeared in the exam space. So many people. Yuzumaki Kashina looked at the screen and paused. She didn't expect that there were so many people in the exam space this time. At a rough glance, it was over 500 people. Not counting Fugaku, Mikoto, and Izumi, whom she knew, Sasuke, her son's little classmate, was also in it. At this moment, he, like the crowd, looked at the exam space in bewilderment. In the exam space, Sasuke looked dumbfounded at the space he was in. He didn't expect that he would somehow enter the exam space again. According to Akatsuki's leader, a Megakur was going to face a terrible enemy, so the civilians in a Megakur and the Shinobi who weren't strong enough, had been placed in a safe area for protection. 
It was worth mentioning Akatsuki's new additions, Mamachi Zabuza. However, Sasuke suspected that Naruto's fox and Gar's Tanuki seemed to know something. Sasuke was surprised that they would spare no effort to maintain law and order. Especially after knowing that Naruto's mother was resurrected. This feeling of impending troubles made Sasuke even more curious. Who was the enemy Akatsuki was going to face? Or, who was it that could make Akatsuki take it so seriously? Originally, in the safe zone, he could only hear the crazy sounds of explosions. Yuzumaki Naruto also volunteered to lead the several others to maintain order, and in the blink of an eye, he appeared here himself. This is. The exam space. When the first figure appeared in the exam space, Ichiha Sasuke paused. Then, he saw a succession of figures appearing in the exam space. Ichiha Sasuke, who was careful and cautious, was still searching for the commonality between these people and himself. But, when he saw two women appear, a girl and a pregnant woman, in the exam space, he was dumbfounded. He was stunned on the spot. How could they be so similar? This woman, how could she be so much like his own mother, Ichiha Mikoto? Hold on. Ichiha Sasuke looked at the girl beside the pregnant woman Ichiha Izumi Sasuke's heart jolted. If this girl was Ichiha Izumi, then this pregnant woman wasn't she really his own mother. Hold on a bit more. Pregnant. Mother is pregnant. Sasuke. Makoto had just entered the exam space, and her pair of beautiful eyes fell on Ichiha Sasuke. Woo woo woo, my Sasuke. Ichiha Makoto saw Sasuke and had an instant emotional breakdown. Over the years, in order to not interfere with Itachi's arrangement and also for the safety of the Ichiha clan, she and Fugaku had never approached Sasuke. Especially during this time, she could see Sasuke every day, but she couldn't reach out to him. Now it was finally okay. Ichiha Mikoto didn't expect that her and Sasuke's meeting would be like this either. Taking the day's Sasuke in her arms, Mikoto rubbed her smooth chin against Sasuke's head. All these years, it's been hard on you, Sasuke. Ichiha Mikoto's warm tears fell on his face. Feeling the long-lost warmth, Ichiha Sasuke's eyes were suddenly wet. Mother, are they all members of the Ichiha clan? Sasuke's voice carried a hint of thrill, but more than that, it was one of great enlightenment. This surprised Mikoto a little, yes, Sasuke, what's wrong? Upon hearing his mother's words, a bright light burst into Ichiha Sasuke's eyes. He knew. He figured it out. He knew why the Ichiha clan, which was supposed to be extinct, had appeared here. He knew why the exam space had his pregnant mother in it. His mother was pregnant. This was obviously his mother from the time when he wasn't born yet. The exam space is too strong. Unexpectedly, people from the past could be dragged into the exam space for an exam. This this this. Ichiha Sasuke was so shocked that he had forgotten how Mikoto recognized him at first glance. At the moment, his whole mind was in his own fantasy. Suddenly, a burst of light erupted in Ichiha Sasuke's eyes. At this time, mother hasn't given birth to me yet. Ichiha Tachi, that bastard, hadn't thought about exterminating the clan yet. What if what if? What will happen if mother knows that Ichiha Tachi will destroy the clan in the future? Ichiha Sasuke couldn't think of it, and didn't dare to think about it. He took a deep breath. He knew that what he would say next would be shocking and terrible to his mother. It could possibly even affect the past and the future of the shinobi world. But he had to convince his mother. Mother, I know what I will say next will be hard for you to accept, but... Please remember my next words. In the future, Ichiha Tachi will exterminate the Ichiha clan, with the tacit approval and support of Saratobi Hiruzen and Shimura Danzo. He will kill you and father. From the whole clan, I'll be the only one left alive. Now that you know the future, you must avoid such a thing. They all froze when they heard Ichiha Sasuke's words, whether it was Ichiha Mikoto, Ichiha Izumi, or the other Ichiha clansmen. Then everyone's face instantly turned cold, and they looked at Ichiha Sasuke unkindly. Especially in Ichiha Izumi. Her eyes had begun to change, forming an inverted triangle pattern. Feeling that there was something wrong with the surrounding atmosphere, Ichiha Sasuke raised his head with some doubts, and he saw his mother's serious face. Sasuke, you are not allowed to say that about your brother. Ichiha Mikoto's voice had taken on a hint of blame. She knew that Sasuke was going through the experience that Ichiha Itachi had planned out, but she still wouldn't allow Sasuke to say that. Itachi had paid too much for the clan. He is a hero of the clan. Hero Ichiha Sasuke was shocked, he was completely flabbergasted. He was a little confused. What's going on? Ichiha Itachi is the hero Sasuke clucked at the others, almost stupefied. He hoped to see a different answer in the eyes of the others. But when he turned his head, everyone stared at him with their Sharingan. There were even a dozen people with more complex patterns flashing in their eyes. They were staring at him with a deadly stare and fighting stance, wanting to fight him. Crazy are you all crazy? Feeling the stares, Sasuke's throat rolled. 
He had no doubt that if Ichiha Mikoto wasn't holding him, and if this wasn't the exam space, these Ichiha clansmen who came here from the past would eat him alive. This Sasuke was so distraught that he still couldn't imagine what had happened to the Ichiha clan. They're insane. Everyone's crazy. It's all fucking crazy. The whole clan is crazy. Ichiha Itachi a hero hahaha. If he, Ichiha Itachi, is a hero. I, Ichiha Sasuke, am the son of Sage of Six Paths. Just as Ichiha Sasuke was trying to persuade his mother to believe him, a figure suddenly appeared in the exam space. Mikoto Sasuke Ichiha Fugaku flickered into the space and saw other people in the exam space, and Ichiha Fugaku's heart instantly understood. It seemed that this was an exclusive exam for the Ichiha clan. Although a little surprise, Fugaku quickly suppressed the expression on his face. Glancing at Sasuke, he saw Mikoto holding Sasuke in her arms, thinking Mikoto had told Sasuke everything. Attention everyone, this is an exam for the Ichiha clan, so don't mess around. I will lead you through the exam well. Ichiha Fugaku's voice had just fallen, and suddenly, a figure with a mask appeared in the exam space. Ichiha Bido Ichiha Izumi, Sasuke, and some Ichiha clansmen who knew part of the truth from Fugaku, opened their Manjaku Sharingan. They instantly burst open when they saw someone coming. It's Ichiha Bido. Damn it, don't stop me. I'll kill him. Seeing that Ichiha Bido had also entered the exam space, a group of people from the Ichiha clan immediately scolded Ichiha Bido. Ichiha Bido. You are a disloyal and ungrateful person. Killing your teacher wasn't enough. You even tried to destroy your clan. TSK, since I knew it was you that night, I fucking checked your family tree from the Ichiha family. How could Patriarch Yajin have a son like you? What? He turned out to be the son of Patriarch Yajin. No wonder, no wonder he could also use the space-time jutsu. Haha, <laughs> Ichiha Bido, you think you did everything for that ring? TSK. You. Abido. Are disgusting. The particularly agitated shinobi rushed right out of the crowd and pointed at Abido's nose, cursing. For the sake of a woman outside of our clan, you destroyed our Ichiha clan. How dare you? Are you afraid that when you die, your grandmother won't forgive you? For the sake of a woman. To put it nicely, call it infatuation, to put it badly, you are making excuses for the darkness inside you. Let's see if Nahara Rin will forgive you when you die. The people of the Ichiha clan cursed more and more. There was a vague sense of closing in on him, cursing from all sides. Shut up. Bunch of losers. Ichiha Bido's voice exploded, drowning out everyone else's voice. Just now, the guy named Toby approached him. Before the two could say anything, he came here on his own. Ichiha Bido was still baffled, and these guys inexplicably scolded him. It wasn't enough for them to scold him. They also used Rin, his grandmother, and even his father. This made the killing intent on Abido sore. He recognized these people as Ichiha's clansmen. Although he didn't know what was going on, they dared to insult Rin. Whether they were people or ghosts, he would kill them all. Just as he was about to pierce everyone to death with the wood release, a figure, or rather, a pile of broken pieces of dirt, appeared in the middle of the exam. Then, the soil surged, and under everyone's horrified eyes, Ichiha Madara's figure was formed. Ichiha Madara and many shinobi of the allied shinobi forces were instantly surprised to see Ichiha Madara. They didn't expect that Ichiha Madara, who just came out of the exam space not long ago, was once again summoned. Originally, there were four questions about Ichiha Madara out of the five questions in the last exam, which already made people in the shinobi world feel that it was strange. Now seeing Ichiha Madara appear again in the exam space, almost everyone felt that the exam space took special care of Ichiha Madara. Could it be that the stronger someone is, the more the exam space would take notice? A Chunin from Sunagakur asked a Chunin from Kanahagakur beside him curiously, but he didn't get a reply for a long while, which made him a little upset. He looked at his companion from Kanahagakur with cold eyes, but he was surprised to find that he had fallen to his knees on the ground, with a face full of disbelief. His eyes, dead and listless, stared at the figure on the screen. The Suna Chunin followed his gaze, but found that Ichiha Madara wasn't the one that frightened them. It was the man behind Madara. This. This is impossible. Behind him, the shock of the Kanoha Shinobi surprised the Suna Shinobi. He felt that all this wasn't as simple as he thought. He looked at the angry man on screen, and a question instantly appeared in his mind. Who the hell is that man? Fugaku, Ichiha Fugaku. Tsunade was shocked to see Fugaku on screen. Jiraiya was also shocked. Along with it, the five cages were all shocked. Fugaku was the patriarch of the Ichiha clan, and naturally, his portrait and profile information were in every village. Even more, some people had personally fought him. Therefore, these people all knew that the Ichiha clan was destroyed by Ichiha Itachi three years ago. But now Ichiha Fugaku appeared in the exam space. Jiraiya. What the hell is going on here? 
Senju Tsunade's teeth were clenched in a death grip. She felt she had been lied to. Deceived by Kanoha. Fooled by those two Kanoha advisors. Hearing the anger in Tsunade's words, Jiraiya was stunned. He had been away from the village for so many years, and he didn't know what had happened in Kanoha. At the moment, he was asked by Tsunade, how would he know? Jiraiya thought about it. If the third Hokage knew about it, then there was definitely one person in Kanahagakur who knew about it. I think Danzo would have known some of the hidden secrets. Shimar Danzo. Hearing his name, Senju Tsunade's expression suddenly turned cold. When the genocide of the Chiha clan happened, judging from the notes in Hokage's office, it set all Danzo's set up. Combined with the numerous Shuringen on Danzo's arm, Senju Tsunade was 80% sure that the other party knew that some Chiha clan members were still alive. Even Tsunade felt that it was highly likely that Danzo transplanted Shuringen first back then and then was found out by the Chiha clan, condemning Kanoha in the process. And in order to stabilize the civilians of Kanoha and the condition of the shinobi world, Kanoha claimed that the Chiha clan was massacred to the public. She wondered back then, how could the Chiha clan, which was as powerful as the Senju clan in those days, really be exterminated by a single person? Hokage-sama, news came from the troops in front. A shinobi named Kabuto is looking for you. Kabuto. What does he want? He said he had a present for you. Bang. 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 In Kanahagakur, root. The angry Shimura Danzo had smashed everything he could get his hands on. Ichiha. The Ichiha clansmen are still alive. He looked at the people on screen, and his one eye sharply narrowed. Over 500 people. This this. Three years. Three years. Are those Ichiha people rabbits? How could they give birth to hundreds of people from a few dozen people? So, the plan to exterminate the clan back then Danzo glared at the screen. Back then, he felt that something was wrong when only three intact bodies were found throughout the entire Chiha clan land. However, because of various indications, the Chihas were really exterminated, and he didn't take these anomalies to heart. But now, seeing the resurrection of the Chiha clan, Danzo immediately noticed all kinds of anomalies. Damn it. Damn it. Danzo cursed fiercely. Since a Chiha Fugaku appeared on screen, the person who was burned to ashes wasn't a Chiha Fugaku at all. And, the most frightening thing were the two crimson giants exhibited by the Ichiha clan on the night of their extermination. Thinking of the terrifying two crimson giants, Danzo's eyelids twitched uncontrollably. Not to mention that the remaining Ichiha clan members would kill him, Danzo didn't believe that Ichiha Fugaku would let him go. At the thought that the other party must have found the Shuringen on his arm, Shimura Danzo's face abruptly turned even more unsightly. He felt a pang of fear, especially when he thought that, for so many years, Ichiha Fugaku had been watching him from the shadows of the shinobi world. Even at this moment, he felt that his route was no longer safe. He was on pins and needles. Check. Check it for me. I want to know how the Ichiha clan escaped from Kanahagaka right under our noses. If you can't find out, don't even think of coming back alive, Shimura Danzo's cold and harsh voice resounded at the root. All at once, dark, shadow-like figures shot out wildly. These were members of Anbu's route. As of fleeing, they rushed out in a hurry. It was as if they were a little bit late, they would be ripped apart by Danzo. I'm Kabuto. This was the first sentence Kabuto said after seeing the five cages. I heard you were looking for me. Why is that? Tsunade spoke indifferently. Glancing at the screen above, she saw that the exam hadn't started yet, and then turned her gaze to Kabuto. I have two gifts for you, Hokage-sama. Facing the five cages in Jureya, as well as the high-level officials from various villages, Kabuto wasn't anxious. He formed seals with both hands, bent down, and slapped the ground. Bang. Bang. Two sounds rang out in succession, and two black coffins instantly appeared behind Kabuto. On the coffin, the words one and two were written, respectively. Hmm. Seeing that Kabuto's gift turned out to be two coffins, all the shinobis who saw this scene were surprised. Is he looking to bury someone? Everyone looked at Kabuto curiously, anticipating what he would say next. Only Jureya and Senju Tsunade's faces have solidified. Is this the gift you talked about? The third Rekage keenly noticed the slight change in Tsunade's expression, quietly approached Kabuto, passed Kabuto, and stopped behind him. Anoki's mouth picked up slightly and also drifted towards the other side. Now, their five cages had a common enemy. One's glory was everyone's glory, and one's loss was everyone's loss. Seeing someone looking for trouble with Senju Tsunade, several people immediately surrounded Kabuto. It seems that you were frightened by Chihemadar. Looking at the five cages who surrounded him, Kabuto quietly smiled. Although people couldn't see any sarcasm on his face, the irony in his voice wasn't concealed. He knew how angry Senju Tsunade would be when the two hookages came out of the coffins. It was also because of this that he had to provoke other cages. 
Only in this way, when Senjutsu Nade was angry, other cages would, in turn, become his life-saving shields. After all, they wouldn't watch the first and second generation's Hokages resurrect without any other thoughts. Kid, this old man could be scared of Ichihamidar, but it doesn't mean I would be scared by you in two coffins. Inoki floated in midair, with a triple dose of arrogance in his voice. Oh? Is it? Kabuto seemed to disbelieve it, I think this gift will certainly shock all the cage samus. Boom. Boom. As Kabuto flew and formed a set of seals, a terrifying pressure instantly appeared on the two coffins. Then, before everyone could react, the lids in front of the two coffins seemed to be hit hard at the same time, and were directly blown away. White mist gradually rose, and two figures slowly walked out of them. Kid, my technique is not used this way. A familiar voice sounded, and Senjutsu Nade instantly paused, then flew into a rage. She clenched her fist, and her figure instantly disappeared. In the next moment, she appeared in front of Kabuto. How dare you? Senjutsu Nade shouted and threw a fierce punch, bringing up a gust of wind, and blasting it at Kabuto's head. This blow was Senjutsu Nade's strongest blow. If Kabuto was hit, not only would his head instantly explode, but his body would also shatter. Whoosh. Although for Madar, Senjutsu Nade's strength wasn't enough, for the current Kabuto, in both speed and strength, Sunade could completely crush the latter. Looking at Sunade's fist, Kabuto subconsciously took a step back, but it didn't help at all. Sunade advanced and instantly caught up with Kabuto, then threw a fierce punch. Whoosh. Just when Kabuto was about to be blown away by Senjutsu Nade's punch, a figure that Senjutsu Nade couldn't have imagined, suddenly appeared in front of Kabuto. She saw his arms were crossed and braced to meet Senjutsu Nade's fist. Senjutsu Nade saw the figure's face clearly and was about to remove the strength, but it was too late. Boom. The fist slammed towards Senju Hashirama's arms, and Senju Hashirama's arms were instantly smashed. Sunade's fist continued to advance, directly hitting Senju Hashirama's chest. Boom. After two loud noises, Senju Tsunade instantly looked under her fist. She saw a series of dust pieces gathering rapidly to form Senju Hashirama. The Jaisen Tsunade Chan, it seems that you have grown up. Senju Hashirama looked at Senju Tsunade with relief, then turned back to Senju Taburama, who had Kabuto shielded behind him, and spoke with some disgust. The impure world reincarnation isn't that great. I can't even withstand a punch from Sunate chan Hearing his brother mention the impure world reincarnation, Senju Taburama was expressionless. Coming back this time, I'll naturally optimize it. With that, Senju Taburama turned his gaze to the screen from the exam space above. In the picture, the cracked face of Ichihamidara was clearly visible. Senju Taburama's gaze slightly narrowed, and he suddenly spoke to Senju Hashirama and Kabuto. I think I have an idea. Ajayasin, what's going on? Why did you stop me? Senju Tsunade's brow was already wrinkled. She found that her grandfather, Senju Hashirama and her granduncle, Senju Taburama, were not controlled by the guy named Kabuto at all. But why did they both protect him? Tsunade chan don't worry. Senju Hashirama casually waved his hand, then looked at the other shinobi village cages, and greeted them warmly. I can see the five cages together again. Sure enough, my idea was correct. Hello, everyone I'm Senju Hashirama. Senju Taburama. Quietly looking at the cages of other shinobi villages, nobody could read what he was thinking from his brown impure world reincarnated eyes. Seeing Senju Hashirama and Senju Taburama stepping forward to introduce themselves, one after another, Kabuto slowly walked out from behind them. At the moment, his face was stained with some dirt and fine sweat, clearly scared by Senju Tsunade's sudden outburst just now. Kabuto really didn't expect this woman, Senju Tsunade, would just storm in straight away, she almost punched him to death before the other cages could even react. Fortunately, before he came, he talked to these two impure world reincarnators. If they hadn't protected him, he might be dead now. However, his first plan was successful. Looking at the cages of other shinobi villages, having inexplicable expressions on their faces, and looking at Senju Tsunade whose face looked like she wasn't sure if she should be happy or sad, Kabuto pushed his glasses up. Let's start over. I'm Kabuto, it should be that Kabuto. Kabuto's voice was full of subtle fluctuations. This was his fifth sentence after seeing the five cages. Welcome to the family exam. Examinee family. Ichiha clan. Exam content and rules. All Ichiha clansmen will participate in the exam together. The exam questions include multiple choice, fill in the blank, reading comprehension, short answer, and semi-propositional essays. Examination reward. If the score is below 60 in this exam, the examinee's Shuringen will be degraded by one level. Those who score 80 points or more, will receive the glory of Ichiha, title. Those who score 90 or above will receive the glory of Ichiha, halo. Glory of Ichiha, title. 
For every ten Ichiha clansmen gathered around the title carrier, the eye technique cost of the Shuringen will be reduced by 10%, up to a maximum of 50%. Glory of Ichiha, Halo. For every 30 Ichiha clansmen gathered around the Halo carrier, the eye technique cost of the Shuringen will be reduced by 40%, up to a maximum of 80%, and eye technique power will be increased by 10%, up to a maximum of 20%. In the exam space, they could see the content, rules of this exam, and the unimaginable rewards. The Ichiha clansmen, including Ichiha Madar, were all dumbfounded. This reward seeing the reward listed by the exam space, Ichiha Fugaku's eyes slightly narrowed. The more Ichiha clansmen gathered around, the stronger the effect at this moment, Ichiha Fugaku felt that this reward was completely tailored for him. After all, he was the current patriarch of the Ichiha clan. Who else could easily stack the full gain of this reward but him? Ichiha Madara Ichiha Bido. Haha. <laughs> the corner of Ichiha Fugaku's mouth was slightly raised. Although this was the first time he entered the exam space and participated in the exam, hadn't he seen the previous exams before he came here? He already felt secure. At the same time, above the exam space, Ryuji directly ripped the restraints from his body. Endless explosive tags exploded around him, only to be extinguished by a wave of his hand. He extinguished all the explosions. Even the sounds of the explosions didn't have time to ring out before they were swallowed up. After everything was done, Ryuji's icy face eased slightly, and he looked down at the Ichiha crowd. In the exam space, he was invincible. At this moment, not to mention those explosive tags, even if the Golden Wheel reincarnation explosion ruptured in front of him, he could hold it and play with it like a staff. System, is there any way to get stronger quickly? Ryuji squeezed his voice out and asked the system as if he was squeezing it out of his gritted teeth. Ryuji, at this moment, couldn't wait to find a crack in the exam space to burrow in. Shame. Such shame. He was a good traverser, but he was almost caught by the natives. It was a disgrace to all the world travelers. Especially when he thought that after this exam, he couldn't go back to Omegagur. And, most likely, he would face a headache when he would have to face all the Akatsuki Shinobi. I want to be stronger. I want to be stronger. I want to hang those people up and beat them. Ryuji's gritted teeth sounded again, and it took a while before the system replied to him. Hosts can host more exams, then extract exam rewards and make up exam fees. I know that. Is there no other way? For example, letting me have the same strength inside and outside the exam space. No. Looking at his own system, Ryuji's face changed several times in a row. Finally, he sighed deeply. It seems that the revenge would take a long-term plan. System, start the exam. Exam starting. Please write down the answer to each question on your respective answer sheets. As the sound of the exam space rang out, all the Ichiha clansmen in the exam space found that they couldn't move their gaze at all, as their eyes were fixed on the answer sheet that appeared in front of them. They couldn't even hear the voices of the people around them, as if they were the only ones in the whole space. Such a strange situation surprised everyone. But after all, they had watched the live broadcast more than once, and have long known all the divine wonders of the exam space. Seeing that they couldn't struggle, they simply intently looked at their answer sheets, and waited for the upcoming exam questions. Everyone in the shinobi world, watching the Ichiha clan on screen and waiting for the exam, was slightly stunned. The famous Ichiha clan, even Ichiha Madar, would sit quietly and take exams like school students, which increasingly felt eerie. Before they could get used to the weirdness, the questions for this exam had surfaced on everyone's answer sheets. To everyone's surprise, the questions on this exam no longer appeared one after the other, but all of them at once. 5 questions. All on the answer sheet. In this scene, both the people who were taking the exam and all the people who were watching the live broadcast were shocked. The exam space has changed again. They didn't think it was possible to take the exam like this. Surprise, everyone instantly looked at the exam questions. After all, that was what they were most interested in. This is topic. Ichiha Fugaku's eyes darted across his answer sheet. After taking a rough look at all the questions, his face instantly stiffened. How could how could there be such exam questions? Question 1. Multiple choice. What was the main reason why the Ichiha clan didn't go extinct? A. Given shelter by Kanoha's executives. B. D. Ichiha Itachi's rescue. After reading all the questions, Ichiha Fugaku found that only this first question was relatively straightforward. Reading the rest of the questions made his scalp feel as if it was stabbed with pins and needles. What made his scalp feel that way was the distribution of scores on these topics. Originally, he thought it would be an even total of 5 questions. But who would have thought that the first question would only have 5 points? This was an exam with uneven scores this this question is too difficult. Once again, his eyes swept over the other questions. 
As he read through all of them, Ichihafugaku's expression became increasingly ugly. Finally, it turned pale. He was shocked to discover that he didn't know the correct answer to any of the questions except for the first one, a five-point multiple-choice question. It's over. It's all over. After reading the rest of the questions, Ichihafugaku had already guessed how this exam would end. The joy of seeing the exam reward disappeared instantly. It was replaced by a deep sense of powerlessness. After the five questions were answered, not to mention the rewards that could be won only after gaining something above 80 points or 90 points. Most of the Ichiha clansmen wouldn't even be able to reach 60. In other words, half of the clan would face the punishment of having their Sharingan downgraded. This. This. This Samli exam, what kind of exam is this? This was clearly the death of the Ichiha clan. At the same time when the Ichiha family was stunned by the questions on the answer sheets, countless people looking at the exam board that made its debut in the shinobi world, were also dumbfounded. They never thought that the exam space would change so much. It directly changed a multiple people exam into individual exams. In other words. In this exam, the Ichiha clan wouldn't get only one score altogether, as the others once did. Instead, there were hundreds of different scores. Each person's score would be calculated based on the exam questions they answered on their own. That was to say, everyone had a possibility of getting rewards and punishments. At the thought of this, everyone looked expectantly at the crowd in the space that began to answer the questions. For those of them who were incapable and qualified to take the exam, watching others get various rewards from the exam space was simply not as refreshing as watching others get punished by the exam space. In fact, I think the punishment is still a little light. I think it should directly abolish their Sharingan. In a Megakur. Yuzumaki Nagato was slightly surprised to see that the exam space actually went with exam papers this time. After all, it was just an exam paper. For him, it was nothing surprising. However, the exam space didn't even add a time limit to this exam, which puzzled him a bit. He quickly looked at the questions on the exam paper. The multiple choice question was a giveaway question, but the fell in the blank questions had some difficulty. The reading comprehension was currently not visible, but many of the short answer questions probably couldn't be answered. Then, Yuzumaki Nagato's eyes reached the end of the exam paper. When he saw the proposition the essay was worth 50 points, his eyes suddenly burst with light. Exam space. I can't believe you gave this exam yes, why didn't I think of that? I should have taken the exam last time. Yuzumaki Nagato glanced at the exam space, and he found that this exam might take an extremely long time just in time for him to do something. His hands formed a seal, and the astral projection jutsu instantly opened. The next second, Yuzumaki Nagato's semi-illusory figure appeared in front of all the Akatsuki members who wore the Akatsuki rings. Akatsuki, write me an 800-word essay on peace in the shinobi world. Hmm. Now. The Akatsuki crowd looked at Yuzumaki Nagato's projection in confusion. At this time, shouldn't we be discussing ways to defeat Ichihamidar? While he's in the exam space, make arrangements, wait for him to come out, and directly seal him while he's weak. Have our own exam. What exam? Is this even a proper time for an exam? Everyone in Akatsuki cursed in their hearts. But before they could ask their questions, they heard Yuzumaki Nagato say. By the way, Naruto, Tadar, you two have to write 1000 words. In the shinobi world. Seeing the change in exam space, a group of people began comparing the advantages and disadvantages of the family exam, with the exam method before. All the questions are related to the Ichiha clan. Except for the last one, which has nothing to do with the Ichiha clan. This is the family exam. There's not much change in the difficulty in the rewards. Look, someone has started to answer the questions. With a shout, everyone's attention was instantly taken away. They followed the gaze of the man from the crowd, and immediately found the first person from the Ichiha clan to answer the questions. It was a child. They saw that his eyes darted across the first question and thought nothing of it. He directly answered C. Then, he quickly looked at the second question. Not only him, but as he moved his pen, so did the rest of the Ichiha clan. But without exception, all those who were the first to put pen to paper chose C. In other words, these Ichiha clansmen firmly believe that the Ichiha clan didn't go extinct because of Ichiha Fugaku. The first question is really simple. Everyone who watched the live broadcast and looked at the people in the exam space who had already written all chose C, suddenly felt a bit bored. They wanted to see the look of anguish on the examinees' faces, after these people chose the wrong answer, and were told by space that they were wrong. But now, with this simple five-question theme, it was simply out of the question. Not to mention, having seen all four options for this multiple-choice question, the Ichiha clan directly selected the correct answer. This looked like the kind of question that people didn't even have to take a second glance at. 
After all, they couldn't think of any other answer except for see Abito's compassion. They didn't even want to spit out that answer. If Abito hadn't been scolded so badly by the Ichiha people just now, maybe they would believe it. But now, if anyone chose B they would be an idiot. As for options A and D, people thought that, as long as they were an adult Ichiha no, as long as it was an Ichiha with a little intelligence, they simply wouldn't choose these two options. Given shelter by Kanoha's executives yes, Shimura Danzo, as an executive of Kanoha, should be happy to shelter this group of Ichiha clansmen. After all, he could transplant a lot of Shuringen into his bandaged arm. Or, his other arm and eye he would be happy to modify them if they went to him. As for the last option the whole world knew that Ichiha Itachi destroyed the Ichiha clan, so what else was there to say? Although, they didn't understand what was going on right now. There were so many survivors from the Ichiha clan. But to say that the existence of the Ichiha clan today was due to Ichiha Itachi rescuing them, everyone found it absurd. At the moment, countless people who were watching the live broadcast and thought that they had made the right choice, were having a heated discussion with the people they knew beside them. Although they couldn't answer the questions in the exam space, they had the thrill of participation when they selected the correct answer before it was announced. Look guys. Ichiha Sasuk chose C. Not only Ichiha Sasuk, but other Ichiha clansmen also chose C even Ichiha Madara has chosen C. It seems that the correct answer to this question has come out. This question is really too simple, not difficult at all. However, this question is only worth 5 points, but it's understandable. After all, the following questions are increasingly difficult. In the shinobi world, countless people watch the Ichiha clan choose the correct answer one after another, nodding their heads now and then. Sure enough, there was a reason why the Ichiha clan could become one of the major families of Kanoha. At least, most of the Ichiha clansmen were smart. Ugh. Did you guys notice that dozens of people chose option D? In the shinobi world, some sharp-eyed people saw that a small number of Ichiha people who answered the question, chose option D. This instantly surprised them. No way, no way. Someone could still answer incorrectly. Hahaha, ha, ha, this group of fools. Sure enough, even in the Ichiha clan, some fools exist. The crowd in the shinobi world was unrelentingly snarky. How could someone choose the wrong answer for such a simple question? Look, everyone, the patriarch of the Ichiha clan is about to make a choice. No need. As a patriarch, he's sure to choose the right one. Haha, ha, look at the wonderful expression on his face. I guess he didn't think he would be one of the answers, right? Oh. He wrote it down, and how a voice of disbelief rang out, causing everyone in the vicinity to freeze. With everyone looking above, shocked voices instantly rang out after they read Ichiha Fugaku's answer. D. He chose D. That's impossible. Why would Ichiha Fugaku choose D? Is he too nervous because it's his first exam, so he filled out the wrong answer? But he's not the only one who picked D. What's going on here? He is the head of the Ichiha clan. There's no way he wouldn't know the correct answer. Seeing Ichiha Fugaku's choice, cries of surprise resounded through the entire shinobi world. They couldn't imagine why Ichiha Fugaku would make such a choice. This is a question that Ichiha Fugaku would never get wrong. Is Ichiha Itachi the correct answer to this question? I don't believe it. I will never believe that he would be the correct answer, even if it kills me. Yes, the answer hasn't come out yet. I still believe in my choice. Just when some people were ready to stick to their guns, a startled voice rang out. It immediately caused countless people's expressions to change. Wait. What about Ichiha Itachi? Why didn't he appear in the exam space? Until now, the people who watched the live broadcast in the shinobi world, began to discover the anomalies in the exam space. Yeah, I didn't see Ichiha Itachi in the last survival exam either. At that time, there was a person missing. Was he the one missing? A group of people immediately recalled the bits and pieces about Ichiha Itachi from the exams. Do any of you remember that Ichiha Itachi won an exclusive reward from the first exam? A dazed and shocked voice sounded, causing all those who heard it to stagger. It seems that we all made the wrong guess. The resurrection of the Ichiha clan is Ichiha Itachi's handiwork. On the way back to Kanoha, Jiraiya followed Senjutsunade with a solemn face. The reward from the first exam. Senjutsunade's eyebrows were clustered at the moment. She really couldn't imagine what kind of reward could modify the past. Not even a single person in the shinobi world had any relevant memories about this. This was too abnormal. I don't know. Jiraiya shook his head. Because it was an exclusive reward, no one knew what all three people got. All they knew was that Conan's reward was a green medicine bottle that could restore Yuzumaki Nagato's health. Now, if they thought about it correctly, Ichiha Itachi's prize had surfaced. However, such a problem also appeared in Jiraiya's mind. At that time, what was Nagato's reward? The transformation of Eternal Manjakyo into Rinnegan requires a fusion of Indra's chakra and Asura's chakra. 
The Chihamadari expressionlessly answered the second question and then looked at the third question. He's afraid of the next me. Tabarama, did you really say that? Among the allied forces, Senju Hashirama froze and looked at Senju Tabarama beside him. He didn't expect that Senju Tabarama would say such words to Saratobi Hirzen. Beside them, Senju Tsunade and Jureya's faces darkened without saying a word. They were disciples of the third Hokage, and they had actually experienced that period. This was a quote from the second Hokage, Senju Tabarama, although it was nothing on its own. However, if they combined the treatment suffered by the Ichiha clan after Saratobi Hirzen came to power, it would be very interesting. Hearing Senju Hashirama's inquiry, Senju Tabarama didn't say anything. Looking at Ichiha Madara above, no one knew what he was thinking. Sure enough, the third Hokage targeted the Ichiha clan under the behest of the second. Seeing the third question in the exam space, Ichiha Fugaku's face suddenly darkened. During the era of the second Hokage, he wasn't the patriarch of the Ichiha clan yet. But at the time, the Ichiha clan had become the police force of Kanoha. Now perhaps making the Ichiha clan the police force must have been Senju Tabarama's setup as well. What he wanted was for the Ichiha clan to become a cursed presence in Kanahagakur. Senju Tabarama Ichiha Fugaku looked at the third question and coldly smiled. He knew that Senju Tabarama would be resurrected soon, and that was when his Ichiha clan could vent their anger. Question 4. Short answer, 20 points. What is the content of the Ichiha clan tablet? Looking at this question, Ichiha Sasuke hesitated for a moment. He hadn't seen the Ichiha clan tablet yet. After all, his current eyes are merely three Tomo Shuringen, not even the Manjakyo. So, he couldn't answer this question at all. But the teacher who taught them once told him that he couldn't leave any questions blank, even if he didn't know the answer. Learn to look elsewhere for answers. Ichiha Sasuke's eyes moved slightly as he looked at the questions on the first two lines. He thought about it and directly copied the second question, which he had no idea about. It noted the way to evolve the Eternal Manjakyo into the Rinnegan. A. Ichiha Sasuke actually answered it. In the Shinobi world, a group of people accidentally looked at Ichiha Sasuke. They didn't expect to see Sasuke rely on such a method to answer. It's not possible. What made them even more speechless, it's just that they wrote some more. Now, after the first question, people in the Shinobi world learned to connect the dots. They didn't even need to look at the other Ichiha clansmen's messy answers. They directly watched Ichiha Fugaku and Madara. As long as they matched, they would directly regard it as the correct answer. Is it the last question already? Ichiha Madara looked at the answer sheet in front of him, and before he knew it, he had reached the last question. Question 5. Composition, 50 points. Write an essay about your views on peace in the shinobi world, in the context of your personal experiences. Peace in the shinobi world. Ichiha Madara hesitated for a couple of seconds before starting to answer. Peace in the shinobi world is achievable. Back then, Senju Hashirama and I teamed up to open the shinobi village regime, and temporarily achieve peace in the shinobi world. Hashirama distributed the tailed beasts in order to maintain the fragile balance of the major shinobi villages. While it does put a few more constraints on the shinobi world, now, it seems that it wasn't peace at all. Ichiha Madara's voice was steady and deep, and every word he said corresponded to the words on his answer sheet. At the moment, in the exam space, it looked as if Ichiha Madara was making a confession. The so-called peace back then was simply Hashirama and me suppressing the ear. At that time, when Hashirama and I arrived, no one dared to wage war. It has been proven that this peace was fragile and false. So, I set out to pursue true peace in the shinobi world. Ichiha Madara's eyes fluctuated a few times. His expression had a few rare moments of confusion. But I failed, and the Eye of the Moon plan wouldn't work. Hashirama also failed. After he and I successively withdrew from the Shinobi World, the outbreak of Shinobi World War II and Shinobi World War III proved this failure. It was impossible to achieve real peace with the Shinobi Village regime. Even if peace can be achieved under the Shinobi Village system in the future, I am sure that there are people like me and Hashirama, who could suppress the whole Shinobi community. Such peace, as I said, is fragile. In fact, sometimes, I also thought, if he and I directly destroyed other countries and shinobi villages at that time, so that there was only one country and shinobi village in the whole shinobi world, would peace be realized in the true sense? I don't know. I don't know if there's really a way to achieve peace in the shinobi world, but I, Ichiha Madara, will find a way. A way to make the shinobi world truly peaceful. Comrades. This is a comrade. In a Megakur, looking at the answer to Ichiha Madara's last question, Yuzumaki Nagato's eyes were burning. Yuzumaki Nagato never dreamed that Ichiha Madara would be one of his own kind. Committed to fighting for peace in the shinobi world. Yuzumaki Nagato stared at Ichiha Madara, and his thoughts flashed rapidly. He believed that the other party wouldn't lie. After all, it was in the exam space. I could talk to him. 
Yuzumaki Nagato's gaze was certain. Originally, he was ready to seal the impure world reincarnated Madara, but now, he wasn't going to do that. Not only the people in Omegakur but also the shinobi world. Everyone was shocked to hear Ichiha Madara's resounding voice. Their jaws dropped as they looked up at the domineering Ichiha Madara above them. For a moment, I thought Ichiha Madara might be crazy. Or maybe, I'm the one crazy. The whole shinobi world is crazy. How how is that possible? Everything Ichiha Madara has done is to bring peace to the shinobi world. Are you kidding? The voice of disbelief rang out from the allied shinobi force, looking at Ichiha Madara in horror. They had just finished fighting with the former and had seen the terror of the former, and now they were suddenly told that what Ichiha Madara had done was actually for the peace of the shinobi world. It was too much for everyone to take in for a while. A lie. If Ichiha Madara is doing it for the peace of the shinobi world, what about Yuzumaki Nagato? I don't think it's what Yuzumaki Nagato said was hard enough for us to accept that it was for the sake of peace in the shinobi world. If the same is true of Ichiha Madara, we can also say that everything Ichiha Bido has done was to achieve peace in the shinobi world. Just as everyone was shocked by Ichiha Madara, the next moment, the response from the exam space shocked everyone. As if their whole body blood froze, waiting for the exam space to continue. End of the exam. Question 1. 0 points. Question 2. 10 points. Question 3. 15 points. Question 4. 20 points. Question 5. 46 points. Ichiha Midar. 91 points. Reward. Glory of Ichiha, Halo. How how is that possible? Only the first question was wrong, and the last question was only deducted by 4 points. Does this mean that what he said was true? Hiss. Everyone subconsciously sucked in a breath of cold air. Ichiha Midar's figure directly turned into a ray of light and disappeared from the exam space. Whoosh. Ichiha Madara appeared in a Megakur. Unlike his tattered state when he disappeared, at this moment, Madara's impure world reincarnated body was intact. The moment the figure landed on the ground, Ichiha Madara noticed Yuzumaki Nagato's presence on the opposite side. At the moment, Yuzumaki Nagato was standing at the forefront, behind him, a group of people in red cloud robes. Ichiha Madara took a glance at the people who had surrounded him, including the paper release woman with strange means. Just when Ichiha Madara was about to attack, Yuzumaki Nagato suddenly broke away from the crowd and walked towards him. This made Ichiha Madara stare for a moment, and then look at him without moving. Yuzumaki Nagato walked up to Ichiha Madara and sat down on his butt, regardless of the dust on the ground. Then he looked up at Ichiha Madara, I'm sure Ichiha Madara wouldn't attack someone who doesn't want to fight, would he? Humph. Ichiha Madara coldly looked at Yuzumaki Nagato, not understanding what kind of trick his opponent was trying to play. However, Ichiha Madara didn't do it. He was ready to see what Yuzumaki Nagato was up to. Knowing that there was a time limit to his technique, it was surprising that Nagato didn't take the opportunity to seal himself away. Is he trying to persuade me? At this thought, Ichiha Madara suddenly looked at Yuzumaki Nagato menacingly. If that's the case, I'll just kill him. I saw what you just said about pursuing actual peace in the shinobi world, so I have no desire to get into another fight with you. Eh? Hey, you could see that. Ichiha Madara froze and was about to say something about what he wrote when he suddenly saw Yuzumaki Nagato pointing towards the top of his head. Looking up, he suddenly found that there was a huge screen above his head. Just now, all his attention was on Yuzumaki Nagato, so he didn't notice the screen. At this moment, in the middle of the screen, the image of the Ichiha clan exam was being broadcast. This is taking place right now. All exams in the exam space are broadcast live throughout the shinobi world. Both this time and the last time you and the five cages took the exam, the whole shinobi world could see it. Yuzumaki Nagato smiled and told Ichiha Madara the truth. Looking at Ichiha Madara, who instantly calmed down, Nagato couldn't help but give him a thumbs up in his heart. He truly is a legendary shinobi. His ability to accept things was great. Kid, what the hell are you going to say? Ichiha Madara's face moved closer to Yuzumaki Nagato, and his aura was in full force, as if he wanted to crush Yuzumaki Nagato. I would like to invite you to join Akatsuki. Together we will achieve peace in the shinobi world. Nagato cut to the chase. Then Nagato suddenly took out a pure black ring. On the onyx in the center of the ring, the word Madara was written. He improvised the ring on the spot, which was made of the same material as the rings for the members of Akatsuki. Oh. Nagato's words caused Ichiha Madara to stare at first, then instantly angry. He felt he was being mocked. A small organization dared to invite him do you want to dance to? Only, before Madara could say anything, Yuzumaki Nagato's words stunned him again. The anger on his face subsided like a tidal wave. I was in the exam space before and obtained the method to bring true peace to the shinobi world. Yuzumaki Nagato's voice was decisive. 
His pair of Rinnegans stared straight at Ichihamidara, as if to see through him. He knew that, with Ichihamidara's personality, any mind games would backfire. So, he directly told Madara that he got his method from the exam space. He believed that Ichihamidara, who had gone through two exams, would be interested in this. Hmm. When he heard Yuzumaki Nagato's words, the Manjekyo in Ichihamidara's eyes directly turned into Rinnegan. His eyes slightly narrowed as he looked at Yuzumaki Nagato threateningly. He felt that he had underestimated this guy for a second time. No wonder he had the courage to come out alone to face him. Continuing to stare at Yuzumaki Nagato, Ichihamidara's mouth suddenly twitched at the corners, as he saw his opponent stare back without budging an inch. As the strongest man in the shinobi world, he naturally had his own way of recognizing people. He knew that the other party wasn't lying to him. But was he, Ichihamidara, someone easily tricked? Want me to join? Exchange it for those eyes. The corner of Ichihamidara's mouth was slightly raised and was about to ridicule when he suddenly found Yuzumaki Nagato kneeling in front of him. If we can create a straighter path to peace in the shinobi world, what if I merely lose a pair of Rinnegan? Yuzumaki Nagato's rhetorical question made Ichihamidara flinch. In particular, the smile on Yuzumaki Nagato's face gave Ichihamidara a familiar feeling. It was Izunu when he gave him his manjekyo. That familiar smile, as if it had the weight of 10,000 gold, with its owner's trust, struck Ichihamidara so hard that it violently shook his heart and soul. Looking at Yuzumaki Nagato, Ichihamidara's right hand extended its two fingers and pointed directly at his eyes. Whoosh. Ichihamidara's hand was so fast that it even emitted a gust of wind. Looking at Ichihamidara's attack, Yuzumaki Nagato suppressed his impulse to dodge and waited without blinking. He was betting on it. Betting on Ichihamidara. As he said with Ichihamidara's combat strength and influence on the shinobi world, if he could really join Akatsuki, what's a pair of Rinnegan? For the sake of peace in the shinobi world, he was always ready to sacrifice his life. It was just a pair of eyes. Yuzumaki Nagato didn't feel that it mattered much. After all, didn't Ichihafugaku tell him that he still had a pair of manjaku for him? Whoosh. The strong wind caused by the two fingers, made Yuzumaki Nagato's eyes sting, and tears involuntarily came out. However, the pair of fingers finally stopped in front of Yuzumaki Nagato's eyes. Seeing this scene, the smile on Yuzumaki Nagato's lips picked up higher and higher. Leader. Nagato. Everything was explained slowly, but it all happened in an instant. When Ichiha Madara's attack stopped, the Akatsuki crowd instantly reacted with shouts of surprise. Reaching out to stop the onrushing crowd, Yuzumaki Nagato looked at the expressionless Ichiha Madara and smiled triumphantly. He knew that no one could stop the charm of the exam space. I want to see the specific content. Ichiha Madara looked at Yuzumaki Nagato and suddenly spoke. His eyes flashed. Although Yuzumaki Nagato was still immature, the other party could almost get his approval, both in terms of strength and temperament. He wanted to see the specific method that Yuzumaki Nagato mentioned. If it was true, as Yuzumaki Nagato said, in order to bring peace to the shinobi world, what was the need for a pair of Rinnegan? How could he, Ichiha Madara, be outdone by a mere child? I can't show you Yuzumaki Nagato shrugged his shoulders, saw Ichiha Madara's expression change, and quickly explained. That's a unique reward I got in the exam space, and there's no way to show it. What about using illusion technique? Illusion technique. Yuzumaki Nagato froze for a moment, then pointed to his eyes with a bitter smile. With these eyes, no illusion technique works on me. Patriarch Chihafugaku also tested it to no avail. Nagato's voice carried a bit of regret. If the illusion technique worked and could extract that part of his memory, then teaching Naruto and the others wouldn't have been so hard. He just had to throw them into an illusion technique. Ichihafugaku's eternal manjakyo. Upon hearing Yuzumaki Nagato's words, Ichihamidara was stunned. Then, a disdainful expression suddenly appeared on his face. This spread actually compared my illusion technique with other people's insignificant tricks. Ichihamidara glanced at the slightly dazed Yuzumaki Nagato, and shook his head. Nagato was still too young. He couldn't grasp peace in the shinobi world. You should remember that not all eternal manjakyo users are Ichihamidara. As Ichihamidara's voice dropped, the pattern in his eyes suddenly rotated at high speed. Then, Nagato was shocked to find that the Ichihamidara in front of him had disappeared. Then what showed up was the familiar planet, the familiar streets, the familiar classroom. By the time Yuzumaki Nagato reacted, he was already sitting in his former position, and the old professor at the podium was still speaking with great enthusiasm. You guys are the worst class I've ever taught. I don't think the next class would be even worse. Listening to the old professor's familiar words, Yuzumaki Nagato was about to dive in, knowing how impressive this old professor was. If someone contradicted him at the moment, he would simply scold the entire class. Don't ask Nagato how he knew. 
He learned it the hard way. Humph. What qualifications do you have to comment on me? Around him, a familiar voice exploded, which caused Yuzumaki Nagato to jerk and look up in horror. He saw Ichihamadara was proudly standing, contemptuously looking at the professor in front of him. This scene made Yuzumaki Nagato flinch. Wasn't that what he said when he first came here? Suddenly, Nagato's eyes flashed. This is Ichihamadara's illusion technique. Directly replacing me. Then who am I? Wait, my desk mate Yuzumaki Nagato looks at the clothes on his body in horror girl, what are they doing? Haydn peeked at Ichihem Madara and Yuzumaki Nagato, who were both frozen at the same time, and was a bit puzzled. Because there was a distance between the Akatsuki crowd and the two men, they couldn't hear what the two had talked about. They only saw that the leader had taken out a ring and handed it to Madara. Madara was angry and wanted to pluck out the leader's eyes. Then the leader spoke, and Madara sneered. The leader froze, and Madara spoke. Then the two men just stood still as if they had lost their souls. A hearing Haydn's question, Dadara despondently sighed. What else would he do? Invite Ichiha Madara to join Akatsuki, and discuss peace in the shinobi world. Dadara's heart felt tired. Every day, he was forced to study nonsensical things. The leader even paid special attention to him. A few days ago, the leader even came to him with a map of the shinobi world, and asked if he could demolish a big mountain. Saying something about the great mountains of the land of earth blocking the water from the land of water, causing the land of wind to become so dry. Only by opening up the mountains and reclaiming the land, the entire shinobi world could be allowed to have good weather. What is all that? Dadara shook his head and threw out all these distressing thoughts. Glancing at the exam that had reached its end, Dadara bristled. Ichiha Tachi finally left Akatsuki. But now, not only did Ichiha Fugaku come, Ichiha Madara also came. Akatsuki will soon become the Ichiha clan's base camp. Dadara seriously suspected that the leader was trying to wipe out the Ichiha clan in one go. I wonder if the leader forces those Ichiha guys to learn these things, would they awaken their eyes? There was no definition of time in the illusion technique. Therefore, after just a moment in the outside world, Ichiha Madara had already walked Nagato's old footsteps in the illusion technique. At this moment, he was in the thick of his shock. Peace. That is peace. There was a national policy, and people had boundaries. True enlightenment. At this moment, Ichiha Madara finally realized it. True peace was simply not something that could be achieved by one village in one country, nor could it be achieved by changing everyone's mind with the infinite Tsukiyomi. Much less with the way that suppressed the world with fear. True peace should arouse the sense of honor and pride of everyone in the shinobi world, and make everyone work together for peace. Whoosh. Thinking everything through, Ichiha Madara took a deep breath and exhaled the cloudy pent-up thinking in his chest. At this moment, it felt like a new life. Madara-san. Yuzumaki Nagato tried to call out to the frozen Ichiha Madara. He didn't know what to call Ichiha Madara, but now that everyone was on a united front, it wasn't good to call him by his first name. Ichiha Madara was stunned by Yuzumaki Nagato's address, and then glanced at Yuzumaki Nagato, with his lips curled. Call me Madara-sensei. Eh? Yuzumaki Nagato shrugged his shoulders. He went out looking for a comrade, but he found a teacher instead. However, thinking about Ichiha Madara's age and his kindness to him, it didn't seem too bad to call him Sensei. Madara's Sensei. Yuzumaki Nagato didn't feel embarrassed at all, and then handed over the Akatsuki ring in his hand. Watching Ichiha Madara put it on his cracked fingers, Yuzumaki Nagato froze. Arachimaru said that a reincarnated person could be controlled by the wielder. Madara-sama, are you, alright? Hearing Yuzumaki Nagato's question, Ichiha Madara glanced at him. The eyes looked as if he was looking at an idiot. Nagato, kid, what are you going to do next? Ichiha Madara changed the subject. With me on board, there's no need to build up strength, right? Ichiha Madara got up and walked towards the Akatsuki crowd, and Yuzumaki Nagato immediately followed. Madara walked while his hands slowly made seals, and then his body shook as if nothing had happened. Yuzumaki Nagato didn't even notice that Ichiha Madara had broken the impure world reincarnation seal, or that he had gotten rid of the wielder's control. Only Rachimaru, at this moment, looked at Ichiha Madara, who was approaching step by step with a stunned expression. Just now did he just unseal the impure world reincarnation? No mistake. There's no mistaking it. Those were the seals to break the impure world reincarnation. Looking at Ichiha Madara, who didn't disappear after the unsealing, Rachimaru's eyes had unconsciously narrowed into a thin gap. This. This is Ichiha Madara. Even under the Jutsu, he could unilaterally cut off contact with the wielder. Rajamari knew that Ichiha Madara, at this moment, was on a whole another level eternal life. Terrifying. This is terrifying. At this moment, facing the oncoming Ichiha Madara, Arachimaru had a strange feeling of facing the abyss. There's nothing he can't do. 
Orochimaru's throat rolled with difficulty for a moment, and before he knew it, cold sweat had drenched the shirt on his back. From today on, all of you will voluntarily sign up for my ideological class. Arriving in front of the crowd and standing upright, Ichiha Madara suddenly pointed at Akatsuki's line of people and said so. His words stunned everyone. Just as they were about to speak, they heard Ichiha Madara's irrefutable voice ring out again. I, for one, respect your choice, and everything is voluntary. It doesn't matter if you don't want to come. I won't kill you, I'll just fight you. When they heard Ichiha Madara's words, everyone subconsciously gulped. Both Orochimaru and Conan turned their eyes to Yuzumaki Nagato. The sorrow in their eyes was too much for Nagato to handle. He coughed gently and tried to say, that Madara-sensei, with so many people, could you teach them all? Why don't you teach Dadara and Naruto first? It doesn't matter. I have my illusion technique. Looking at Yuzumaki Nagato, Ichiha Madara's eyes narrowed. Why, you have a problem with that? Yuzumaki Nagato's desire to survive instantly skyrocketed as Ichiha Madara's threatening voice reached his ears. That no no, that's Patriarch Fugaku's place I was just worried at. Before Nagato could finish his words, he was directly interrupted by Ichiha Madara. He can't even handle a hokage, and now he's not the patriarch of the Ichiha clan anymore. When he comes back, I'll talk to him. The Ichiha clansmen will be useful for the future, I'll take over. As for Ichiha Fugaku he should take a hike. On the moon. Moon Earth portal. Boom. Boom. The yellow energy balls kept exploding in the water as if they were blasting fish and blasting some white zetsus to the shore. Before those white zetsus could get up from the ground, the puppets swarmed on them and broke them into pieces. This wasn't a battle, but a massacre. The white zetsus were killed by these odd Satsuki puppets without any chance to fight back. Fortunately, these white zetsus had no independent consciousness, and despite the heavy losses, they were still rushing towards the exit of the Moon Earth portal. These guys are in the way. In the Atsutsuki branch clan area on the moon, Atsutsuki Tenari's eyes were closed tightly as he watched the steady stream of white zetsus in a curious way. He knew that these white creatures were creating opportunities for black zetsu, but in his opinion, they were completely out of their league. As long as all these things were killed, black zetsu would naturally lose all chance of releasing Atsutsuki Kagaya. Atsutsuki Tenari's facial expression fluctuated for a moment. He was ready to cut off all of black zetsu's opportunities. His hands quickly formed seals, and a huge eye-shaped weapon appeared in front of him. This was the secret treasure of the Atsutsuki branch clan on the moon, Tensigen Energy Vessel. Placing his hand on the Tensigen, the powerful chakra from Atsutsuki Tenari was channeled straight into it. Hum with a buzz, a blue light appeared from the Tensigen Energy Vessel. At the same time, under cover of the white Zetsus, Black Zetsu arrived under the thick rock wall that was part of the moon. This was part of the Moon Earth Portal, which was also part of the moon. Since the seal breaking card had to be affixed to the seal, it was certainly possible to place it here. Black Setsu stroked the thick rock wall. The excited look on his face couldn't be hidden. His heart was excited, his hands trembled. It's going to work. He was about to succeed. Thousands of years of planning. Thousands of years of waiting. Just for today. Just for this moment. Mother, I'm here to save you. Black Setsu's gaze was certain. He took a deep breath and viciously slapped the seal-breaking card in his hand towards the moon's rock wall. Bang. At the moment when the seal-breaking card came into contact with the rock wall, it seemed to melt, turning into black juice flowing down from the rock wall. Immediately afterward, under Black Zetsu's expectant gaze, the black liquid instantly surged and formed a pitch-black portal. Without waiting for Black Zetsu to react, in the next moment, a beautiful figure had slowly stepped out of it. Mother. Seeing Atsutsuki Kagai actually appear, Black Setsu was instantly overjoyed. It worked. It really worked. The excited Black- She didn't think that she could just walk out. It was as simple as that. She thought that something more amazing would happen, and the moon would collapse, the result didn't alarm anyone at all, she just simply came out. Seal breaking card this 6M space, why was it so powerful? It was able to break the seal of my two ungrateful sons. What exactly is it? Could it be something from the Atsutsuki clan? Seeing that the seal-breaking card Black Zetsu obtained from the exam space was so powerful, Atsutsuki Kagaya was suddenly suspicious. Although she was in the seal, she could watch the whole shinobi world. Therefore, not only did she watch the live broadcast from the exam space, but she even knew that in this life, Yuzumaki Naruto and Ichiha Sasuke were both her own children. Mother, Himura's descendants are up there. Let's go and kill them. Black Zetsu laughed. Now that his mother had been resurrected, the shinobi world was about to receive his mother's wrath. Be afraid. Tremble. Pay the price for your stupidity. At this moment, Black Zetsu was exceptionally excited. 
As the progenitor of chakra in the shinobi world, his mother ate the chakra fruit. Now that Hagoromo and Humera were not around, his mother was an invincible existence. Kill. Kill. Laksatsu shouted excitedly in Atsutsuki Kagaya's sleeve. Mom, we're going to kill both of their descendants. And then make everyone else into white zetsus. It won't work. Kagaya directly interrupted Black Zetsu as she slowly shook her head. The long hair behind her swayed with her head, just like waves. Accompanied by the horns that swayed together with her head, at this moment, she was unusually cute. What's the matter, mother? Black Zetsu's puzzled voice sounded. He couldn't understand why his mother refused his suggestion. Shouldn't those guys be killed? As Black Zetsu was confused, Atsutsuki Kagaya's voice rang out, causing him to freeze. I have been sealed for too long, and there's not much chakra left in my body. Kagaya shook her head in disappointment once again. She didn't tell Black Setsu that the chakra in her body right now was just a billion points more than those few little creatures in the shinobi world put together. At this level, she couldn't beat those people in the shinobi world, let alone not Satsuki Tenari from the moon. We must first collect chakra in the shinobi world, before enough chakra could be gathered to create an army to resist the Atsutsuki clan. Hearing Atsutsuki Kagaya say that her strength was greatly reduced, and she needed to collect chakra, Black Setsu's heart was suddenly overwhelmed. Because of the existence of exam space, everyone in the shinobi world knew that he had come to resurrect his mother. In other words, everyone in the shinobi world knew about him and his mother. It was impossible to collect chakra from the shinobi world quietly. Black Zetsu suddenly discovered that although he had resurrected his mother, things didn't seem to be going in the direction he expected. This mother kind of sucks. With a faint sigh in Black Zetsu's heart, he still had to serve the mother he had released, with tears in his eyes. What to do about this how am I supposed to collect the chakra of the shinobi world for mother? Ichihamadar. Thinking of Ichihamadar, Black Setsu's heart pounded. He could let Ichihamadar take all the white Setsus and wage war under Akatsuki's name. When the shinobi world is in chaos, mother and I can reap the benefits from the chaos. Black Setsu was confident that as long as Ichihamadar attracted the attention of most of the shinobi world, the remaining small portion would not be his opponent. This is feasible. Let's just do it. Black Setsu was going to control Madara directly through the impure world reincarnation technique. Ha. Huh. Black Setsu suddenly found that his connection with Ichiha Madara disappeared. It was only at this moment that Black Setsu realized that, somehow, he had lost his grip on Madara. Ichiha Madara's impure world reincarnation disappeared. Is, he sealed. Shouldn't be. Thus now, didn't he take an exam with the Ichiha clan that came out of nowhere? How did the impure world reincarnation's connection disappear? Inside Atsutsuki Kagaya's sleeve, Black Setsu frowned. He didn't know what happened to Ichiha Madara after fighting with the five cages, but since he couldn't perceive the others in pure world reincarnation, he must have been sealed up. Mother, let's go back to the shinobi world. Black Setsu's gloomy voice sounded. Before Atsutsuki Kagaya could ask, Black Setsu explained. The best way to collect chakra is the tailed beasts. Mother is already one with the god tree, once you absorb the nine tailed beasts, you'll be back to your prime. But before we collect the tailed beasts, we must make the shinobi world chaotic. Black Setsu chuckled viciously as his sinister voice continued to ring out. I don't know why, but one of my shinobi pawns disappeared. But fortunately, I have another one. I've sent someone to find him examinee detected as being ready. Host does not have the authority to conduct a second exam at the same time, and the exam is cancelled. In the exam space, looking at the pop-up box that popped up in front of him, Ryuji froze for a moment. How can there be an exam at this time? Cancelled. System, who is the candidate for the other exam? Kugaya. Kugaya is out. Looking at the reply from the exam space, Ryuji was shocked, and then quickly reacted. What a guy. Did Black Setsu really get Atsutsuki Kugaya out? Wasn't that guy afraid of that fishing pole guy? Oh come on. The thought of Atsutsuki Yurashiki's horrible fighting strength, and Atsutsuki Kugaya's stubbornness, Ryuji got a big headache. No need to think about it. In order to resist the Atsutsuki clan, the first thing that Kagaya would do when she came out, was to use the god tree to create a white Zetsu army. At this moment, Ryuji felt as if the entire shinobi world was targeting him and wanted him dead. Before the fourth shinobi world war, Amegakur was obviously safe, with only Jiraiya infiltrating it alone at most. So, he was ready to hide there until the fourth shinobi world war started, who would have thought the Konin would find out about him. He managed to escape from Conan, but before he could find a safe place to hide Atsutsuki Kagaya was released. Great, the entire shinobi world wouldn't be safe. Motherfucker. Ryuji felt that his mind was going to explode. The shinobi world was too dangerous, he wanted to go back to his normal earth. 
System, will that reward for hosting it Shahamadar and the 5 cages exam, get me out of the shinobi world. The world gate you obtain has not been charged. After it is charged, you can break through the world barriers. The host's physical body is weak and hasn't reached the level of a space traverser. To use the world gate, you need to use the world arc in conjunction with it. The world arc? You need me to build a ship. How do I build it? This world has been detected to have violated certain restrictions. To ensure the safety of the host, the world ship will be issued as a reward for the next exam. Restrictions. Ryuji was stunned, what was that? Forget it, whatever, anyway, the restrictions or whatever has nothing to do with me. The most important thing for him now was to find a place with enough energy to charge the world gate. Then wait for the start of the next exam. After winning the world arc, he would leave this dangerous shinobi world. He didn't believe that, with the system in place, he couldn't hide from these people whom he couldn't afford to mess with. End of the exam. Ichiha Sasuke. Score 82 points. Reward. Glory of Ichiha, title. Whoosh. In the exam space, with Sasuke's exam completed, he had returned to Omegakur. Ichiha Sasuke's figure appeared, and he instantly looked at the live screen overhead. His eyes skimmed over the remaining clan members, and Ichiha Sasuke's expression darkened. He didn't find his father, Ichiha Fugaku, or his mother, Mikoto. He didn't even see Izumi. This caused Sasuke's eyes to darken instantly. Although he had long known that they were summoned from the past by the exam space. But he really wanted to see them again. He really, really missed them. No one knew how envious he was when he saw Naruto with his mother. This was probably why he rejected Yuzumaki Naruto so much. Sasuke bowed his head in disappointment. Several times, he wanted to approach the leader, also to resurrect his mother and father, but he held back. He wasn't Yuzumaki Naruto, he didn't need love. He only needed to hate. Hate could help him grow up faster, grow to the point where he could kill that man. The thought of Ichiha Tachi, who made all this happen, made Sasuke incredibly angry. Especially when he saw that he had just won this reward, it was as if it was mocking him, he was even angrier. There were only two, no, three and a half Ichiha clansmen left. He was a lone wolf. Even if he had a harem and continuously sowed seeds, how could he get 20 people in a short time? Not to mention 40. I must kill you. When Sasuke gnashed his teeth, he didn't notice that behind him, a man and two women were standing there at the moment, looking at him quietly. He has already seen us. Go and see him. Ichiha Fugaku looked at Mikoto, who was crying silently, and sighed softly. He entered the exam space a bit late. When he entered, he just saw Mikoto hugging Sasuke and thought that Mikoto had told Sasuke everything. Since this was the case, naturally, there was nothing left to hide. Whoosh. The three of them appeared behind Sasuke with the body flicker technique. When they saw Sasuke frozen in front of them, tears poured down Mikoto's face even more. Sasuke, woo woo woo, my Sasuke. At this moment, seeing Sasuke close at hand, Mikoto finally couldn't resist. From behind, she directly hugged Sasuke in her arms. Bean-sized teardrops fell on Sasuke's face like rain, causing Sasuke's body to stiffen suddenly. Ambush. Is it that Yuzumaki Naruto? This was Sasuke's first reaction. Just as he was about to use body substitution jutsu plus illusion technique plus shuriken to teach Naruto a lesson, a familiar voice rang out, directly causing him to freeze in place. This voice not in the exam space mother. Yuzumaki Naruto, you have gone too far Ichiha Sasuke was instantly furious. He never expected Yuzumaki Naruto would dare to play such a joke on him. How dare you turn into my mother? Do you have a death wish? With a roar, Sasuke directly turned around and slashed at his opponent's neck with one hand. Bang. Sasuke's hand chop was held by a powerful hand. Sasuke struggled a few times, raised his head, and saw a serious face. Father. The moment he saw his opponent's face, Ichiha Sasuke's face was instantly filled with disbelief. At the moment, it was as if there was a cold hand running up his spine from his tailbone. This made all of the hair on his body stand on end. It felt like all the blood in his body flowed backward, and his body froze in place. No. This is impossible. Sasuke's body flickered, and in the next moment, it was out of Mikoto's embrace. Who are you? Why are you pretending to be them? Damn it. You all deserve to die. Sasuke growled frantically as he stared at the three people opposite him. He seemed like a scared and helpless beast at this moment. In fact, he was now incomparably frightened and angry. Oh suddenly, Ichiha Sasuke felt a surge in his stomach, as if something was going to come out of his stomach. As if it had intelligence, the thing burrowed from Sasuke's stomach to his esophagus and from his esophagus to his throat. Sasuke, what's wrong with you? Seeing Sasuke's uncomfortable appearance, Ichiha Mikoto instantly appeared in front of Sasuke. 
The two men Jekyo spun rapidly, her pupils directly flared up, and in the blink of an eye, a knot like red protective shield directly covered the four people. This was Ichihe Mikoto's Manjekyo ability. It's worth mentioning that just now, she and Izumi both scored over 60 points on the exam, which was a passing grade. Although they weren't rewarded, fortunately, their Manjekyo didn't degrade. Is that a raven? Ichihe Fugaku's gaze was fixed on his son, and he was surprised to see Sasuke spitting out a raven. But as the raven turned and landed on Sasuke's shoulder, Ichihe Fugaku's face suddenly changed. This raven had a Manjekyo Sharingan in its right eye. Wait, this pattern is this Shisei's eye. Ichiha Fugaku was startled to see the pattern of the Manjekyo in the eyes of the raven, was exactly the same as the Manjekyo transplanted to Shimura Danso. He did not expect that Ichiha Shisei's eyes would appear in front of him in such a way. Is this the arrangement that Itachi left on Sasuke? It's just that the arrangement. What kind of illusion technique did Itachi lay out for Sasuke that he would need to use Shisei's eyes? Or did he just leave Shisei's eye to Sasuke in this way? Could it be that Itachi, from the very beginning, had already decided everything? Ichiha Fugaku's face grew somber as he thought about it. When he looked at Sasuke, who was caught in an illusion technique, within a few seconds, his face was as gloomy as deep water. Itachi really gave too much for the family. Just as Ichiha Fugaku was getting sadder and sadder, Ichiha Sasuke was in the middle of Ichiha Itachi's illusion technique. This was the illusion technique laid out by Ichiha Itachi using Shisui's eyes. In reality, when Sasuke saw Ichiha Fugaku or Shimura Danzo, this long-established technique would launch itself and explain everything in the past to Sasuke. Because it was Ichiha Fugaku who had just activated the Jutsu, the raven simply burst out of Sasuke and landed quietly on his shoulder. As Shimura Danzo triggered the Jutsu, the raven would release the sealed Amaterasu in its eyes, and directly burn Shimura Danzo. This was the means by which Ichiha Tachi was protecting Sasuke. At the moment, in Ichiha Sasuke's perception, the man he hated most and wanted to kill all the time was standing in front of him, calmly and comfortingly telling him everything. Sasuke, when you trigger this jutsu, it means that you should have met our father or have grown to the point of being strong enough. Now, it's also time to explain everything to you. The truth about the extermination of the clan no longer means anything to you. Listening to Ichiha Itachi calmly recounting how he went back in time and what he was going to do, Ichiha Sasuke instantly exploded. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Impossible, Ichiha Tachi, this is impossible. He could never have saved a clan. But now, both parents appeared in front of him again this, this, this. At this moment, the difference between reality and perception almost drove Sasuke crazy. Wait. Ichiha Sasuke suddenly thought of the first question in the family exam just now. So, the correct answer is Ichiha Tachi. Sasuke was once again shocked. He originally thought that the Ichiha who survived the genocide was talking about him alone. He thought that it was because of his father's influence in Kanoha that he had survived in Kanoha. Now fake. Fake. It's all a lie. Ichiha Sasuke shook his head frantically as the three Tomo Shuringen spun rapidly. He could feel his eyes swelling and being painful. But he no longer cared at all. He just wanted to know the truth now. The truth that Ichiha Itachi hid. He just wanted one person to tell him that this was all a lie. Father father, tell me please tell me that all of this, it's all a lie. Ichiha Sasuke asked for help, even begged, and looked at Ichiha Fugaku. He hoped that Ichiha Fugaku would tell him that this was all a lie. It's all Yuzumaki Naruto's prank. At this moment, Sasuke felt that his world had collapsed completely. The Ichiha clan is alive. They were all alive. Father, mother, and everyone is alive. Everyone knew it, but he didn't. That wasn't all. What was most unacceptable to him was Itachi's identity. It was unexpectedly reversed. He, himself, has been working hard to kill the man. He, himself, always wanted to kill him. 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 Sasuke's eyes turned quickly. He felt that he was guilty of wronging his brother. Ichiha Sasuke felt like his heart was dripping with blood. It was painful. But he knew that several times of such pain couldn't match the pain in Itachi's heart. It's all true. Ichiha Fugaku coldly looked at Ichiha Sasuke, who looked as if he had gone crazy. Although his heart ached for Sasuke, Sasuke was now at the critical moment when his eyes were about to be awakened. Not enough. Sasuke still needs a little push. A fierce look flashed in Ichiha Fugaku's eyes, and then he said. For the sake of the Ichiha clan, Itachi's life and death is still unknown now. Boom. Boom. Ichiha Fugaku's words sounded like a thunderbolt that blasted straight into Ichiha Sasuke's mind. As if opening up the sky and earth, the roar made Sasuke's frantically spinning Shuringen lurch. In the next moment, the scarlet six-pointed star appeared in his eyes. Manjekyo Shuringen. At this moment, when he learned that Itachi's life and death was unknown, Ichiha Sasuke's Manjekyo had awakened. 
Father, did you just say that brother isn't dead? The six-pointed star fluttered in his eyes. It Chihasasu clucked at his father. At the same time, countless questions flashed through his mind. If Ichihatachi isn't dead, why hasn't he appeared in the XM space twice in a row? If he was alive, why couldn't the XM space find Itachi? What the hell is going on here? Looking at Sasuke's expectant eyes, Ichihafugaku glanced at Makoto and Izumi, and saw that they both looked shocked. Ichihafugaku sighed. Originally, he didn't want to say it. He wanted Itachi to have a hero's death, just like the fourth Hokage from Konoha. What's more, Mikoto would give birth in a few months, and he didn't want Mikoto to experience a big emotional disturbance at this time. But now that the word was out, Fugaku couldn't hide it. On the night of genocide, Itachi, who should have gone back to the future, died in his own Amaterasu, but the Itachi, who was the one who was supposed to exterminate the clan, didn't die. He just got blown away by a Shinra Tensei from a scroll. I once asked Hirachimaru to summon Itachi with the impure world reincarnation technique, but it failed. Ichihafugaku said, then he stopped talking and looked at the three people who were stunned at the moment. Hearing Ichihafugaku's words, Mikoto and Izumi's eyes erupted with a burst of light. They believed that Itachi wouldn't easily die. He must be alive somewhere. At the same time, Ichiha Sasuke, who had been shocked and numb by the bombshell news coming one after another, kept repeating not dead in his head. Not dead. Not dead. Not dead. Itachi. His brother was still alive. Suddenly, Ichiha Sasuke's expression fiercely changed, as if remembering something, frantically rummaging through his own pockets. The hectic movement seemed to tear up all the pockets on his clothes. Soon, under the puzzled eyes of Fugaku, Ichiha Sasuke took out a blue card. Crack. Without thinking, Ichiha Sasuke directly crushed it. At the moment when the card crumpled, a translucent blue light curtain appeared in front of the four. This scene caused the other three to freeze, followed by instant joy. Reward from the exam space. They knew what Sasuke was going to do. Sure enough, as if to verify their idea, after the blue screen appeared, the mechanical and ethereal voice rang in the ears of the four. Ichiha Sasuke, you have used the problem resolution card, you have three chances to ask a question. Three chances. That's enough. Ichiha Sasuke stared at the screen and couldn't wait to ask, I want to ask, is Ichiha Itachi still alive? Yes. The one word answered directly shocked the four Ichihas. Alive. Itachi is still alive. He is still alive. He's really alive happy. Joy heartfelt joy instantly enveloped the four. This was a confirmation from the exam space, and they immensely believed it. Sasuke, Sasuke, ask where your brother is. Ichiha Mikoto's eyes were indisputably streaming with tears of joy at the moment. She gripped Fugaku's arm tightly with both hands, and her ten fingertips were already white from squeezing too hard. The same was true of the nearby Ichiha Izumi, holding her hands tightly together and looking at Ichiha Sasuke with expectant eyes. At the moment, they didn't look like they were powerful shinobi at all. One was a mother looking forward to her son's return and a little woman looking forward to her boyfriend's return. Beside the two, Ichiha Fugaku's gaze was also intensely fluctuating. At this moment, even his eternal manjakyo was revealing the fluctuations in his emotions. Great exam space, I want to ask, where is Ichiha Tachi now? beyond the shinobi world, a forbidden place. As the voice sounded, this time, on the blue screen, images began to appear. Video. The four people looked at the screen in confusion. They didn't expect that there would be video analysis. First of all, what caught the eyes of the four people was a blue water planet, beside which there was a small planet covered in potholes floating quietly. This is the shinobi world. Ichiha Fugaku slightly frowned and explained it to everyone. He didn't understand what this video from the exam space meant. Before Ichiha Fugaku could react, the picture suddenly pulled out in a certain direction, and the planet representing the shinobi world, instantly disappeared from the picture. Under the gaze of the four, the video moved quite fast. It was unknown for how far and how much distance had been crossed. Until a group of behemoths appeared on the screen, the speed of the video decreased. That. That's the moment he saw the huge creatures, Ichiha Fugaku felt like he fell straight into an ice cave, and unspeakable fear directly engulfed him. All the hair on his body stood on end, and his scalp felt numb. He didn't expect to see these things again. Father, do you know what they are? Hearing Fugaku's startled cry, Sasuke was stunned. He didn't understand. This image was clearly countless distances away from the shinobi world. How did his father know these creatures? What surprised Sasuke even more was that his father didn't seem to hear his cry. At the moment, his eyes were staring at the video, at those fish-like creatures. The video drew closer, and in the blink of an eye, those huge fish-like creatures appeared in the middle of the screen. It was only at this moment that Sasuke realized the magnitude of these monsters. Their bodies were boundless. 
Even with the screen from the exam space, they could only see a quarter of it, not the entirety. But in the starry sky, the size of the star and the moon beside them weren't even as big as the scales on their bodies. This this. Sasu looked at the dense scales on these monsters in horror, and his whole body was frozen in place. How could there be such a terrible monster? What the hell is this? The picture continued to draw closer as if facing the monster the screen passed by those beasts, which allowed the four people to see their scales directly. Suddenly, the four swallowed at the same time. On those scales, each of them had a bizarre pattern, as if a silent and powerful evil spirit was sealed in it. It was as if each scale had a soul trapped in them. The four looked at the screen in disbelief, and then a huge pair of eyes appeared on the screen. No, 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 no. This is impossible. At first sight of those eyes alone, Ichiha Sasu collapsed. He looked at the pupils with horror. Those were densely packed bodies. One by one, they are stuck on the pupil of the monster, as if they were paying for their sins. One by one, their eyes were opened as if they couldn't die. On their faces, horrified expressions were solidified, as if in life, they saw something unimaginably horrifying. Six paths. These people, are they all six path ranked? All dead. They looked at the Rinnegan in those people's eyes and the white robes they were wearing. At this moment, the eyes of the four people were full of disbelief. How is this possible? How can there be so many people at this age of six paths level? Besides, they are all dead when four people were about to feel numb, the screen approached a monster with a height of about 10,000 meters. Although it was 10,000 meters tall, it belonged to the weakest batch among all the monster groups. Its body, among the group of monsters, didn't even look like it was their cub. Seeing the pupil in the giant beast's eyes, the four instantly fell into silence. They looked at the scene in the picture in disbelief, already in despair. In the middle of the picture, the pupil of this giant beast had a figure set right in the middle of it. His eyes were wide open, and the manjaku pattern was slowly turning in his eyes. Itachi. And Aisen seeing the figure, Mikoto and Sasuke suddenly cried out. They never thought that Itachi would be there. For the moment, Fugaku, still not completely alleviated from shock, heard the two shout, subconsciously looked, and was once again surprised. This wasn't the first time he had seen this kind of beast. Last time, he also saw this terrible monster in Yuzumaki Nagato's future. Originally, he thought that it was just an interpretation of Yuzumaki Nagato's future, which had changed with the changes in the shinobi world. But he never thought that he would see them again. Moreover, his son Itachi, like those six paths people, was caught by it. Damn it. Watching Itachi's pupil power being slowly withdrawn, the veins on Ichiha Fugaku's face popped up. He didn't understand how Itachi could be there. They were so far away from the shinobi world. Even if he was hit by Shinra Tensei, even if he flew out of the shinobi world, it was impossible for him to fly so far away. Wait. Ichiha Fugaku suddenly narrowed his eyes. He looked at Ichiha Itachi's waist in horror, where a red string was tied string. Fugaku's eyes quickly followed the string, only to find that the other end of the string was tied to a red fishing rod. And the fishing rod was being held by a pale white arm. Not only an arm but half a shoulder. Below it, there was a single chipped right leg. Next to the right leg, a red fish basket. The moment he saw the things around Ichiha Itachi, an absurd thought appeared in Ichiha Fugaku's mind. Ichiha Itachi was caught by the owner of this fishing rod and basket from the shinobi world. It's just is it really possible? Ichiha Fugaku's gaze deepened as he looked at the red fishing line around Ichiha Itachi's waist. He clearly felt that his idea was absurd, but he had to believe it. And even, looking at the two limbs, Ichiha Fugaku suspected that the other party had escaped. Being able to escape from the hands of these monsters, coupled with the other strange means Ichiha Fugaku's heart sank. This level of strength, it should no longer be at the level of an ordinary six paths, right? And, most likely, at the level of the progenitor of chakra in the shinobi world, Atsutsuki Kagaya, right? Thinking of that, Ichiha Fugaku's expression jolted. Ichiha Tachi, who should have been in the shinobi world, appeared there. Where would the person who should have been there be? The shinobi world. Ichiha Fugaku's heart trembled. He felt as if he had discovered something monumental. However, if the other party appears in the shinobi world, it has been three years. Why didn't anything happen in the shinobi world? Wait, the shinobi world's pride list. Ichiha Fugaku instantly remembered the shinobi world's pride list that appeared when the exam space first appeared. Atsutsuki Yoshiki, the number one strongest in the shinobi world Ichiha Fugaku's face instantly changed. Thinking of the pale-colored clothes and light-colored skin on Atsutsuki Kagaya and Atsutsuki Tenari, Ichiha Fugaku looked at the pale severed limbs on screen in horror. Wait. Could it be that all those dead bodies belong to the Atsutsuki clan? But wait. Ichiha Fugaku now felt like his brain wasn't enough. He took a deep breath to smooth everything out again. 
He saw in Yuzumaki Nagato's future that these monsters would come to the shinobi world. Could it be that they were after Atsutsuki Urashiki? Hiss. The Chihafugaku sucked in a cold and chilling breath of air. If he had only been guessing before, he was now 80% sure that there was a person of the Atsutsuki clan in the shinobi world. They had to find him and kill him. Almost instantly, the Chihafugaku made up his mind. These monsters must be killed before they could find him and come to the shinobi world. Otherwise, when these monsters arrived in the shinobi world, the only thing waiting for them was total destruction. Exam space, my last question, how can I save Itachi? Seeing Itachi on screen, Ichiha Sasuke's eyes suddenly became even redder, and the impatient voice directly sounded. He believed that since the exam space could find Ichiha Itachi, it definitely knew a way to rescue him. Hearing Sasuke's words, Mikoto and Izumi immediately looked at the exam space interface expectantly. Only Ichiha Fugaku's expression turned ugly. For Itachi, he didn't even know what to think. Moreover, he felt that the exam space couldn't even pull Ichiha Itachi to the exam space, and certainly wouldn't possess the method to rescue Ichiha Itachi. However, to Ichiha Fugaku's surprise, after hearing Sasuke's inquiry, the exam space didn't stop at all, and the answer was directly given. Ichiha Izumi's Manjakyo Shuringen has the ability to communicate with the void after it evolves into an eternal Manjakyo. There is a weak part in the void, where Ichiha Izumi can open a wormhole. You can teleport Ichiha Itachi to the shinobi world regardless of distance by using Ichiha Itachi's items as a guide. Whoosh. As the ethereal voice fell, the blue screen in front of the four instantly disappeared. No. Izumi, you must not save Itachi this way. As soon as the screen disappeared, Ichiha Fugaku's serious voice directly rang out, causing Sasuke and Izumi, his faces appeared happy, to simultaneously change. Just when they were wondering, Fugaku's voice sounded again and answered their doubts. Itachi is trapped in the monster. If Itachi is teleported back, the monster Itachi is trapped in will be teleported to the shinobi world. As you can see, those at the 6th path level have died facing these monsters. If it comes to the shinobi world, no one in our shinobi world can stop it. Ichiha Fugaku looked at Ichiha Izumi's shocked expression and was slightly relieved. He didn't tell Izumi that these monsters were already moving towards the shinobi world. Glancing at Sasuke, his eyes were full of unwillingness, Fugaku thought for a moment and said nothing more. Ichiha Fugaku didn't want to be too harsh after being separated for so many years. He knew Sasuke wouldn't give up, but fortunately, Izumi was an obedient child. The main thing was that the current Izumi only had the Manjaku Shuringen, and she had no immediate family now. Therefore, in Ichiha Fugaku's view, Izumi simply couldn't awaken her eternal Manjakyo. This put his mind at ease. Izumi, take good care of Mikoto. Swish. After Ichiha Fugaku finished, he nodded to the two women, glanced at Ichiha Sasuke, who had his head down, and had no idea what he was thinking. His figure instantly disappeared. Neither the matter of this monster nor the high probability that the shinobi world was harboring another Atsutsuki clansman could be solved by him alone. He had to tell Nagato about these things immediately. Also, some of Akatsuki's plans would have to be brought forward. Just when Ichiha Fugaku found Yuzumaki Nagato, the side in front of him made him flabbergasted. He saw that Ichiha Madara made a huge platform with wood release. He stood in the forefront with the eternal Manjakyo's scarlet glow in his eyes. The Akatsuki's people were quietly arranged in a row, with dull expressions, apparently in an illusion technique. Especially, the twitching expressions on the faces of Dadar, Kakuzu and Arachimaru made Ichiha Fugaku extremely sure that everyone in Akatsuki was experiencing something terrible at the moment. What puzzled Ichiha Fugaku was that Yuzumaki Nagato, the leader of Akatsuki, was watching quietly. And Ichiha Madara was even more bizarre, not continuing with the killings, and merely maintaining the illusion technique. This what's going on here? Was I too late? And Ichiha Madara had defeated Akatsuki, and was threatening Yuzumaki Nagato with the lives of the Akatsuki members. Ichiha Fugaku suspiciously looked at the strange scene in the middle of the field, and quietly appeared behind Yuzumaki Nagato. He had just appeared, but before Yuzumaki Nagato saw him, Ichiha Madara had noticed him. Boy, your name is Ichiha Fugaku, right? Madara's arrogant and overbearing voice sounded. Go get all the brats of the Ichiha family, and let me see if the Ichiha clan has grown over the years. Hearing Ichiha Madara's voice, Ichiha Fugaku froze for a moment, a little confused as to what was going on. Who does Ichiha Madara think he is? Ichiha's patriarch. How dare you talk like that? Fugaku sneered and was about to retort with sarcasm when he heard Yuzumaki Nagato's voice eerily ring out, causing him to freeze. Um patriarch Fugaku, ahem, Madara-sensei, Madara-san, has joined Akatsuki, and at that, wait what? Ichiha Madara glanced at Yuzumaki Nagato, then looked directly at Ichiha Fugaku and said. 
From now on, you are no longer the patriarch of the Ichiha clan. From today on, there is only one Ichiha patriarch. That's me, Ichiha Madara. Fugaku-kun, do you have a problem with that? Madara's words stunned Fugaku, and he mechanically turned to look at Yuzumaki Nagato beside him. Suddenly, there was a kind of mourning feeling in his heart. Ichiha Fugaku looked unnaturally sad, Yuzumaki Nagato sighed, shrugged helplessly, and spread his hands. Patriarch Fugaku, oh no, Fugaku-san, you know right. We can't say otherwise. Just as a change of power was taking place in the Ichiha clan in Omegakur, the huge Tensigen on the moon was fully charged with Atsutsuki Teneri's chakra. Release. With a soft cry from Atsutsuki Teneri, an azure light shot out from the giant Tensigen. Whoosh. The speed of that light was very fast, and in an instant, it had crossed countless distances and blasted upon the exit of the moon earth portal. Boom. Just like a bomb exploding, the exit of the moon Earth portal was directly penetrated by light. Countless white sets of vaporized and disappeared the moment they were illuminated by the light. The scene was so shocking that Atsutsuki Kagai, who had just escaped from the seal, saw it and felt distressed. These white sets were all the troops she worked so hard to accumulate. She was still counting on these troops to defeat the Atsutsuki clan that would come to capture her in the future, and she couldn't have it all wiped out here. With the movement of her body, Atsusuki Kagaya floated up and reached the beam of light, her arm flicking up. A black door of space suddenly appeared in front of the light beam, and a huge Tensigen attack directly shot in. Closing the space and feeling the violent fluctuations coming from her space, Atsusuki Kagaya gazed in the direction of the moon. As she hadn't seen the video from the exam space when she was sealed, Atsusuki Kagaya felt she would have rushed up to absorb his chakra by now. But now she wasn't that stupid. Although she had been sealed for a long time, she felt that she was still smarter than these people. She needed to secretly grow up and develop quietly. It was best to quietly take that might guy, Ichiha Sasuke, Yuzumaki Naruto, and that one named Ichiha Madara under her command. She saw that might guy violently beat up Six Paths Madara. And the remaining two guys sealed her for a second time. At the thought of Six Paths Madara, Atsusuki Kagaya's nose wrinkled. That guy, although only at the six paths level, Kagaya had a feeling that even at her full strength, she wouldn't be able to defeat him. Therefore, in the seal, when Black Setsu came to save her, Kagaya made up her mind. Never, never, never reveal her existence. For this reason, she even told the white light at Black Setsu, saying that she had lost a great part of her strength. It was true that her strength had decreased, but the loss wasn't that great. But all the same, it reinforced her idea of taking these four people down in one go. After all, she couldn't beat Six Paths Madara by herself, and the other Atsusuki clansmen might not be able to beat Six Paths Madara, and even more so might Guy. As for the two reincarnated children's chakra, Kagaya felt that they should be left to seal the other Atsusuki clansmen. In this way, with the four of them in her own white Setsu army, she thought they certainly would be able to resist the Atsusuki clan. Even, making a few more satellites, for the shinobi world. At this point, Atsusuki Kagaya waved her long sleeves and suddenly opened another portal. Letting all the remaining white Setsu get in. Atsusuki Kagaya glanced at the moon and flew directly towards Earth. She decided that when she collected those four people in the shinobi world, she would bring them to look for trouble with Atsutsuki Teneri. At the same time, through the vision of the Atsutsuki puppets, seeing all the white Setsu disappear, Atsutsuki Teneri put away the huge Tensigen. Black Zetsu is destroyed, Atsusuki Kagaya won't appear again hesitating for a couple of seconds, Atsusuki Teneri got up directly and flew towards the portal on the moon. In that place, only his faint voice was left behind. It's time to get those eyes back. In Kanahagakur. Hokage's office. At this moment, all the cages in the shinobi world were gathered together. The three generations of Hokage occupied the main position. In the lower guest seat, on the left-hand side, was Terumi Mei, the fifth Mizukage, and Chiyo, the fifth Kazukiage. On the right, there was the fourth Reikage, A, and the third Suchikage. And in the middle of the seven, gathered around, was none other than Kabuto. Perhaps, because of the heavy atmosphere of the several people, or the frozen expression on their faces at the moment, the atmosphere in the Hokage's office was very depressing. Although the first and second Hokage of Kanoha have been resurrected, I still think we are Takatsuki's opponents. Anoki, sitting on his knees on the guest seat and looking at the three Hokages above him, suddenly spoke up, breaking the stagnant atmosphere in Hokage's office. Anoki's voice didn't fluctuate, and the expression on his face was even more joyless and devoid of sorrow, as if he was just stating a fact. Since Kanoha has already disturbed the peace of the deceased for the greater good, I don't think it's right for other shinobi villagers to be petty either. Third Tsuchikage-sama is right. Even if you two can stop Ichihamadara, we can't stop Akatsuki. 
Therefore, reviving the past cages of each village is the best way for us to defeat Akatsuki. The fourth Rikage looked at the three people above, and his eyes flashed with deep fear. Hearing Anoki's words, he immediately echoed them. Now the first Hokage and the second Hokage have been resurrected, and it posed the greatest threat to his Kumagakur. After all the Third Shinobi World War, Kano has suffered the greatest blow together with his village. Therefore, the fourth Rikage should try to protect his own village. At this moment, while the other three Shinobi villages were here, and with the pressure of Akatsuki and Ichihamadar, they had to ask Kano had to hand over this technique. Otherwise, there would be no place for other shinobi villages in the future. Thus the thought that Kanoha had the means to revive and even control the dead, made them shudder. With the existence of this technique, all the shinobi of the other party could be turned into undead soldiers. Even if Kanoha's methods were a little more vicious, to directly resurrect all the dead powerhouses of the past from the various shinobi villages together. Imagining the future of the shinobi world, who could be Kanoha's opponent? Even in the fourth shinobi world war, they won, defeated Akatsuki, and earned decades of peace. But what about the fifth shinobi world war? What about the sixth? They were all cages of various shinobi villages, and by no means did they not want to be as thorough as possible. This was also the reason why it was rare that the cages of the four shinobi villages had completely unified and faced Kano has three generations of Hokage together. Sure enough, a cage is a cage. Looking at the behavior of the four people below, Senju Tsunade, who was sitting in the main seat, had no expression on her face. Her opponent's reaction didn't surprise her. As early as when Kabuto summoned these two people beside her, she had already thought of it. I can give you the impure world reincarnation technique. Senju Tsunade's gaze slightly moved, looking down at the four people his expression at ease, and then said. I can even give Grand Uncle's improved version of impure world reincarnation technique. Improved. Anoki's old eyes flashed a brilliant light. He knew that the improved impure world reincarnation technique could fully pull out the deceased's full strength at the peak of their life. Like that at Shahamadar. Sunade-san, tell me your terms. The fourth Rekage looked at Sunade with a searing gaze. To say who among the four cages was the most eager to get the impure world reincarnation technique, it had to be the fourth Rekage. Although the first and second Rekage's bodies had long rotted and turned into ash, the third Rekage could still be summoned. The strongest spear and the strongest shield. Combined with other shinobis, the fourth Rekage felt that as long as he got the impure world reincarnation technique, he could arm wrestle Akatsuki with two shinobi villages alone, Kumagakur and Kanahagakur. You must unconditionally support the formation of a second allied shinobi force. Senjutsunade's determined eyes swept across everyone's faces, and her voice sounded again. Ichiha Madara has been resurrected by Akatsuki, and I suspect that the Ichiha clan is also under Akatsuki's control. As you saw, the Ichiha clan who finished the family exam, although a dozen Manjakyo were degraded, there are still a dozen people who have the Manjakyo Sharingan. Akatsuki's strength has grown stronger and stronger. We can't wait any longer. All the impure world reincarnated cages, even all the formerly powerful individuals, let's form an unparalleled alliance of the shinobi world, and crush Akatsuki in one fell swoop. This is my condition. Senjutsune directly looked at the four people above and below without flinching. She believed that these four people weren't as short-sighted as Rasa, and even if she didn't use the impure world reincarnation technique as bait, they would do it. At the moment, Senjutsune looked determined. At her sides were the two most prestigious Hokages of Kanoha. It's just that, at the moment, they were completely reduced to Senjutsune's assistance. My son Agagur, agrees. Chiyo took the lead in nodding her head, her eyes narrowed, and glanced deeply at Senjutsune. At this moment, Sunade once again showed her courage to her. As Shio opened her mouth, several other people saw that the goal had been achieved, and they also said. Kurigakur, agrees. Kumagakur, agrees. My Wagakur, also agrees. Sunade chan you really have grown up. Looking at the four cages leaving, Senju Hashirama patted Sunade gently on the shoulder. However, before the serious expression on his face lasted for two seconds, he suddenly collapsed. He, your imposing warrior just now really scared me, hahaha. <laughs> Senju Hashirama's mouth was wide open, with an exaggerated expression. Being summoned back from pure land and witnessing the current shinobi world was really interesting for Senju Hashirama. Especially at this moment, seeing that Tsunade had grown into a qualified cage, he felt this trip was really worth it. Tsunade, tell me about your plan. Senju Tabarama asked Tsunade, ignoring Senju Hashirama, who was acting weird. Unlike Senju Hashirama, he felt that Tsunade must have her own plans after giving the other villages the impure world reincarnation technique. 
As a hookage of Kanoha, how could one put themselves in a passive position? Taburama was sure that Tsunade's arrangement would definitely enable Kanoha to maintain its absolute advantage, even when the other shinobi villages resurrected their cages. Ah. Didn't Tsunade-chan do this to strengthen the allied forces? There were other arrangements. Senju Hashirama looked at Senju Taburama and Senju Tsunade with an exaggerated expression, and scratched his head in bemusement when he saw that both of them were ignoring him. He felt that Taburama was too deep. Isn't he tired of taking 10 steps at a time? Why don't you just not think so much like me? Just fight when you don't like it. It's the third and fourth hookage, right? Senju Taburama's voice then sounded, although it was clearly a question, his tone was extremely sure. Hmm. Tsunade calmly nodded. She wasn't surprised that her granduncle had seen through her thoughts. She knew that her grandfather saw through her setup too, he just didn't want to talk about it. After all, both of them survived the Warring States period and became hookage. How could they be simple? In fact, even if they weren't pressuring me, I would have given them the improved impure world reincarnation technique to enhance the strength of the allied forces. Senju Tsunade's voice sounded regretful, which stunned Senju Taburama, and then his expression turned dark. He felt he had misread the situation. He still thought that Tsunade was a qualified cage, but it turned out that she's the same as the other guy who used wood release too much, and turned his own head dance like a board. He was about to lecture Senju Tsunade in a cold voice, but fortunately, Tsunade stopped him with the following words. The corners of Tsunade's mouth suddenly lifted as she continued sarcastically, since they think that impure world reincarnation can restrain Kanoha, let them see the despair that follows hope. When it comes to the number of cages, my Kanoha will never lose. Senju Tsunade sat dominantly and turned her head to look down at Kabuto, who didn't say anything. The reason why she dared to hand over the impure world reincarnation technique to the other shinobi villages, had a lot to do with him. Kakashi has brought back the mask you mentioned, and a number of wandering shinobi clan shinobi have been captured. The Yamanaka clan leader, and the Nara clan leader, have also completed the arrangements as required on his scrolls. Tsune took a deep look at Kabuto, a hint of scorn flashed in her eyes. She couldn't understand how the other party came up with such a crazy plan. Cut open the belly of the Shinigami, release the souls of the third Hokage and fourth Hokage inside, and then complete the resurrection of the two through impure world reincarnation. This is crazy. Truly worthy of the madman who started the fourth Shinobi World War. Hearing Tsunade's words, Kabuto shrugged without saying anything. At this moment, seeing that the five cages were moving according to Orochimaru-sama's plan, Kabuto's admiration for Orochimaru had reached a new level. Too powerful. With just one move, all the shinobi of the five major shinobi villages were dancing in the palm of his hands. Kabuto believed that no one but him could anticipate that all the five shinobi villages were going to provide experimental data for Orochimaru's research. The improved impure world reincarnation, testing the effect of the armament hockey in combat against the impure world reincarnated subject, and verifying whether the shinigami could be deceived. In the blink of an eye, it was all coming to fruition. At that moment, Kabuto even felt that Orochimaru-sama had a deeper purpose. After all, he knew that, inside the Shinigami's stomach, there was more than the souls of the third and fourth Hokage. Orochimaru-sama's arm was also in there. This this was Orochimaru-sama's whole purpose, isn't it? Kabuto blinked and pushed Orochimaru's matter to the back of his mind. Now, his task was basically completed, and his next step was to find a way to retreat. Come with me. Seeing Tsunade leave with Hashirama and Taburama, Kabuto followed with an expressionless face. He knew what Senju Tsunade was going to do. As she said just now, all the preparations were completed. Thinking about Tsunade's preparation, Kabuto's mind moved. Sure enough, someone who could become cage wouldn't be simple. It's too detailed. This woman is, really, too meticulous. Kabuto had guessed what Senju Tsunade was going to do. Although Kanoha doesn't have Rachimaru-sama's living corpse reincarnation, they actually thought of using the secret technique of the Yamanaka clan, Nara clan, and the wandering shinobi clan. Kabuto knew a little bit of the secret technique of the Yamanaka clan, there was a bizarre technique called the mind-body disturbance technique. It would allow the wielder's soul to enter the recipient's body of the technique, and control the movement of the other person's body. For the sake of insurance, this new hookage had also called the patriarch of the Nara clan, to control the battlefield together with the pawn of the wandering shinobi clan. Although there were still some gaps between these arrangements and Orochimaru's living corpse reincarnation, they could achieve similar results. Sure enough, when Kabuto was brought to a secret room by Tsunade, several people in the room looked over in unison, and finally, their eyes fell on Kabuto. They were all senior officials of Kanoha, and they had already investigated Kabuto's identity. Unexpectedly, he turned out to be Kanoha's shinobi. And a genin. 
Hokage-sama, we have never done anything against Konoha. What are you arresting us for? In the middle of the chamber, the only shinobi whose mouth was in gag, saw Senju Tsunade in her group. His face lit up with joy, and he hastily asked. He didn't understand why the other party sent Jiraiya to attack them. Jiraiya. Why is he still talking? Seeing that the other person could still ask her something, Senju Tsunade's face instantly turned cold. She had already told Jiraiya what she wanted to do with these people. He still let the other party open his mouth to plead for mercy right now. Senju Tsunade coldly looked at Jiraiya. She knew Jiraiya too well. When facing the enemy, Jiraiya was definitely one of the quickest to move. He was even more fearless than my guy. But in the face of innocent people, Jiraiya's kindness will flow out. Because she was the Hokage, Jiraiya would capture people under her command, but in the same way, he would also give the other party a chance. A chance to beg for mercy. Tsunade. Being stared at by Tsunade, Jiraiya's expression stiffened. He then knew that his little move had been seen through by Tsunade. However, the shinobi really didn't get out of the way. Tsunade grunted coldly and pushed Jiraiya away. She approached a pale-looking shinobi and looked at him from above. You, what's your name? Fu Fujisaki. Fujisaki's body was shaking like a sieve. He was just a shinobi of a small village, facing a giant like Kanoha, facing a legendary figure like a Hokage, he couldn't even resist. He could only hope that the other party would be kind enough to release him, because he had never done anything wrong against Kanoha. Fujisaki Senju Tsunade murmured softly as if to remember the name. Fujisaki, I, Tsunade, will shoulder the lives of all three of you. If you guys ever manage to come back, remember to come and find me. With that, Tsunade simply turned away and stopped looking at him. Behind her, Fujisaki's eyes seemed like the world had stopped turning, making his already pale face instantly white. Sure enough, Tsunade's a better hookage than I am. Seeing Tsunade's move, Jiraiya murmured with a complicated expression. On the other hand, Senju Taburama looked at Senju Tsunade with satisfaction. Strategy, determination, courage, ruthlessness, except for her weak strength, all the qualities that a Hokage should have, Senju Tsunade had them. Sure enough, Saratobi found someone to entrust the future to. Senju Tsunade is a person who can be entrusted with the future. Oh? Taburama, so you can smile. Senju Hashirama's voice suddenly sounded, which stunned Senju Taburama. Then the smile on his face was instantly folded back up. He looked around with a cold face and finally saw Jiraiya. Short-sightedness, lack of strength, and too much hypocrisy. Humph. Taburama looked at Jiraiya coldly. Then, as if he felt Senju Hashirama's eyes, he turned his head sideways in disbelief, as if the things before had nothing to do with him. Nyasen, what are you looking at me for? I'll see how long you can pretend. Senju Hashirama didn't look good, replied coldly, withdrew his gaze, and looked at the scene. In the venue, seeing Kakashi place the mask and chakra blade used to summon the Shinigami in front of the opponent, Senju Tsunade waved her hand expressionlessly. Do it. Hearing Senju Tsunade's order, Yamanaka Inoichi and Nara Shikaku instantly made a move. Mind-body disturbance technique. Shadow sewing technique. As their voices sounded, the wandering shinobi clan's Fujisaki was shocked to find that his body was out of his control. It was as if his consciousness had been squeezed out of his body by someone else. He watched as his hands picked up the Shinigami mask in front of him, put it on his face, and then slowly made a few seals. Perhaps it was his illusion, but with the completion of the seals, the temperature in the secret room instantly cooled down. Whoosh. The summoning ceremony was successful, and the Shinigami's figure instantly appeared behind him. The huge shadow directly enveloped Fujisaki. Controlled by the secret technique, Fujisaki couldn't turn back, but he clearly sensed that a huge, terrifying presence was right behind him. He saw the shadow of the being in front of his feet. It had a shinobi sword in its mouth. Terror, depression, all sorts of bizarre feelings, constantly thumped his heart. It made him desperate, almost going crazy. No. Don't. Don't. Fujisaki growled, struggled, and begged frantically. At this moment, he wished he was one of his two companions, who were unconscious on the ground and died peacefully. At least, without having to experience such horrors. It's just that, to add to his despair, his hands were once again moving beyond his control, groping for the shinobi sword on the ground. Is this the Shinigami? Senju Tsunade squinted at the huge shadow behind the wandering shinobi clansmen, and slightly frowned. Except for hiding, there were very few shinobi who believed in the existence of God in the shinobi world. So, when she saw the Shinigami at this moment, Tsunade's subconscious first reaction was to question it. There's no entity, I can't feel its chakra. It seems that he's more like a form of will. Senju Taburama and Senju Hashirama also squinted at the Shinigami. Even for the two, this was the first time that they had seen such an existence. Yamanaka Inoichi controlled the wandering shinobi to pick up the sword and open his abdomen. 
According to the records on this scroll, it wasn't necessary for the performer to actually use a blade, but for the sake of insurance, Yamanaka Noichi still slashed down. Anyway, he wasn't the one who would get wounded. Swish. As Yamanaka Noichi moved, the projection of death behind him also moved. It picked up the sword from its mouth and slashed its abdomen with a single move. Shriek. A painful shriek exploded in the secret chamber. The powerful sound swept out in all directions. The crowd quickly raised their arms to resist the wave. Bang. Bang. The miscellaneous objects in the chamber crashed into the surrounding walls, and suddenly, the chamber was in a mess. In the horrible wail from the Shinigami, two big and one small whip of souls directly leaked out from the wound. After the smaller soul drilled out, it immediately disappeared into the void. And the two big souls, as if they were conscious, rotated several times in front of everyone. Senjutsunade and Jureya saw this, and before the souls could return to the pure land, they quickly formed seals with their hands. In pure world reincarnation. With two soft cries, the other two wandering shinobi clansmen who fainted, were instantly enveloped by the surging soil. Then the soil faded, in their place, the third hokage and fourth hokage had been reborn from the technique. Is this? Saratobi hears and looked around in disbelief. Didn't he summon the Shinigami in order to see Larachimaru? Shinigami. The first thing that caught his eye was the huge projection of death that was wailing. Saratobi hears and was suddenly surprised and was about to flicker away when he saw Yamanaka Noichi and Narashikaku. This surprised him again. What's going on here? Before he could react, in the center position, the Shinigami screamed again, then twisted and whined and disappeared. Along with it, there was a wandering shinobi clansman with a ruptured stomach and his blood scattered on the ground. Are you, alright? Inoichi. Senjutsunade appeared in a flash beside Yamanaka Inoichi, reached out to support Yamanaka Inoichi, who was in some pain, and nervously asked, I'm alright, Hokage-sama. Yamanaka Inoichi waved and indicated that there was nothing wrong with him. He just hadn't fully recovered from the shock. We deceived death. He, just now, took death. He used the mind-body disturbance technique to control someone to summon the Shinigami. When the Shinigami was harvesting the soul, he released himself from the technique. His soul instantly returned to his own body, and what was taken away by the Shinigami was only the soul of the wandering shinobi clansman. This this is frightening. This is insane. Yamanaka Noichi took a few deep breaths, and forced his pounding heart to calm down. He felt that what he had just done was even more frightening than all his missions over the years combined. Just as Yamanaka Noichi was trying to calm his emotions, the fourth Hokage, Namika's Minato, had seen everything in their eyes. Jiraiya Sensei, what's going on? I'm supposed to be dead, Namika's Minato's puzzled voice rang around Jiraiya, and Jiraiya turned his head to see that somehow the other party had approached him. Jiraiya, tell me as well. Saratobi Hirzen also appeared beside Jiraiya. Jiraiya was about to explain when Tsunade suddenly interjected. Let's go to the Hokage's office. After Tsunade said that, she looked at Hadak Kakashi, who was standing quietly at the side. Kakashi, I want to resurrect Hadak Sakumo-sen, too. Is that okay? Tsunade's words stunned Hadak Kakashi, and then he quietly glanced at all of Kanoha's hokages and nodded his head. Jiraiya, you give Kakashi the impure world reincarnation technique. After arranging Kakashi's affairs, Senju Tsunade looked at all the hokages in the secret chamber, and for a moment, she was in a trance. Unexpectedly, Kano has five hokages would gather in this way. In a megagur. Arachimaru woke from Ichihamadara's illusion technique in dismay. Considering that the other Akatsuki members' learning ability and comprehension ability were certainly not as strong as his own, the illusion technique displayed by Ichihamadara wasn't the whole experience of Madara and Nagato, but only a fragment of it. Although only one fragment was seen, it was enough to shock Arachimaru. Of course, what shocked him wasn't what the old man taught, but what was shown in the illusion technique, something called technology. The magical jutsu could be used for fighting, killing, and allowing people to fly up into the sky, and even into space. The most shocking thing for Arachimaru was the number of people that could develop their bodies and live longer. Although this long time wasn't worth mentioning against the eternal life he was seeking, Arachimaru had a faint feeling that it was extremely important to him. Glancing at the others who were still immersed in the jutsu, Arachimaru faded away without a sound. Pondering along the way, he soon returned to his base in a megagur. Arachimaru-sama, you're back. In the base, Kamimuro and Gurren, who had just arrived some time ago, came out to meet Arachimaru when they heard of his return. Arachimaru-sama, Ichihasasuke is outside the base. He said he's looking for you. Kamimuro looked at Arachimaru in front of him, his face was calm, but his heart felt sour. He knew about Sasuke long before the exam space exposed Ichiha Sasuke. After all, his body was reserved by Rachimaru-sama a long time ago. Sasuke. 
what does she want with me? Rachimaru was shocked. Right now, Sasuke's identity had changed qualitatively with the revival of the Ichiha clan. At one time, he wanted that guy so badly, but now, he badly wanted that guy to stay away from him. He was just about to ask Kamimuro to tell that guy to leave, when he heard Kamimuro say, he said that he can provide you with research materials for the Manjakyo Shuringen, and wants to explore the secrets for how to evolve the Manjakyo into eternal Manjakyo. Hmm. Rajmer froze. Before he could react to his stunned state, a blue light suddenly appeared in the room. Then, the blue light went straight into his arm, just like a baby swallow returning to its nest. The sudden change surprised Rajmer. Just when he wondered what it was, there was a numb feeling on his right arm. He slowly raised his right hand, gently clenched his fist, then released it, then clenched it. The corners of Arachimaru's mouth picked up momentarily. It seems like Kabuto, that brat, really succeeded. Let Ichiha Sasuke come in. What? The Ichiha clan is resurrected, and it's not the impure world reincarnation. In the Hokage's office, after listening to the story from everyone, the shocked voice of the third Hokage suddenly sounded. He looked at others in a daze, his expression confused. His mouth moved a few times, but he couldn't say anything. He knew that Sunade and Jiraiya wouldn't lie to him about this kind of thing. After all, in this situation, it's obvious that the situation had made a sharp turn. But even so, at the moment, Saratobi hears and felt it was unbelievable. Under such shocking news that the Chiha clan had revived, even the news that Akatsuki had invaded Kanoha after his death, and taken away Yuzumaki Naruto, no longer shocked him. The news that Ichiha Madara had been reincarnated with the impure world reincarnation technique didn't seem shocking enough at this moment. Back then, he and Danzo were the ones who directly spoke about the matter to the public, so how could they not know what kind of battle took place that night? This was what shocked him the most. He truly felt that it was impossible. Saratobi Hirzen's eyes fluctuated wildly, then he looked aside at Kabuto, who tried to minimize his sense of existence, and surprise flashed through Saratobi's eyes once again. He understood the fact that Yuzumaki Naruto would grow up to be a powerhouse. Ichiha Sasuke growing up to be one was also understandable. But, what's up with this Kabuto brat? He remembered that when he first learned about Kabuto, the man who started the fourth shinobi world war, he still lamented that it would be great if such talent came from Kanoha. He thought it was someone with the same name, but as a result, it was really Kanoha's genin. He's a genin a genin, not even a jonin how is that possible? For Saratobi Hirzen, believing that Kabuto would grow to that level of power was even harder to believe than the resurrection of the Ichiha clan. So, my Kanoha is full of talent. Suddenly, Saratobi Hirzen froze again. This Kabuto, coupled with Yuzumaki Naruto I've been wrong twice. Hmm in the end, it turns out that I'm the one acting ridiculous. Meanwhile, at the other side of the Hokage's office, Jiraiya apologized to Minato. Minato, I'm sorry, I didn't take good care of Naruto. Jiraiya's voice made everyone in the office look at Namika's Minato. Saratobi Hirzen's eyes flickered when he saw Minato's calm face. Minato, Naruto's matter was my thoughtlessness, not Jiraiya's. If you want to blame, blame me. Third Sama, Jiraiya Sensei, it doesn't matter. Namika's Minato had a sunny smile on his face as he addressed the crowd in front of him. Kanoha has given Naruto a safe and secure place to live for years, and I think he, too, will be grateful to Kanoha. Hearing Namika's Minato's explanation, Kabuto took a deep look at the fourth Hokage. This man isn't simple. On the other hand, hearing Namika's Minato's explanation, the second Hokage, Senju Taburama, and the third Hokage, Saratobi Hirzen, had a look of satisfaction in their eyes. Especially Saratobi Hirzen, a hint of comfort flashed in his slightly narrowed eyes. Hokage Samas, I want to go to Akatsuki now and bring Naruto and the others out. Namika's Minato's gentle voice rang out, with my speed, even if I encounter Madar, I can escape even if I can't beat him. Right now, they don't know that I've been resurrected with the impure world reincarnation technique. I think we could try it. Minato's eyes were shining with a firm glow. He could tolerate Kanoha's harshness to his child, but he couldn't tolerate other shinobi villages teaching Naruto something bad. A surprise attack. Tsunade froze, then looked at Senju Taburama with some interest. Sune told me that you also know the Flying Thunder God technique, and you seem to be faster than I am. Senju Taburama's voice sounded, and his eyes were fixed on Namika's Minato. Sune told him about the video from the exam space. His speed was slightly inferior to the fourth Hokage, and he even admitted it himself. How many people can you bring out at a time? Second Hokage-sama, I can only take one. Namika's Minato looked at Senju Taburama pensively. Just when he thought the other party would refuse, he didn't expect Taburama to say suddenly. I'll go with you. Not only Naruto, the little girl from the Hyugas clan, can't stay in Akatsuki. Byakugan is too helpful for the war. Hm. 
grand uncle, you also want to go. Hearing Senju Tabarama's offer, Tsunade was overjoyed and quickly said, and Sasuke, he is also from Urkonoha. You should bring him back, too. If you can't bring Sasuke back, just bring Naruto and Hinata back. As soon as Tsunade's voice fell, a voice immediately sounded, which stunned Tsunade. According to the voice, Saratobi Hiruzen was the one who spoke. There was a cold gleam in his eyes as he said, Naruto is still young. After he is rescued, let Jureya take him directly to Mount Mumboku to practice in Jutsu. As for the little girl of the Hyuga clan, as the eldest daughter of the Hyuga clan, she won't go to the battlefield. She should stay in the Hyuga clan and come out after the war. Hm. Hearing Saratobi Hiruzen's undisguised purpose, Kabuto's heart twitched. This third hookage, his heart is still as hard as ever. Senju Tsunade also understood Saratobi Hiruzen's meaning. When she was about to speak, she was beaten by Senju Toborama. Only a few of us know of this news. Don't spread it. Only when the hostages are in hand, other villages would fight Akatsuki with all their might, especially Aiwa and Suna. Their future cages are in Akatsuki's hands, and they are even more anxious than anyone else. Senju Tabarama glanced at Kabuto. The threat in his eyes was self-evident. If it weren't for him and his brother, Hashirama, he wouldn't even be qualified to be here. Okay. Bring back the people first, and talk about everything else after. Senju Hashirama's somewhat displeased voice rang out. What he disliked most of all were those who played petty tricks behind the backs of allies. However, at this moment, it was his Konoha that was playing tricks. However, they were doing it for Konoha. Senju Hashirama sighed in his heart. He glanced at the somewhat passive Senju Tsunade and the third Hokage, Surutobi. Tsunade, as the current Hokage, was very passive. By the way, Danzo and the advisors, do they know about our resurrection? Saratobi Hiruzen's heart suddenly stirred and spoke out. I don't know. He should already know about the resurrection of the first and second Hokages. Tsunade thought for a moment and wondered why Saratobi Hiruzen would suddenly ask this question. Hmm. The third Hokage nodded but didn't say anything else as his gaze slightly narrowed. With that look, it was obvious that he was thinking about something. Second, fourth, if you want to surprise Akatsuki, you can bring Hata Kakashi too. Jiraiya hesitated and finally said it. Kakashi's Manjekyo can open up a space that you can move through, and the three of you just happen to be able to form a team. Kakashi. Hearing the familiar name, Namika's Minato was stunned. Then, a warm smile flashed on his face. Kakashi, has grown that strong. He even has a Manjekyo Sharingan. Father. That night, Hata Kakashi was at a loss for words as he looked at resurrected Hata Kusakumo. He was unsure of how to face his father, who eventually committed suicide in depression. Now, he had been in contact with the circle of Kanoha higher-ups. There were some things that he couldn't bear to think about. The third Hokage who didn't delegate power and Shimura Danzo, who always aspired to become Hokage, and his father, who was known as Kanoha's White Fang from the fact that the fifth Hokage allowed him to bring his father back to life, he understood how strong his father was. It's just that all these things made Kakashi feel exhausted. Especially now, Namika's Minato was resurrected. He didn't know how to face him. After all, as a captain of the Anbu, he was a person who knew of Naruto's identity from beginning to end. Fortunately, Kashina-sama wasn't resurrected, otherwise knock-knock. Kakashi-sama, all the Hokage-samas are looking for you. Outside, there was a knock at the door and the voice of an Anbu, causing Kakashi to snap out of his contemplation, answer, and look at his father again. Go, you can tell me everything after you come back. A white-haired and cracked-faced Haddock Sakumo raised a smile on his lips, and nodded at Kakashi. Although he was shocked by Kakashi's means to resurrect himself and curious about Kakashi's growth, the orders of the Hokage were above all else, which was so deeply ingrained in every shinobi's mind, that it had become common sense. Kakashi, who wasn't a good talker, nodded and turned to leave, but was stopped by Haddock Sakumo. After adjusting Kanoha's forehead protector for Kakashi and smoothing his ninja vest, Haddock Sakumo let Kakashi go. Come back safely. Hearing his father's words, Hata Kakashi suddenly felt a quiver in his heart, and a sour feeling rushed down his body towards his nose and eyes. Hmm. Kakashi nodded, and his figure instantly disappeared from the room. Hadak Sakumo didn't see that Kakashi's eyes were red. Proof. With a puff of smoke, a small white snake suddenly appeared in Orochimaru's lab, causing Orochimaru, who was talking to Ichiha Sasuke, to freeze. Looking at the little snake and noticing the mark belonging to Kabuto, Arachimaru quietly looked at Ichiha Sasuke, who was in front of him. I agree to your terms. Kamimuro, take him to collect the raw materials for the experiment, and send him away. Watching Sasuke, who volunteered to be a guinea pig, be taken away, Arachimaru licked his lips excitedly. 
He had just received some inspiration from Ichihamadara's illusion technique, and thought that Omegagur wouldn't do human experiments, so he was about to put those researches on hold. But to his surprise, Ichihasasuk approached him. Holding out a somewhat pale hand for the white snake to climb up, Arachimaru eventually pulled out a small scroll from the snake's mouth. Arachimaru Sama, your arrangement has been completed. With the help of the two hookages, I have infiltrated Kanoha's inner circle. Do you have any further plans? Also, Senju Taburama, Minato, and Kakashi formed a small team and are about to launch a surprise attack on Akatsuki. Their target, Yuzumaki Naruto and Hayuga Hinata. Looking at the information from Kabuto, Arachimaru's mouth slightly stirred up. Just now, when his right hand responded, he knew his plan had worked. Looking at the scroll again, Arachimaru destroyed it with some chakra, then summoned a new scroll. Let's see what happens and improvise. After simply replying with six words and releasing the white snake, Arachimaru began to digest the second message. Two of Kanoha's hookages are coming to Omegakur to take away the children isn't this the same as the time Akatsuki went to Kanoha to kidnap the children? Arachimaru shook his head, turned and walked away. With this news, he thought of ways to create greater value for him. With Yuzumaki Nagato's emphasis on Yuzumaki Naruto, he only needed to tell Yuzumaki Nagato this news, and then he could certainly avoid the training from Uchihamadar. In this way, he would have more time for his experiments. Killing two birds with one stone. A few minutes later, Arachimaru arrived at the Omegakur square and saw that the leader, Yuzumaki Nagato, was there. Moreover, not only Nagato, but there were also the other Akatsuki members, and even the hundreds of Ichiha clan members. Without looking at these people, Arachimaru walked straight to Yuzumaki Nagato. Leader, I got the news that someone is going to invade Omegakur. Their targets are Yuzumaki Naruto and Hayuga Hinata. Hm. Before Yuzumaki Nagato spoke, Yuzumaki Kashina suddenly stood up and looked at Arachimaru with a murderous look. Who is it? Who dares target my son and daughter-in-law? Kashina's angry voice made Hayuga Hinata's face turn red. At the same time, it also attracted everyone's attention. Even Ichihamadara looked at them. Arachimaru glanced at Yuzumaki Nagato for a moment, and then looked at Yuzumaki Kashina strangely. When she learned that the intruder was Namika's Minato, he didn't know how she would take it. The second Hokage, Senju Taburama, fourth Hokage, Namika's Minato, and Hayuga Kakashi. Ha! Who did you say? Yuzumaki Kashina thought that she had heard wrong, so she quickly asked again. Namika's Minato. Arachimaru shrugged innocently and looked at the stunned Yuzumaki Kashina. He suddenly began to look forward to what she would do next. After all, no one in Kanoha knew that Yuzumaki Kashina had been resurrected. Presumably, it would be very interesting to see Namika's Minato, who was resurrected by the Impure World Reincarnation, meet Kashina, who was also resurrected by the Impure World Reincarnation technique. I haven't gone to settle the score with him yet, and he dares to come here on his own. Kashina clenched her fists fiercely, even to the point of making her hands crack as some clay crumbs fell. Everyone who saw it felt the terrifying anger. This hatred this fury Uzumaki Kashina didn't even have this kind of anger when facing Ichihamadar. Mom, is that coming? Naruto, with the kick beyond his head, looked at his mother. He already knew that his father was Namika's Minato now. Dad. What dad? Son, listen to mom, you don't have such a dad. Yuzumaki Kashina caressed his head, pinched Yuzumaki Naruto's cheeks. Then she stood up and took Kikbi, who had been reduced to a pet, into her arms. After thinking about it, she looked at Gara on the other side. Little guy, lend me your tanuki. After the fight, I'll return him to you. Here, Kashina-sama. Gara handed him to Yuzumaki Kashina under Shikaku's reluctant gaze. After this period of time with Naruto and others, Gara had become a lot livelier, and he was no longer the cold little boy with a murderous look in his eyes. Gara's change made Yuzumaki Nagato a little upset. Originally, he brought Gara back, thinking that he would make Naruto similar to him, so that Naruto would become a little more ruthless. As a result Gara was the one to become similar to Naruto. Nagato-sensei, leave Namika's Minato and Hata Kakashi to me. I'll also find you a wife. Kashina said so. She looked domineeringly at the two-tailed beasts lying honestly in her arms. When the time comes, you two have to show me more effort, or I'll let you two learn those things too. Seeing the two-tailed beasts nodding in panic, Kashina added. You two-tailed beasts should show me the tailed beast bomb. They are resurrected with the impure world reincarnation and can't be killed. Hearing Yuzumaki Kashina's words, Nagato, whose face was a little red, unconsciously glanced at Yuzumaki Karen, who had buried her head in her hair. Senju Taburama. Let me face him. The Chihafugaku's voice rang from a distance. When people heard the voice, they saw a Chihafugaku walking over with a group of people in a murderous mood. His eternal manjakyo slowly rotated, emitting a heart-stopping red ore. 
Behind him, more than a dozen people's eyes were flashing red. However, the patterns in their Shuringen weren't as complicated as those in Fugaki's eyes. But in their eyes, it was no longer about the Tomos. Not far away, Ichiha Madara looked at Fugaku coming with a group of Manjakyo owners, and his eyes fluctuated. Originally, he lost interest when he heard that there was no Hashirama in the invasion. But now, he thought it would be good to use Senju Taburama, and test the combat capability of these Ichiha clansmen. After all, what better whetstone than an impure world reincarnated person? At this thought, Ichiha Madara looked at the hundreds of Ichiha clan members who were eager to move. If it was the original him, he definitely let these guys jump in altogether, and the ones who survive were naturally the strongest. But now, he didn't. Talon was the first productive force, and he couldn't expose these children, who carried the light of the future, to face risks. When he thought that Senju Taburama, although weak, had a lot of forbidden techniques that were extremely lethal to ordinary shinobi, Ichiha Madara's voice slowly rang out. Those who have opened the three Tomo Shuringen, can join the battle with your previous patriarch, go together. Yes, long live Madara-sama. Ha 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 ha, Senju Taburama, the bastard. When I saw the third question in the exam, and I wanted to beat him up. Now I finally have a chance. Beat him up. When it's done, ask him why we, the Ichiha clan, can't carry the future. Hearing Ichiha Madara's words almost instantly, all the Ichiha clansmen boiled up. Especially those three Tomo wielders, who were clenching their fists one by one. At the moment, they couldn't wait to show their skills and directly kill Senju Taburama. Even those Ichiha clansmen who hadn't awakened the three Tomos were excited at the moment. They knew that Ichiha Madara didn't let them go to battle for their own sakes. After all, the other party was the second Hokage. The excitement didn't continue for long when the voice of someone among the Ichiha clan, unknown to them, rang out, and all cheers were abruptly stopped. Ha 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 ha, Ichiha Madara, from all the generations of patriarchs, we are willing to call you the strongest. Hmm. The gaze of Ichiha Madara's eyes instantly sharpened to the location of the voice. His eyes ruthlessly swept over that location, and the people of the Ichiha clan were suddenly scared. They didn't expect that someone would be so reckless. Unable to find the person who said that, Ichiha Madara slowly withdrew his oppressive gaze. No one saw the smile on Ichiha Madara's mouth when he turned around. No. One person did see it at this moment, Ichiha Fugaku's mood. Wasn't too good. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.